Good luck, Mary. Stop by and see us the next time you're in. Thank you. But I'm never coming back. And what seems to be the problem? I've been seeing things. Things that can't be real. I don't know about that girl. How do you mean? The day before yesterday, she was the only one of three girls to survive an accident. Does that look like someone who's about to come knocking on your door? You think I imagined all of it, don't you? You think I'm insane? I didn't say that. I don't mean that. Sometimes bad memories have a way of following you around. Ta-da! <laughs> I know it sounds impossible, but I know he's here. And nightmare. I saw you. Sometimes you have to face your demons in order to see the angels. Still face gave me strength. I have no desire for the close company of other people. If those were still creeping around the house, why wouldn't he have gotten me sooner? Because that wouldn't be any fun. That's just what I need. Get mixed up with some girl with a her rocker. He's been following me, that's all there is to it. I don't want to be left alone! Well, if she's got a problem, we'll go right along with her. Carnival of Souls. Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 258 of the Triple Shots of Moods and Horror Podcast is coming at you live and direct with the homie, JP, also known as the Mexicans. We got Mr. Saucedo, also known as Tyler, and introducing to the 22 Shots Collective, AI Dan, the porn man. And I'd be your host, the M-double-O-D to the Z, representing PGBC. Y'all know me, Moods. Yeah. What's going on, dudes? Yeah. What up? What's up, yo? What is going Pleasure on, AI here. Dan? That is a Sinbin reference. <laughs> yep. If y'all and, are uh, finally got by... the camera working. Yep, got the camera working right after the fact. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, got the camera working on the show that we don't do video on. <laughs> yep, I'll be that's ready right. For next month. Son of a you bitch. see my beautiful face. Yeah. All my fault. That's that sounds right. like something an AI would say. Are you going to be coming back to do uh, the Simbin anytime soon? It's like, is there any uh, big porno releases? I, I honestly don't see. Do they even have the porn releases on the website anymore? Is, is it like yeah, they they to to yeah. right. right? Okay. Because I was wondering about that. I was like looking for the the artwork for roommates, and I was like, why is it not on the website? I'm like, it must be on that different website, and I forgot what it was called. But the weird so. thing is that um, I was talking to Tony about this, and uh, because in the monthly emails they kind of break down the. The titles like oh this is a 70s you know what so-and-so film and the partner with the titles um i was curious why would, they wouldn't say the titles of the new porn title or the new porn titles so like next month um like ambition is coming out which is a bigger kind of film it's like you know one of the bigger films the golden age of porn and the email is just like uh you know this this uh you know uh amara Burley's classic that you'll have to go to the website to see it's like why aren't they listening to titles and i don't know if this is actually true or not but tony was telling me that he thinks that if they're getting bigger like studio titles like roadhouse and these films they probably want to keep the porn of it like its own entity but still you know release the title so i get it but it is like i, I think didn't they're know, yeah i, I think they're first. really separating the companies essentially yeah, i think that makes perfect sense Wait, yeah because you're gonna as have long as the output's the same it's fine i don't really care yeah because you're gonna have advertisers or just advertisers that just don't want to like advertise like well it makes that releases porn yeah, it makes perfect right. sense to have them their own entities, right? For sure. I, I get it with like, that way. yeah, I get. It. I mean, like certain titles, like Blonde Ambition, you're not going to think twice about. It. You'd be like, oh, it could be anything. A film like I don't know, like Nine Lives What of a Wet Pussy, and you're like, I can't put that, you know, next to <laughs> you know, it's a yeah. big Paramount film, you know, it's like yeah, fucking Roadhouse, it's just not going to happen. But I mean, hey, I think they've been doing a uh, you know solid work with the LC titles lately. I mean, I was just talking, um, you know, it's not to uh, uh, Tyler and all that before, just just really great titles for the past couple months, like Deep Inside Any Sprinkle and uh, uh, the um, Burke Family's uh, Flesh Trilogy. And I mean, just these long awaited titles. And now Blonde Ambition, which if you'd have me back on next month, I'd love to talk about because that's one I've been waiting for for literally years now. Um, so I'm just, I'm really there, but man, I, I've got no complaints. No, I, that works. I mean, it's still, you know, it's still there 
creation, right? So having the porn part of the show is, it just seems logical to me. Right. Yeah, I'm glad and I'm glad they didn't uh, one slow down or two altogether stop because that was a little not even a fear, but that was sort of an idea that I was. Well, now they're getting bigger. Now they're getting these big studio titles that I'm, I was like worried that are they just going to stop that as a whole and stop doing that? Um, mm-hmm. But no, I mean, they're, I mean, they have like, you know, dish for picks and quality X and, you know, like partner labels and stuff. And and that's all cool, man. You know, I'm, I'm really happy with the output they've been doing, We're getting some solid titles. And there's titles that, um, you know, I, I got in a list that love to see get on Blu-ray or 4K. And um, yeah, no, I think it's just really fantastic. And I'm really happy with the output they've been doing because that roommate's Blu-ray was like top notch. I, I, I really couldn't say enough kind things about it. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with them. Yeah, watching porn in like super duper ultra HD is crazy. Like that just that blows my mind. Yeah, they look great. I mean, it's uh, some some uh, elements going to look better than the others. Like I have a lot of the uh, the double feature Picorama DVDs, right. and those are varying quality, which is understandably which is understandable because a lot of those are probably not as res- well, well preserved as like you know even independent films or studio films. Well, but they didn't the put as much time into like restoring them. Yeah, they didn't put much time into restoring those two. It's like the, uh, you know, the the double feature, like the Grindhouse double feature things that they did too. Um, right. Well, on the, yeah. On the, the funny thing about, yeah. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I mean to cut you off. Um, well, the funny thing I was, I was talking, I think I may have actually the story up recently. I don't remember, but um, I watching their double of uh, Horror High and Stanley and uh, Horror High. I mean, the disc looked amazing. And then I was again, kind of tired. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll find it on YouTube. I'll the last 10 minutes in bed on my phone, which isn't ideal, but I just wanted to finish it. Um, and then going from that, I mean, beautiful restoration to like, I mean, it looked like someone took a, a piss all over it. And the version I walked up, <laughs> like, wow, I really kind of take for granted sometimes how much work and how much detail are being put in these films. And it's just, yeah. it's just can't say enough good, good stuff about them. Cause I think that Stanley at one point was like public domain, right? Or maybe it still is or something. Cause I, I remember like I that it used to be on like a bunch of fucking multi-packs and shit. I don't know if it was actually public domain, but it always had shitty transfers. So it's probably one of the ones you're watching from like one of those 10, 12 right. packs that was like super compressed into like one <laughs> yeah. disc and shit. Five films on a disc. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I remember they had the, uh, the third year of the after dark horror effect. Uh, on two discs i got it in like a walmart five dollar bin and they were sticking four films on one dvd and i was watching that film the broken and there's like a lot of like darker kind of like uh lighting in that film and i'm watching on a, on a contemporary tv and you're just seeing like these massive pixels and i'm like all right you know, <laughs> this is what happens when you stick four films on one disc you know yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's fucking uh, terrible yeah. man yeah yeah, but, yeah. um <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, man, I was I was fucking scrolling through the internet the other day, you know, because the internet's just the place to be, right? And uh I man, I came across this conversation and like fucking made me laugh so hard, man. People were tripping fucking dicks about the the Beetlejuice sequel being called Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. And I was like, Oh me and Dave Z talked about that for like an hour. Oh, really? Oh, That's funny. I yeah, because I, I think it was on Facebook and I was like this dude was like it's stupid i'm like fuck i'm like it's only gonna be like the first thing i thought about like it's gonna be a total fucking fail if they don't make a third one and call it beetlejuice beetlejuice, you beetlejuice. Like Dave. <laughs> yeah, so is, uh, did you say that because the first thing i thought of i was like beetlejuice, beetlejuice yeah pretty much makes, but i i just don't sense. think that it matters because it's like you know what it means so it's mm-hmm. like right, no, right. i think it's just clever because you have to say the name That's I, think what it I, just, said. I think it just works better like i mean Honestly, man, I, I'm totally fine with Beetlejuice too, but Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice actually is pretty clever, right? Mm. And I, I think yeah, it works. I mean, so. I would have preferred Beetlejuice too, just because I'm, I'm always a traditionalist when it comes to the numbers. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I think that the numbers, like numbering films is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, it's always been a thing though, man. Like, you know, like sometimes they come back and sometimes they come back for more and like they always do shit like that though, right? I don't yeah. mind those. I don't really mind. But although we were actually talking about this on Friday, right? And I was like, which one is which? So you do get to that point where you're like, which one is which? Like, I didn't know which part, what part two was called or compared to part three or whatever. We actually had to look it up. So having the numbers does make a little bit more sense, but at the same time, whatever. If it's clever, it's I'm- clever. I can fuck with it. So. I'm Anyways. thinking if uh, Tommy Two Times from Goodfellas was going to buy a ticket for it, would you say Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, or would you say Beetlejuice, 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 Beetlejuice? Yeah. I think yeah. I'm just going to call it the sequel. Never know. Anyways, like, I probably won't call it Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, because it's a, like a mouthful. That's what she said. Yeah. And, like uh, BJ, hey, BJ, BJ. Pause. Right. And I'll just, <laughs> yeah. I'll just call it the sequel. <laughs> Go to the counter. Beetlejuice 2. BJ, BJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, more of traditional. Like actual numbers in the titles like those resident evil films it's all like apocalypse and extinction and afterlife i'm like brother just two three and four you can have the subtitle but please just put the goddamn number in the title yeah, please right. i'm begging you i'm not gonna yeah. love which is like well the <laughs> thing that's always been so annoying is like 
the more they make the less like the more they don't want to put like a number because it's like they're trying i always think that it's like uh, my theory my theory is that they don't want to alienate people who haven't seen the other ones so they try to like basically trick people to like that might not know it's a sequel (laughs) you know what i mean that's the only thing i can think of why they why they stop numbering the later they go on it's like super annoying though i hate that shit it is actually quite annoying because like say if you pulled out a box set and you know you dump it on the ground you pick them up you're like okay which order and i gotta fucking look this thing up on wikipedia or some shit to, to put them in the right order because <laughs> none of them have fucking yeah, numbers yeah. like i would have you no idea take a test to find out the film <laughs> yeah i wouldn't know i would have no idea what part five or six is or four i wouldn't i just wouldn't know i'd be fucked there's just something beautiful about, about the, uh, seeing all the numbers oh, like yeah. part one two three four five right, right. six you know it's like super annoying when they stop doing that yeah, it's there's like not too many films, franchises like, they get past. Wondering. Yeah, you don't get a lot. Like what Halloween got up to what part six, I think. Uh, uh, no, because they dropped the six five. and called it Curse of Michael Myers. Oh, really? It, 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 six, 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 right? Yeah, I've seen some versions that actually say six on it, but anyways, yeah. yeah. But so it's definitely up to part five. But like, the producers cut most franchises up. don't get past like three, fuck, man. Four. Like, yeah, like it, they just they drop the numbers very quick. So they, the what, nation was like, what was saw? Go <laughs> Five. We saw when did they they got pretty high with the numbers though too, right? Because there was saw. I six. think they got up until like the seven one was viral. the final chapter. They didn't call it seven. Yeah, so it was that yeah. part seven. So six was the last one that was actually numbered as six. I think. Yeah, crazy. I guess but X I, is the tenth one. So I'm, there, there's the yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah they came sorry. back for numbers. <laughs> well, they. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, they had a couple films like all right, we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, they did that with Jason too. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> impressive that it's just like saw eleven. <laughs> it's like, it, but like the fact that it's like a semi prequel, it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, it's like what saw two dash one, like you know, like, like a video mean, game. Oh, I'm in saw two dash one. I get to saw two dash two. <laughs> right, like Hellraiser only did what three, right? Hellraiser up up to part three, yeah, and then the fourth one wasn't line. even four. Yeah, which is Bloodlines. Fuck, it's crazy. So it happens more often than not, really. Elm I mean, Street I, made it to five. Yeah, because Freddy's Dead was called Freddy's Dead. It wasn't part six. Yeah. And then seven is just New Nightmare, right? So, yeah. But that's still pretty and, good. Uh, five. Your guys' favorite film franchise and my favorite as well, Fast and Furious, they would number them when they like it. They'd get like Fast Five and Fast and Furious Six, but then they kind of gave up and they're like, oh, we'll do an F9 now. It's like, they knew <laughs> it was, uh, convenient yeah. for the well, no, dude, that's like, okay, well, like we'll the, number the, it now. No, no, no. <laughs> fast and furious is like the craziest like titling so you have fast and the f- fast and fear <laughs> the fast and the furious and then you have part two which is too fast, too fast too furious. Furious. and then you Forget have fast and the furious tokyo drift drop the number and then the the fourth one i think is fast and furious yeah dude i was so confused and by then those the titles. fifth one is fast five and then yes. what's the sixth one the, like, well the sixth one is called fast and furious six but if you watch the it's just called Furious Six or Fast Six, one of the two. So it's like they, they're not even consistent in their own film to the poster. <laughs> wow. I've seen all these films, by the way, so I have a bit of knowledge about Fast and Furious. But yes, the title and the film and the poster are different. It's either yeah, Fast Six ridiculous. or Furious Six. I can't that. believe how big that franchise is, man. I think we brought this up even on a show recently, too, but that's a yeah. huge fucking franchise. That's why I bring it's it up now. Nuts. It's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, you guys I, talked about it on your Hidden Gems one. I was laughing right. about that. They make a and, shitload uh, of but money. Also, too. you gotta do, like also, people go to see those. Oh yeah. yeah, actually, Fast X as well. That's another X, like uh, Jason had saw. Jesus Christ! They just dropped the. It whole just looks cool on a poster. Thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, w- I mean, when they you get to a part just, ten, you know, like you gotta, you gotta use the Roman numeral, right? Wasn't gotta, there one called like the Fate of the Furious or something? Yeah, that was number eight. Oh my god! <laughs> get it? Fate. So they fate. dropped the Fast F8. on that one. <laughs> so that, that was fate. <laughs> and it was number eight. Oh, that's actually pretty clever. Fate, because yeah. they're yeah. actually it's, that was clever. it says eight in it. Oh right? yeah, <laughs> fate. Didn't they didn't. That. They didn't have a clever name for the ninth one, so they just called it F nine. <laughs> Not even Fast the, and Furious nine, just F nine. It, it was literally F nine. Yeah, should have yeah. been fine in the Furious. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I can't believe we brought <laughs> Fast and Furious franchise twice in two weeks. I haven't seen Fast and Third one. Not <laughs> gonna lie, you guys are missing. Yeah, out. I've, I've <laughs> I mean, you're not, the but third you know. one as well. I, I like the first two, and then I saw the third one in theaters, and I thought it was awful. And I just never saw another Fast and Furious. Wow, I didn't movie. even know that went to the theaters. I'm not yeah. a big fan of like modern fucking car type films and shit. Man. I like older ones, but 
Yeah, because yeah. they'll never make them like they used to, bro. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to do like the. No, like maybe the old, Mad, Ma- Mad, Ma- car Mad Max is probably the oh, yeah, closest. Yeah. I'll see the new Mad Max. Yeah. In the first Fast and the Furious, they were stealing like DVD players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was, I mean, at the time. And the fifth bro, one, they're like DVD stealing saves were, and shit. <laughs> were, were pretty, pretty, pretty pricey back then. Right, right. Nuts. That, like, like, that's, what they were, that's what they were stealing in the first movie. What kind of. <laughs> Asshole's gonna watch this. D- gonna watch Twister on VHS. No, man, you gotta watch Twister on DVD. <laughs> Did you know there's a new dork. Twister movie coming out? Yeah, I can't believe that. Yeah, is, is it a remake? It's, crazy. it's called Twister yeah, Twister. Twister. No, I wonder if they got Bill Paxton Twister, back. Twister. <laughs> Bill Paxton. Uh, actually, I had to break it to him. <laughs> yeah, <isn't> Bill Paxton dead. <laughs> yeah, I love Bill Paxton. Oh, uh, here's Dude. the man. Dude, come on. I wonder on, if they man. got Phil Seymour Hoffman. They got that back. hunk, though, Glenn Powell. <laughs> Glenn Powell Did they get fucking, Phil Seymour Hoffman babe. back? Yeah, he's back. He has a CGI cameo like Harold Ramis. In- <laughs> he's not going to oh, say I, anything. He's just going to be there. <laughs> I literally fucking hate that shit, man. What? Like when they see We were just talking about it the other day. Oh, I think it's so corny, man. Like I get it for like... I mean, it, it kind of worked for Ghostbusters in a sense because given what it is. But like yeah. if you're going to do that for like a film that's, you know, not ghostly and shit, like it just doesn't work, man. I think it's so It kind of... That's like, it, it, uh, remember when they CG'd Arnold in, in Terminator Salvation? Yep. Exactly, dude. That was absolutely so fucking At least he could consent to that. Horrible. <laughs> that was so bad, dude. Oh, my God. I guess it kind of almost makes more sense since it's like, it's artificial in general. Yeah. But I mean, in Ghostbusters, right. it literally yeah, works. I think that's different because, because it's ghostly. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. They you actually, don't really get, they actually you get up a uh, Ramis. Yeah, you don't really get that opportunity too often, so you might as well take it if you can do it in Ghostbusters. Right, I'm so. glad they didn't do that again for this one because, uh, well, I mean, I don't know if it's going to spoil or not, but I, I'm just, I'm glad they let that be. Um, it would have been pretty rough if they tried to do that again, like after they defeat the whatever, like ice, a uh, spoiler, the ice uh, lady. They look over, they're like, good, good job. I'm like, no, none <laughs> of that. You did it once. I think the difference is that when you have like, I get a little weirded out when it's like Audrey Hepburn and like a credit card commercial or like, um, uh, um, Peter, uh, um, uh, Peter Cushing uh, in Star Wars. Peter Cushing, yeah. thank you. I, yeah, I and like Star- I'm like these guys have these been people dead for a while. <laughs> I don't know if they would have consented to this. <laughs> you know? No, probably not. It's like they, they look like they look like it, it, it's noticeable, man. It looks off. I, I, we're not there yet where you can you know get CGI actors to uh, to look real. They tried that shit with the weird Mar- mom's uh, Polar Express stuff, and it looked fucking weird then. It looks fucking weird now. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. I don't know. But yeah, no, I hope for a cameo by Harold Ramis and Bill Paxton and Twister Twister this summer. <laughs> That'll be cool. There's a, dude, actually, you know what? Speaking of 2024 here, um, we were just talking recently about how there it's been a pretty dry year, but I gotta be honest, man, there's some good, good looking stuff coming up. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, think, I mean I think we're about the stuff coming up. Hopefully it's actually good. There's a, yeah. there's a new neon film that looks pretty interesting. Hmm. Um Which one's that? <clears throat> um i forget what it was called like, maybe there's a there's a killer spider movie coming out that looks pretty cool it's like vermine or something um there's a uh like a like a i feel like also we talk the last few years about shutter being like pretty garbage but i feel like shutter is like hitting a nice nice uh maybe that we're about to get a new solid wave because uh, well, late night with the devil was pretty good they haven't I, I put out last night they put out like two or three movies this whole year so far like and then they also crazy. but but there's another one that looks really cool it's like a it's it's the way that it looks to me is like if you take a friday the 13th film and you would just it would be shown through from the killer's point of view the entire time not like not like point of views in like from his actual vision but just like 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 from third his, sort of. yeah, yeah like from his angle yeah. right um and, and that cool. actually looks pretty cool hmm. i was waiting for them to do something like that um i think it's cool though that oh sorry i was just gonna say and then there's like there's some other stuff that they were showing previews to that look kind of cool too um but yeah i mean hopefully we're about to get a nice influx of good horror again yeah hopefully mm-hmm. man because i've been you know, I'm at, I'm at that point now where I'm like, well, I can probably start watching some 24 films. It just 
just there just needs to be some. So, but uh, have you seen the uh, best year so far, Imaginary yet? Shut up. No, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm probably not going. I've I've heard honestly, man. Like it's not very often that I'll. I didn't pass on any theatricals last year. I well, I seen every single one that came to town last year. And uh, that's actually still in my theater. I'm like, fuck, should I just go see it just to just you gotta see shits it. and giggles? But I mean, Immaculate's there also and Ghostbusters. So, I mean, yeah, that's not the priority. Yeah, I mean, those two. Do a triple feature, pussy. Do a triple there feature. you go. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to go see one tomorrow. I might go see uh, Immaculate tomorrow. I'm going to wait for Ghostbusters to cool down because I hate sitting in the in the theater with a bunch of teeny boppers that are fucking annoying, playing on their fucking phones and talking. Listen, about their all you got to do shit. is shut that Fuck. shit down and then it won't happen. Tyler, you got to just be these kids are just be a just be a dickhead. Oh, I have been, man. I <laughs> fuck, man. I raged one time, man. Oh, so bad. Like I literally was killing me, yeah. man. I yelled at kids in Titanic and they left. I'm totally that old man in the theater that's just like shut Dude, the fuck, fuck up. Shut I would the tell fuck you up. if you yelled at me in Titanic, I'd tell you shut the fuck up. <laughs> they got up and they got up and left. They sat there like 30 seconds and they just left. I yeah, actually beat you up too. I fucking yelled. Well, the, the people, you're watching people Titanic, bro. The movie's old as fuck. Yeah, I saw like, that in the you had a I'll talk somewhere else. <laughs> you, I saw you, had some, you were telling me you had some like uh kids in the back of the theater for late night of the devil i don't yeah that they were kind of bad they were like, that like they weren't the like films. they weren't like bad enough though where like the movie like in the theater was like loud enough where they might have been talking for a lot of the time but you couldn't really hear it because like they sat right behind me i was like yeah i'm not gonna deal with that and i just moved like four or five rows up so yeah, i went to I'm like, I, I always have to be sitting like in the back row in the, in the center. Uh, I like I was towards row. the back and they all yeah. sat right behind me. That's really like I sick. fucking hate having people behind yeah. me. So I always have to be in the back row. So like do I. I because I don't know how many times I've been, there's been a few times where like, there was no seats in the back row. And so I had to sit like, you know, one row up and fucking all of a sudden you got like somebody kicking your fucking seat the whole time. I'm like, Oh my God. It always yeah. happens to me, man. Every jerk off the back of your head. Empty theater. <clears throat> yeah. And they sat like, I hate, that's one thing I hate about like the whole, um, like picking your seats beforehand because like, dude, there's, it's a mat. There's nobody here. There was them. There was me, one other solo person. And then like two other people together. And that was like the entire theater. Dude, and, like they just chose to sit right behind me. Like you, you can I sit know. wherever you want. <laughs> that happened to me at Scream right, when, right. I, when I went and seen Scream Six last. It was fucking ridiculous, man. It was like, so I'm sitting in the theater and I, I saw like a little bit of a later showing. It had been out for a few, like a week or something like that. So it wasn't very busy. Anyways, I was like in the theater and I was bullshit. I probably with you guys or whatever. And and I, I clicked on the uh, the seat, um, the seat map. Just to see it was like, you know, and there was like six people in the theater, right? And, you know, the movies, it's just about to start and stuff. So I clicked on it again. Well, someone bought a seat right in front of me and there was nobody. <laughs> there was like six people in the whole theater all spread out. And this person bought one right in front of me and actually sat in front of me. Dude, it's so cringe. I'm like, it's what in the fuck? You saw that it was that seat right behind you was taken. Why would you sit there? Like, I couldn't no fucking, fucking believe it. awareness. They were looking yeah. for some loving. So I just moved over like three seats right on to the end. And I was like, whatever, but it wasn't a big deal. But I was like, why would you sit there? Like, honestly, ever... it's so strange to me. Like there was literally, I think there was eight people total, total in the theater and we were all spread out, like, like from one end to the next, except for us two right there. <laughs> it was fo fucking so bizarre. Yeah. Could, maybe, maybe the app doesn't like show like update fast enough or something. And then maybe he thinks you did that. N no, I was actually the first person even to buy a ticket, so I would have been on there. Right, but I'm saying, like, what if he bought his ticket before you, but it just didn't register on your screen when you Usually were it's pretty instant because there's time to Shut the fuck ticket. up, Tyler. I'm pretty fucking... <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure, man. I'm pretty sure he was the last person even in the theater, so he must have went up there right, right at that point and grabbed his ticket and stuff because there was, I think, like six or seven other people that were already in the theater, and he was, like, the last one to come in. Oh, so for some he, loving, he, man. he went what? and actually that, bought the ticket at the, at the yeah. kiosk. Yeah. And then you get to pick your seat right on the, the screen yeah. there or whatever. And fucking, I don't know why, because you would clearly see that the seat was taken, especially maybe this kiosk. guy, maybe this guy w wants a specific seat. And he's like, if anybody fucking sits next to me, that's their problem. Fuck them. <laughs> I want my seat. <laughs> oh man. I I've seen some, fucking I mean, in a situation like that, it's like, it's pretty much like a free for all. Yeah. Like, it's sort of like, you know, 
I mean, I, I, I'll, I have to get the scene in advance. Like, I mean, you have to go through the app that way. But like, I always do that, if yeah. it's a situation yeah. like yeah. with like Ghostbusters, Lady Night Devil, there's like a handful of people spread around. I'll sit wherever. And if by the off chance someone's like, oh, that's my seat, I'll, I'll play dumb, which hasn't happened. I'll be like, oh my God. That I'm happened sorry, last, I'm last night. In the completely different spot. Oh, it so really? Like, <laughs> listen, I we have went... had that happen to me so many times, dude, where someone's in my seat. Like, I get that. I'm like, are you fucking listen. kidding me? Like, what the fuck? There's like 12 tickets sold, man. <laughs> that happened to me at John, at John Wick Four. Well, no, it it's so a it's a awkward. good strategy though, because what happens is you some people are going to be like pussy and not want to like confront or have a confrontation, so they're just going to sit somewhere else, and then you get you get to keep their good seat. Oh, I'm telling someone <laughs> to get the fuck out of my seat because yeah. the seat I pick is the one I want to sit in. So fuck you, you're getting out of my seat, <laughs> bitch. Dude, this it, is it a duality, funny, man. Last, <laughs> so last night we went and seen Late Night with the Devil, and first of all, like that theater was way too packed for that movie uh like it was it for was which one late night with the devil oh late night with, okay dude the entire top row was full and like I, we got there a little later and there was already a dude that was like sitting next to us like next to the seats we picked and he his fucking arm was on the armrest the whole movie and it pissed me off <laughs> <laughs> i was dude, just like dude this sucks that's annoying i was so shit. mad <laughs> oh, and it was, and, luxury and seats or was it just like a standard movie they were seat? like the old school like standard theater oh seats. yeah that's how mine and was too, i hate those son of a bitches yeah those, those like, are, the smaller terrible. movies get like the smaller theaters but like then we went to see ghostbusters in uh dolby which has like the reclining seats and stuff yeah Yep. Uh, next, and mm -hmm. we go up there, and there's a dude. It, it's like top, all the way like against the wall, and uh, in the middle, and there's a guy. Like, first of all, he's sitting in my seat or Carly's seat, and then he got all his shit sitting in the seat that's my seat, like oh, all kind of no. like popcorn and stuff. And the motherfucker smelled like so much weed, like just straight weed. <laughs> and uh i was like i was like yo i think you're in my seat dog and he's like which seat are you i, I was like l9 <laughs> and he's like oh I, or i said l8 and he's like oh i'm l9 i was like well i think that's on like the other side of the theater and then he gets up and he goes down to the seat right in front of us and then two other people come and they're like yeah you're in our seat <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> i think he was just so yeah. high he couldn't i, I think that's seat. exactly i would have turned to him and said bro like you're so fucking high like you're in the wrong shit but like you ever heard of edibles <laughs> like you're in a fucking packed theater man do some edibles yeah. you don't stink at least it wasn't that guy during uh love lies bleeding who got drunk jerks off the best oh my God. <laughs> that, that is dude. a real story <laughs> i was yeah, in, it really is he it really is, he got arrested. Fuck. look look jamie pulled up <laughs> man when i i'll never forget this man i thought this was so crazy because like when I was younger, man, going to the theater, like I would always fucking like stop off somewhere and grab food and shit. Like I'd, I'd buy like fucking six junior bacon cheeseburgers from like Wendy's and just put them in my jacket and eat them in the theater and shit. Because mm -hmm. I was always like, you know, the, the food there was like so expensive, right? So I just go grab some other shit. But, but anyways, that that's that's like the funny uh, that reminds me of like in the scary, I think a second scary movie, where where the chick pulls out like the tin foil wrapped front like yeah. barbecue chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like crunching its stuff <laughs> that's like such a good parody of the people that bring their own food in it's yeah like man i so fucking extravagant so i mean i'm in the theater and i'm watching i think it was the uh the matrix the first matrix sequel which sucked but anyways so me and my buddy we we go into the theater and we're, we're sitting there and i look over and i'm like i said to my buddy i'm like does that guy have a fucking cooler and he's just like I don't know. It was, it, it, like it was dark in there. Like it was hard to see. And I was like, no, I think it's like a bag or something. It was legitimately a fucking cooler. This guy brought in a fucking little mini cooler and he was, it was all packed full of beers. <laughs> Look how the fuck did he That's get incredible. this in the theater? Like, I've never seen anyone do that. Beer, beer. But it was so fucking funny. We used funny. to take water bottles of vodka and that. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you should, but he brought a fucking yeah. cooler, dude. Like this guy, a couple <laughs> he was the fucking man. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I'm like, dude, this yeah. guy's got balls. Of like, really? Like, he just walked in there with it. Like, just, no one said anything. Yeah. I'm like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'll snake a couple of beers. <laughs> so time. all movie, all you could do was crack, <laughs> crack, crack. Like, you fucking drank every beer in that cooler too. And, like, so the cool. two hour movie was so what fucking funny. Dude. Yeah. Oh Every time he crack one, people would be like looking over and laughing. Like, this this guy's fucking drinking up a storm. <laughs> yeah. How many do you think that he drank? Oh, he had to have at least. Uh, he had to have had at least eight in that That's two so hour sick. movie or whatever at least 
when we go to um creature feature we but that's different because it's like a convention but <laughs> we we go over to the theater and usually take a little like side thing cooler of alcohol yeah they're actually showing mutilator and mutilator two back to back this the year. only time like i never brought in like small cans and shit well actually no i think i did a couple times maybe like a couple but um in the later 90s it was the fucking oes man you'd, you'd grab the bottles of oe because like one of those would fuck you right up right so Malt and they were pretty liquor. easy mm. they were pretty easy to put in your in your big puffy jacket and shit like no one knew so whatever yeah i don't think anyone would actually give a damn out this way <laughs> no nobody fuck, nobody <laughs> no, fucking I mean, cares at our theater apparently like it's it's like a free-for-all now i see people well, does yeah, your I'm theater like, serve alcohol no it doesn't actually that's no. so weird considering well, you're canadian well, well every theater down like in vancouver everywhere. does i don't know i feel like you would go i feel like you go to like an ice cream store and they'd have like beer on tap well <laughs> every, <laughs> it's, just, it's just this theater it's just this one because like even like the the mega store the mega famous players down down in vancouver and shit like that like colossus and shit which is like a 30 theater cinema or whatever it's it's all stadium seating there which we don't have here we have the old seats and it's it, they're all licensed but it's cool man because you can go into those places and like they have like full restaurant like you can get subway you can get a fucking steak you can get like steak dinner and go eat them at your fucking <laughs> wow. and you're like reclining chairs and they have like little tables you can literally be eating a steak with baked potato caesar salad and shit having a beer it's fucking hilarious man so we just <laughs> don't have that luxury here man we don't have that luxury man you gotta bring in you gotta uh pack in your own beer and junior bacon cheeseburgers and shit so yeah. one of my favorite going experiences this happened a couple years ago was that i was like going to catch a film and i was having lunch at this uh, restaurant mall i was like right next to the theater and i and i looked around and it was noticeable the amount of people drinking the the old um glass bottles of core like little small bottles and i i was like what i was what's going on i asked the guy like hey why is everybody drinking cores he's like uh yeah they're showing smoky and the bandits they were all gonna drink cores and go over there and i don't know if you guys seen smoky and the bandit or not it's a um, but in that film, you know, Burrells and, you know, they're transporting cores over state lines it becomes a whole thing. So um, I canceled my film ticket. I got myself a cores. I bought a ticket for Smokey and the Bandit in the theater and it's packed. I mean, no one's even trying to hide it. You can see like all of the cup holders are just cores beer and they, there's just no subtlety at all. If, if anyone walked in, they'd be like, this theater is drunk and it played <laughs> like a damn rock concert. You know what everybody's it was? Drink, everybody's drinking cores. They're it was great. It was one of my you favorite know, experiences. You know what, what was you know, you know what that experience was probably equal to? It was probably equal to uh scream two. <laughs> That's exactly what it what your experience was, right? Because it really happens. People go fucking buck wild in the, no, in, they in the theaters. Yes, they do. Dude, they I'll tell do. You I what, think the difference I, here is that everybody was in on it together. JP, I'm like gonna bring this up to everybody. The day. It was that same kind of vibe. I'm Listen, bring this up all it'll take episodes. you is to record a video of people going buck wild in a theater for me to believe you. Yeah, but dude, I purposely go <laughs> to the theater when no one's there because I hate people. Like I fucking can't stand like yeah, but don't you think that an like like an audience full of people who are like into the movie and like laughing it doesn't make you film. enjoy Dude, it? Dude, never happened. Not for the movies I'm going to, man. No one's going to. No, there's not. They're not selling 300 tickets to Immaculate. It's not fucking happening. Maybe <laughs> Ghostbusters. Maybe Ghostbusters. That's why I'm avoiding yeah. that shit like the plague yeah. until it fucking dies down because I don't want to be in there with fucking these two 16 year olds that are talking about their feelings and their fucking like seriously, it happens, man. Like they just don't even watch the movie. It's no, that's sucks. understandable. Those For a case like I Smoking the Bandit, I think. That, oh my god. Yeah, we were just talking about that actually recently. I mean, when I look at cases like Smoking the Bandit, like next one I think, or when I saw Rad with like a rowdy audience, that's those are films that I think benefit from yeah. an audience. Yeah, but yeah, if I'm trying to watch like Schindler's List and I got a guy going like, "Oh shit," it's like maybe not. Yeah, you well, know? that's completely fucking different. First of all, I'm not going to yeah. see Schindler's well, actually, List in the fucking cinema, anyways. That shit would be the most depressing four hours of my fucking <laughs> this life. Brand new <laughs> film, Schindler's <laughs> List. Yeah, good, good. lord, no, <laughs> Dude, thank you, you on what, that though. one. Ugh. My my best two movie experiences the last two years have both been with an audience full of old people. The best one what was were those. Well, the best one was definitely um, whatever happened to Baby Jane. And like, I, I yeah, guess the comedy guy. in that movie like never registered to me. But like, everyone in that audience except me was probably alive when <laughs> that movie was born, <laughs> and they were laughing their fucking ass off at some parts. Like it was the like they were eight years old, like watching Adam Sandler movies the first time. And it was like, like it's so like dark much comedy. Fun. It's like dark, yeah, like it was dark. like it was just yeah. like it was so heightened, and then like I just like completely got a whole nother thing out of it because these old people were laughing their ass off. The and if they start, they all start losing their mind clapping at the end of the movie. It was a fathom of it. So then the guy comes on and like announces the movie for next month, 
He comes and he's like, and next month it'll be Bob Fosse's Cavalry. And these old people like start yelling and giving it a standing ovation. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Did they, that actually did is they not know that was going to happen. They have like the whole year lineup. <laughs> I don't know. They're old. They don't know that. They probably just heard whatever to have James going in. Do these damn elders not have the internet? <laughs> Dude. And then my favorite meme of get all those time. elders online. That's my You're favorite probably... meme of all time. The the one with the old lady and she's pulling up her glass and she's like, What channel is the Netflix on? <laughs> <laughs> How do I, I contact Mr. Love Netflix? That one. <laughs> fucking makes me laugh every time I see it. <laughs> Uh, but that's a unique experience, man, of like old people that, you know, like in their 60s, 70s that are busting a gut at this fucking like dark ass movie and shit. That's yeah, and they were quiet that in any other part of the like every part of the movie. You could just genuinely tell they were like laughing and like gasping at the right part. So it was so much fun. That's hilarious. I like I like uh I like seeing like older movies with it with an audience. It's pretty fun. Um I think my favorite experience was probably Friday thirteenth oh nine. It was just, it was not it, like, it was completely sold out. Like it was just nuts. Everybody was like freaking out. It's probably the closest you'd get to scream to without being <laughs> screamed to. No, nah, it really happens, man. It really happens. I think that, <laughs> I think that was like when I see nowhere to run the Van Damme movie in the theater, man. When that came out, I, I don't remember what year it was like 92 or something like that. Shit was like crazy in there, man. But like people, I mean, it was an action film, right? Too. So it kind of made a little bit more sense, but yeah. Good times. You know what film I had a weird experience like that with? Not quite on the that level of just like insanity, but I was talking to Tyler about this the other day. But a, the film that I don't know if I'd really want to heckle and like jokes about is when I saw um, an original thirty five print of Cannibal Holocaust, and uh, mm-hmm. there was a lot of like audience participation. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know about that for this film. Really? I mean, they were they were quiet during the animal stuff. They weren't like laughing or anything like that. But with um. Uh, uh, dubbing on, like uh, Robert Kirby. Oh yeah, no, it was, it was original print. Oh, um, so <laughs> it was all intact. So I mean, I guess I'm glad they weren't like cheering at the turtle stuff. Um, but it was just weird. It was like I'm. I, mean, I, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, I know the dubbing can be like off touch. You have Edward Mannix doing like all voices and stuff. But yeah, it was just like I don't know if this is the film you want to do like a riff tracks thing too. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's just that I always think so. But yeah, I mean, hey, it's, it's give or take. You know, I feel. Like if you're going to see any film new or old you have that uh you have a gamble of any time so it's a matter of are you willing to take that gamble or not and it's your prerogative you know yeah yeah i went to i went to a midnight showing one time of days just, and confused just don't jerk but, off and pass out <laughs> yeah well isn't that a given um yeah as I, long I as you don't do that you're good <laughs> right midnight showing of days and confused one time and that place was fucking bumping too man Cause it was like people, it, it seemed like it was like all the same age really? group. So everybody was very familiar with it, obviously. And like, it, it was, it was a fun time, man. It's good shit. Mm. That's a good, that'd be a great audience movie. film. It was, That's man. Great. It was a super good one, man. It was like, yeah, it was mm-hmm. like a midnight showing. Fucking place was bumping. Like, that's a film that's, cool. Yeah. That's something like that's enhanced what I was making before like with an audience, like certain films like that. I think when you have the energy feeding off the room um, and you feel that kind of like euphoria in the room with everybody just like really enjoying themselves having a good time uh it really is um it really is infectious and i think those experiences to me greatly outweigh the negative ones of, of just taking out of the film you know what i mean like seeing like like uh when i saw the human centipede 2 at midnight uh that was an audience that were really reacting to the film they weren't being obnoxious they were just like reacting to like a lot of the violence and stuff and and because of that i think it enhanced i mean I, i'm already a big fan of that film but that in particular theatrical experience really kind of improve that film uh more so than if i'd seen it initially at home you know what i mean yeah yeah me too man it made my top 10 of uh, 11 so oh uh, i'm a big fan of that film like, that film is it's hilarious. so fucking violent man like it's just crazy dude like it's so I, gnarly dude <laughs> it, it is I love man. it it's it's <laughs> it's so good well if you love that we got but, a great uh, one from 1975 it just looks so good too that? Like oh, Solo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, Human Centipede 2 is funnier than Solo. <laughs> no. I don't know if it is, I mean, honestly. intentionally so. I don't well, know Human Centipede 2 has a lot of intentional comedy, though. That's it's the thing. Of, when the mods in the kitchen, too, like, though. they're making a human centipede. <laughs> like, that. Ha- that's intentional, man. I kind of feel like Salo does, too. I mean, her, her crushing... Her crushing the baby with the gas pedal is the funniest thing because it's so violent. It's over the top. I, I can't help but laugh. I'm not trying to be like, oh, look at me. I'm all edgy. But I'm like, to me, like, there's a lot of comedy that that is very intentional. Yeah, for sure. I agree. But hey, it's your own. It's, uh, it it's, it's kind of like, uh, like I mean, if freak. somebody doesn't like. 
it was like a prelude oh, sorry, to the third one which was like a straight up fucking comedy satire so yeah they went too far with that i'm not as i'm down on the third one as a lot of people are but i do think that um the <laughs> comedy on it it's, it's it's too much it's just a little um i don't actually really care uh, for it that much didn't work for me yeah i'm not crazy about it. I, don't, I don't i'm not like but i just think like you know to me the second one is is like miles above either the first and, and third but i know people who love the first as well i'm not really big on the first sure. i don't mind I, I, I I, I, i'm i've always been kind of indifferent like i i like it more sometimes it just depends when i'm when i watch it it's almost like a mood thing for me man it's strange but yeah the second one's right. the go-to I, one I think me. the the big yeah for sure well the first one has overall three of them i think the atmosphere is really good I, I really like that isolated setting of that house and um being when they're in the backyard that foggy kind of like um you know uh, uh the, the fog in like the the um background stuff i think all that works really well i think the film is just a little uneven for me but I, it's not like a bad for me like i just think what I, I love about the second one is that idea of just oh this wasn't crazy enough for you well we're gonna pull people's kneecaps out we're gonna you know make them shit all over the wall and stuff i by, i'm going by tom six going to like a total like you know putting the you know zero to 60 and 10 i'm like i'm all for it man i thought that was the right move to do yeah but it worked for some people that's others that's uh you know very divisive film yeah movies. like oh it it, it, it it's always the same shit man it's like some people just left comments like oh moods had fucking human centipede two on his top 10 list and then like i can't take that shit serious and i'm like fuck whatever who cares man it Wait, was just did like somebody really say that yeah there was a comment something like i can't take that serious oh. or some shit i was like i don't care what you think man it's what i like it's my favorite list yeah exactly. like, it doesn't bother you me one bit. Fire taste. yeah you don't have list. to tell me that like if you don't like it that's fine right. it's, it doesn't affect me whatsoever it's like fuck whatever but okay, it's just funny that people respond it's just yeah it's funny because people go out of their way to write <laughs> they go out of your their way to like you know to write that shit and it's just like it, it makes me it makes me smile i'm just like that's so funny right. yeah right, it's whatever. like well if you disagree that's fine what you know it's your own list man again i'm not gonna, man, I'm not gonna be like oh you're right you know right Gosh, i mean it, I, I, I get it i get it why people it. don't like it it's fine but i do so it is what it is but yeah and that's fine that's what makes if everybody had the same list be boring <laughs> Yeah, and Eleven was, like I said before, was super unique because, fuck, we had a lot of uh, different films on those. Yeah, that's what I thought was so cool about that list was that, um, I mean, you guys have seen many, many, many more horror films than I have. I'm more of kind of a general horror fan, but a lot of those films, um, the not only the placement on the list, but different uh, how enthusiastic you guys were, like, you know, having I skills higher than others or you know some of you guys were into making us missing some of you weren't i think above all else um 2011 especially had a lot of variety that it wasn't until i listened to that episode that i really kind of noticed of just the bring unique lists you know that i thought yeah. was so cool and much more interesting than just like oh number one is the exorcist number one is the thing you know it's like you know what i mean yeah it's like like i think yeah, i said about some years are like that and then some years are are not i just feel like if we get 78 that's going to be one of those i mean that's probably going to be my least favorite year to prep for in terms of it's so anticlimactic it's ridiculous like yeah, everybody knows it's my noticed. favorite movie ever that's kind of how 85 was though like it was yeah. just so there were so bangers. many heavy hitters though yeah. that well, like yeah 85 has five of my all-time favorite movies in in that year and like but like, i mean dawn of the dead is my favorite horror film it's from 78 it's like come on man like everybody fucking knows that mm, like it's so right. anticlimactic i think the most interesting like thing the most interesting thing that. about the top 10 list of 78 would be the fact that i probably wouldn't even have halloween on my top 10. that's <laughs> so ridiculous <laughs> uh, I, did, on I, I think I'm, i've never done months. this before i've never purposely left off something just to shock people or put something on ever i should do that for 78 just to see what people say <laughs> no jaws <laughs> just to fuck with people man no jaws yeah no jaws in 70 uh, yeah right man fuck 75 wow. and number one is um, criminally insane <laughs> uh, oh my god that was awful i'm a little bit worried that like when we do 75 it's gonna be like four people with jaws at number one i'm like fuck sakes man are you serious yeah, i mean it's, it's like when, the best movie it's, it's possible <laughs> okay best but i mean where i do my yeah. favorite i do favorites so okay but half the world doesn't <laughs> well they're fucking stupid this conversation again <laughs> yep and we're always going to come to this conversation because favorites is where it's at so well, rules it's, funny I mean, the other night, that, it's probably most people's best and favorite though 
You think so? <laughs> Dude, it's Jaws, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's, Jaws it's, Five. It's it, it's it's like a perfect movie almost. I, I haven't watched Jaws actually since we did the Jaws franchise. Like what? I watch it thirty years ago. Once a year at least. I yeah, don't. I See, Jaws is not a go to film for me. Like I've done go to film days. It's not. That it, surprises me, dude. I'm the type of person that, like, you know, in the summertime, people go to Jaws. I go to, yeah. um, fucking some random slasher film, right? Like, I mean, I that, <laughs> like <laughs> Sleepaway Camp two and three. Like, I watch them all the time, right? It's like, I, it's I, funny. I, I Sleepaway Camp one. I think I th I go to like it's weird. Like summertime, <sighs> don't go in the woods. Like I know fucking Carly hates that movie. It's one of my all time <laughs> favorites, and everyone knows that. I love that movie. Um, it's wild. Yeah, I fucking love that movie, dude. I just think I I, I just love Jaws. <laughs> I, love I, I don't know for Nate, sure that it's going to be my number one because because I like a lot of uh, you know I haven't seen a lot of movies, so something could replace it. But I mean, there's you know. I mean I know which one's not going to be your number one for sure. Deep Red. Um, it might be. You never know. <laughs> it's not going to be, man. It's Why like, not? If it's your number one, I'll give you twenty dollars. Because if it's my number one, because if it's my number one, it'll be your number ten. We already know this. This is how it goes down. Hey, yeah, it could so. be Salo. I am a big Argento fan. Could be yes. Salo. You see, I'm thinking Tyler was Salo. That's actually not a bad pick for him. For oh, his oh, number oh. one, I, I don't see it as Tyler. I don't even want to watch that movie. Top three. I, I love Salo. That's one of my I favorite think, Pasolini films. I think 75 is going to have a lot of different films on it too, for sure. There's, there's a movie in 75 that's like probably my top 20 favorite films ever made. What's the name of that so, film, Tyler? Spoil it for us. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not, not going to spoil it for you. No. Nah, around. Um, yeah, 75. That top. film's criminally insane, right? <laughs> <laughs> criminally insane. Crazy oh bad. Come on. It, it's fucking about Crazy Bad Apple too. It's, it's legit <laughs> it's pretty bad. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Footprints on the moon. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, right. Because we uh, like dude, uh, that movie sucks. No, I love. I'm so excited. I get to watch that again. <laughs> get, I never seen it. It's in the Tyler, yeah, Do no, not I, do not in, put shitty movies in your top ten. Because <laughs> he makes favorite. He so you're I saying like he has shitty show. taste then? Because that's yes, what he likes. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I did laugh out loud when Tyler was like, "My first thing was quiet," and, and Jamie <laughs> no. was like, "That movie sucks." <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I liked <laughs> Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I just thought it was funny. Your immediate reaction. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that, that sucks. <laughs> uh, the um, thing is, Tyler loves great movies. So I don't know why he's putting shit down on the list. <laughs> I mean, all the films he mentioned that I've seen, I'm like, yeah, it's a great, <laughs> nice, great one. I'm just like, right, because so. <laughs> you don't like something doesn't mean it's not good, bro. It's like, no, seriously. It's funny, Cremator though. is a great example I, of a film. Valerie, and her, <laughs> Valerie that oh, one too. Great. Like, Love him, bro. Like uh, yeah, I love the cremator, but Tyler's enthusiasm for that film has made me uh, in uh, subconsciously have my opinion raised off. Now, when I <laughs> see sequences from that film, I'm like, oh yeah, actually, I, I think Tyler pretty succinctly uh, put it well. How strong that film is? No, it, it is. is. <laughs> Every time you're I right, watch JP, it, actually. there's like uh, you're, you're actually wrong. I see that I'm like, holy <laughs> shit! Like I noticed this time watching, like we'll shout out someone Jewish's name, and then it'll just like cut to a person turning around and looking at the camera in panic. And I was like, holy shit, that's incredible! It just Why? because it like it's a it's a whole different texture, and it's supposed to be goofy at the same time. Sounds that, pretty like, stupid to me. <laughs> it's that's Dude, when you the break in the fourth wall it's it's never but stupid. that's that's kind of the point of though it's mocking the holocaust and it's mocking nazis it like gets to a level where they're like just making nazis I don't think they look need like any ridiculous delusional <laughs> jesus but it's so hard to like, do that in a movie yeah, <laughs> yeah it seems pretty yeah. easy to me Tyler, right? is the creator of film that would be benefited from audience participation <laughs> probably not <laughs> 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 like, uh, yeah, yeah i probably oh, agree that's a movie they would, they would show by amber so that will be laughing their ass off and i honestly like wouldn't blame them or i'd be the only one that oh, yeah. and they'd be like wow sure. that guy's not okay oh, oh yeah yeah no, i hear that it sure. always ends up coming back down to the cremator <laughs> valerie talks it. man fucking jp uh -huh. Get some Both fucking great taste. films. Get some fucking taste. Seriously, dude, you guys like that? Just go put Jaws at your number one. You fucking Valerie and her fucking weekend of pedophilia. 
I'm not a fan. <laughs> I actually did some like research on that and like lost some interviews. And the guy that was touching the girl and it was like not happy about that. He didn't know. Like I'm none sure of that he, was. In, sure. yeah, none of that I'm was. Sure in he, the, said, he said. Maybe he back. should be like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> like none of that was in the script. And then yeah, all that is sudden, pretty fucked like, up. The, I guess he said a lot of the stuff like was it in the script? And then he go on set and be like, oh, I have an idea. And he would like make the actors do something they didn't want to do. It wasn't even just that, but he'd just be like, he'd think of just different shit like off the top of his head on set. Dude, that's because yeah, yeah. he's like, he's yeah. making other people live out his fantasies. I think that's yeah. just dirty shit, man. He had, oh. he uh, had, the actor, was his name like, Victor Salva? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, we that, speak on no name on podcast. Come on. <laughs> that actor legit, it's on the, it's on the criteria on Blu ray, actually. It's a special feature, but like Victor that. Victor Salva's actor, on the Blu ray? Yes, Victor Sal is on the Blu-ray. Like, giving a I love this no, he does the commentary. No, he does the commentary. <laughs> but, yeah. Like, he's boner alert. It's, it's, Dude, it's only like a 10-minute interview, and he just like kind of like tells me, he kind of like, I did not have a good experience in this set. He will put shit that wasn't in the script, and then he get on the set and be like, I have a genius idea. <laughs> yeah, I never like the, uh, the features. Like, actually, I should actually watch those features because that's uh, that's really interesting. There's actually. a really good historian one too. There's like some guy that's like a, a like an expert in like Czech literature or something that like has a good like 14 minute just like this section of the movie. Right. His name Chris Hansen. <laughs> he was enthusiastic. He didn't really say anything perverted. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He actually did rude. say though about the if he did. Like, <laughs> He said, like, he actually kind of defended it. He's like, okay, like, yeah, this stuff's in the movie, but I don't think the film ever encourages you to, like, look at her sexually. Well, it's no, the same thing as... No, like, it doesn't. You know, a, yeah, a film like Sweet Movie, I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, but that's a film that also got in trouble for a myriad of different reasons, but there's one sequence in the film where they have a naked, a fully naked woman and children in the same shot. I mean, there's there's no trick or talk there. I mean, it's right there. I know there, there's a lot of controversy about that, Wait, too. what and, movie is it? You know, X... Uh, it's, it's a film called Sweet Movie. I don't know if it's from like I can hear it's from somewhere. It's uh, it's a it's a very it's a controversial film. There's, I mean, you you can read a whole thing about it, but I, I think it's a really good film. But that was one of the things he got in trouble for is because there's a sequence in the film of a fully naked woman like kind of dancing and being like sexual around these kids, and it's you know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a little weird, but I, it's a great film though. At least I think so. What about um, you I mean, know? It's a lot about me. I don't know. Speaking of like weird ass scenes with like kids in the scene and shit like that what about the scene at the end of guilty of romance tyler you i know don't know scene? yeah i know exactly what you're talking i know what scene you're talking about but i don't know if like, those kids are in that shot oh yeah you know what no you are right because i remember i actually like looked to make like looked at that dude and, like, when it, it started happening i was like okay because you can totally edit that where they would not be in the scene but there's yeah, a but shot has, like, from uh, side of her and, and they're in the shot yeah it has like a wide view shot where clearly the little two kids are sitting there those women were just taking a piss and they in in the film and when they shoot it too like she just crouches down and yeah. starts like she's literally she's pissing for sh for real and these kids are right in front of her and they're like ducking down and looking and watching it's really fucked up and it's so random too to the to the movie right like i mean that totally doesn't have to be there it doesn't it have doesn't... to be there but i think it like it like illustrates the point of the film well yeah i mean i guess right her mentality yeah for but sure. yeah but, like there are other things you could do without her pissing in front of children well that's what i'm <laughs> suggesting right it doesn't have to be there but it's such because like I, at first I was, context, I was super exactly. shocked <laughs> i was super shocked to see you know her pissing for real and then i was like what the fuck and then i, yeah, I, I kind of rewound like, it something I rewound like, Whoa. It because my brain instantly went holy shit those kids are in that shot like they didn't edit it right i was like oh my god yeah that kind of that kind of threw me for a loop there man it's like damn mm. But, Especially since, since like, say, a uh, uh, more temporary film. I don't know what year it is, but, you know, 21st century. Is, I mean, we can talk about older, like, 70s and 60s films that you go, like, all right, well, you know, it's, you know, it's what it is. It's, you know, can't compare the sentiments from then to now. But especially at X, uh, X, well, X 2011, actually, um, that's still being relatively contemporary. It's like, uh, yeah, it's less comedy to find now. It's just naked-ass kids in, in these films. Yeah, I mean. Put your damn clothes on, kids. It's something you would expect from like a like an older film, like because we always use like you know the cliche saying like oh you know you can't make movies like that anymore. But a lot of the yeah. times you fucking can't, like you literally yeah. can't do these things in films. Uh, yeah, I was yeah, for sure. Shocked if to I see was, like Guilty Romance is two thousand eleven. It's got a pretty yeah. shocking moment in it that I'd never heard anyone talk about before. I was like, wow, that's crazy. It's probably just a lack of not being seen. I don't think yeah, well, I don't think a lot of seen that film. Like what you know well, the movie oh, what the peeper saw or whatever you know that movie when I'm talking about right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that film? Like it's it's got some pretty fucking 
suggestive shit in that one too like with kids and stuff like you literally couldn't do that movie again and like right. that's the type of shit i'm talking about like that would never get made today there's no fucking way well, that's that's why it's wild when people like bitch about serbian film they're like oh well, the kids are in these situations it's like well if you watch the film they're clearly not in the same frame as anything no. yeah Thing happening next time or sexual so it's not as if like i mean I, that's already an easy target for people anyway so that's another thing where i'm like dude but i mean it, in this situation never i haven't seen guilty romance yeah. it's like if you don't film that's fine but don't make up bullshit excuses like oh it's, well the kids are in danger it's like we're, dude, we're all pedophiles like, no, they, we're, yeah. all, we're all pedophiles for liking that yeah. apparently because there was a lot of comments like for yourself like that's, the that's, like I fucking, me, so I don't, we, I don't we like, I'll defend that film till I die. Yeah, me too. And like, if, I mean, people are like, oh, I'll never fucking watch it because it's blah blah. I'm like, Sh- then stop fucking commenting on it. <laughs> if you've never seen the movie, I don't you watch have it, an like, opinion. It's an extreme film. Yeah, you if you, I mean, it's no one's gonna. I'm oh, sorry, to cut off. I fucking hate. It's one of my biggest pet peeves in the world is when people like have an opinion on something when they haven't seen it, and or they shut off a movie half way through it, and they they try to voice an opinion. I'm like, nah, bro. Fucking this, I think the, I think you can have a bit of an no, 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 If you don't finish a movie, your opinion is void to me. You don't even fucking, I'm no not way. hearing you, bro. No, dude, it's bullshit, man. Because dude, you a, can watch, you can watch, you can't okay, voice an opinion on a whole of the, film of when a, you watch half a movie, you can voice, you can't, maybe the, you, you, they're not saying the whole film sucks. They're saying what I saw sucks. <laughs> Right, but they speak for the whole Which, film, though. No, and, no, and, and if you're going to talk about the film way as things usually general, go, if, if you're going to talk about a film in general, the movie sucks. The second half is probably going to suck too. No, well, you it, know. it it does. Honestly, dude, I've watched movies that are fucking pretty bland for the first half, and then it totally has a great third act. And I've also watched movies vice versa where it's all good yeah. until the third act. I mean, these things yeah. happen, man. But my point is, it's definitely rare. If you don't watch all ninety minutes of the movie, tie it all together like at the end to make it better. Like I just can't take it seriously. Yeah, but the, people are I like, feel like the ones that people bail out of are not those ones. <laughs> if you bail out of the film, just keep your fucking thoughts to yourself because they're like, void to if me. If I'm watching Slender Man, right? Is there any what's the percent chance that that movie gets good in the third act? I don't know. I never watched it because I heard it just it looked shit to me. <laughs> I heard it was right. really good. I'm it, just like it, it is but shit. I don't have an opinion on it because not, but I just said it, looks, said it looks shit. Yeah, but that's not that's not judge. I'm not talking about the film as a film i've just said it, it didn't it didn't appeal to me so i didn't watch it that's not an opinion about nothing yeah but the difference said, in, the oh, in the situation or difference i'm not talking about the film to, i'm talking about when people watch a movie when it, when it comes to shut it off and then they start talking about it like they're like reviewing the film but like oh you know it's fucking garbage this is that i'm like shut up dude you didn't finish it man <laughs> right. like it doesn't matter to me yeah so. no you know you're I was having a conversation with somebody recently about a, a non-horror film. It's something different. And they were, they're having a problem with like one thing they read about the film. And I was like, and I won't get into the whole thing, you know, but I was just saying like, well, I've seen the film, what you're describing. This headline said, this isn't the case for the film. Like, you know, they're like, well, I'm not going to watch from because of what this headline said. And I'm like, well, then we don't That's have a conversation different. then. Cause I can't win you over. Well, that's, well, that's what I'm saying, though, is that if you, if you haven't seen the film, like, if you don't want to watch a film, like, serving film or whatever, like that, because about uh, content, that's fine. I totally get it. But something like that where they're like, oh, well, you know, uh, uh, you, you're just making bullshit excuses if you don't like something. What can you, you know? get like so that. influenced from a headline that it makes you not want, like, that's so crazy to me, man. Like, you either Jeremy used to do that shit all the time. We'd be, like, t- talking about a movie, and then he'd send a headline of, like, you know, this movie's the worst horror movie of the year or something and he'd be like he'd be like dang i guess it does suck i'm like bro that, <laughs> that doesn't mean shit. i know <laughs> no <laughs> like you just i read right. someone else's review that doesn't mean when it comes true. to film it's like i judge shit based on my own existence you know it's like it either looks good to me or it doesn't like i'm not mm-hmm. gonna read a headline and be oh fuck i guess i can't check that shit out <laughs> i'm not so, allowed to like uh, this film now like a fucking headline dude like who cares man like fuck you know Fucking Johnny J over there, fucking reviewing shit. Who cares? <laughs> shit to me I now, do but. text JP and ask him if I'm allowed to like certain films or not before I go to see a film. So if he says no, yeah. I'm allowed to like that, I don't watch this film. Besides that, okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm getting the okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like JP. Can I can I like this film? And he says no. I'm like this film is dog shit. When it works for the year, it's terrible. Yeah, I mean, it's not, that sounds like you're smart. It sounds like most of our top ten shows actually, man. Our lists are always so fucking different. It's like, <laughs> It's like what you got fucking hobo with a shotgun. That movie yeah. fucking sucks, man. <laughs> fucking sucks. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, uh, man. I mean, hey, if you don't like it, that. that's everyone's. Like scared. I said, I don't care. 
I love it. So whatever. Yeah, the whole thing yep. with like Serbian film, like I just don't get like the the like, oh, you must be into pedophilia if you like Serbian film. It's like, how did you come up with that conclusion? <laughs> it's the same I don't know people... how you got that message from the film. <laughs> it, it's the same people that think that because we're horror fans that we're all serial killers too. Like we want to go out and kill people for real. It's the same. I am same very, premise. very anti-murder, bro. Like even though <laughs> for I For the record, I do not like killing people. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I, I don't like <laughs> anybody <laughs> dying. We just talked yeah, about yeah, this I make the other that. day. Like how you know, we can watch a movie like Scream and enjoy it for what it is. But then, and then I talked about watching that Dateline about the real killers that base their shit on Scream, and it's like it's absolutely appalling. It's disgusting because yeah, they are I so enjoy amped that in up a different in, way. Like right. I don't enjoy it. Like oh, this is fun. I'm like oh, this is horrible. Yeah, dude, it's it like so, makes me think. Now that 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 found footage right there. Now that would have been good found footage movie because it came out very authentic, <laughs> right? Like there, it was like freaky, dude. How happy and excited these kids were, man. God, yeah, it was it fucked up, man. Messed up. Super, super messed up. Um, so Dan, you are Dan making man. your first appearance on the show. Mm -hmm. So you know what that means? Dan, do you know what that means? He's, means he's fucking he's fucking muted. It means turn on your camera. Sorry, you, you caught me your... the one time I took a oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I actually I had my fucking page over the thing, so I looked at it and I was like, oh shit, he's gone. I have my headphones on and I heard you when I was outside of the room, so I grabbed another beer as well. So I like ran through the room. I'm like, no, I didn't leave. <laughs> That's so good. I know. What does show. that mean? You, you don't know what that means. Your camera. You turn Are on the you... camera and show us your dick. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll play dummy. I'll, I'll say, I don't know what that means. I can show you my penis, though. It's not very impressive, but if you want to see it, Dan, I, Dan if the audience wants to see it, I mean, you know? I have one of my own. I can just look at my own <laughs> penis. It's fine. I mean, really. I, fair, man. Yeah. That's fair. Other, other penises. So if your audience wants to see me. it, make sure you vote down below. Yeah. Um, it's a contest. If you watch all the Hidden Gems films, I'll show my penis. There you go. <laughs> Another bonus prize. Bonus prize. That's easy. <laughs> yeah. So that's the real hidden gem. <laughs> that is the real oh, hidden gem. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord. Okay, stop with the penis talk. Okay, so yeah, first time guests on here, they get the five questions, which is never five questions. It's way too many questions that I just call five questions. So okay, fair enough. Um, you're kind of an interesting one because like you're more of like a casual horror fan, but this is still gonna apply to horror, and you can talk about other genres and shit too. So um, but yeah, they're all, all pretty basic. It's more or less just to, you know, to, for the viewers to get, you to know, you a little bit better, you know, it, cause you might be a reoccurring guest. Well, I shouldn't say you probably will be, if you ever want to come back to the show, um, and argue with JP about uh, the cremator. Okay. That's the last time I bring it up. Okay. <laughs> and Valerie too. I'm not, and Valerie, I'm, I'm not that. bringing them up anymore because JP's dumb. <laughs> we all, we, yeah. we've all fucking, we we all know this gp stupid so <laughs> so five question with dan uh we're gonna start off with the the question that we always ask right off the bat uh do you have an all-time favorite horror film um all-time all favorites for anything are always tricky i think i mean uh film i mentioned earlier the one film i think that means the most to me uh one horror film is definitely cannibal Holocaust. it's a film that uh was a film that i saw at a young age, uh, probably younger than I should have, and it was a, the first real film, horror or not, that I became completely obsessed with, where I was like, okay, I want to know everything about this. I want to know who made it. I want to know who starred in it. And um, it wasn't even until years later that I realized that Robert Kerman, a.k.a. Art Bola, who is primarily an adult film actor, is a star of it. I was like, oh, wow, he's actually right. in this film as well. That's yeah. great. Um, and, you know, I, I, uh, I, that's, you know, I got a Cannibal Holocaust tattoo on my arm, you know, just later on. Cause it's a film that I've always just kind of been obsessed with. It's just been... Uh, a film that I remember having like nightmares about and just being obsessed with and just like knowing who Rizzo or Lonnie was. It's, it's more so than just general, like, oh, this is a great film. It's the way I describe it is kind of like if you're in a relationship with somebody and it's like you can tell somebody else that I love this person, you know, they mean a lot to me, but it's a different kind of feeling when you're actually experiencing it's sort of just like I can't put into words that kind of feeling or experience. I can only try to convey that. And I'll, I don't think I'll ever be able to put it into words, but of just what that film means to me and, and how I'll, you know, defender of that film till, till the day I die. Yeah. It's, uh, Orlani's yeah. score in that fucking movie, man, is like the most, it's so, it's so beautiful, but it's haunting at the same time, man. I think it's like, it's, it, it's just perfect. It absolutely is yeah, so perfect for that film. Yeah. Listening uh, to, uh, or 
I talk about, oh, sorry, I'm going to cut you off, but um, I'd also recommend in general if people are fans of any of the, like the, the Giacomo Petty, um, and I always forget the other guy's name, any of those Mondo films, I recommend the documentary The Godfather's Mondo, because that does feature an interview with Ortolani uh, before his passing, um, where he talks about specifically his work on Mondo Kane, because his score for that film is great as well. But uh, if anybody's interested, I mean, he's a very interesting guy. He's just uh, spoken. And um, I think that might actually be on the upcoming Goodbye Uncle Tom 4K. Don't quote me on that. But either way, it's an easy documentary to find. Um, I'd recommend that if anybody's interested. Is it on the, so, yeah. like in the Mondo Kanye box that the Blue Underground put out years ago? Like, I'm, like all those films are in there. So is the documentary part of it? Because I never watched it. Yeah. Okay. It's part of that box set. I don't believe it's on the Mondo Kane individual DVD that eventually got re-released. Um, right. But it is, it is, it is, it is in that box set with you know Mondo Kane one and two, Africa Audio, and um, Goodbye Uncle Tom. So yeah, yeah. So it's Godfather's Mondo. Very so good. It, very good so it is somewhere in there. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. I actually didn't even realize yeah. that. It's crazy. So okay, cool. it's like eighty minutes. Cause it's like very much like kind of a, a lower budget kind of thing. They talk to the guys, talk to Resort Alani, kind of the experience of making these films and the eventual decline on like Mondo films and stuff. Um, but it, it is definitely good worth watching for sure if you're interested in that kind of film right right and still one of the uh one of the living legend fucking um actually no is <sighs> diodato is he still did he didn't pass away did he no he did pass away wait what did he pass away last year yeah. Right. <laughs> that's what that's why I was, I, that's why i would stop myself when i was Sorry, saying cheers, I, was, I was gonna say he's still living legend but i was like wait a minute i think diodato died last year that's crazy right totally yeah i think he he passed away in like December of 22, I think. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, because he just made he just made a uh a, a segment in that one anthology. So I was in like December, yeah, the December. exhibit. Yeah, I thought he was still alive. <laughs> well, he did one in December. No, no. Was it that one? Yeah, it was that. Yeah, summer. he passed away yeah. in December 2022. Yeah, actually his short in December actually was was a decent one. I like that one. All right, Peter Leg. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, like this, I totally caught myself. Out there. There. Raise your glass. Yeah. Pour a little liquor for my homies. Um, also, can't forget Jungle Holocaust, Cut and Run, all these trip films. Unfortunately, Diodato never fully got the recognition and the credit for that he did alongside his contemporaries like Folksy, Argento, Martino. I think Diodato belongs in those ranks. I mean, we. I mean, I put him up there. I really do. I like a lot of uh, uh, Diodato stuff. So, I mean, but yeah, I know what you're like the general consensus, right? I mean, he's kind of known for kind of the Holocaust, and people kind of forget about the other works that he did and stuff. Like, I even like Ways of Lust. Like that movie's pretty cool too. Yep. It's like even before Jungle Holocaust, man. It's like an early 70s one and shit. So uh, oh, more yeah. exploitation and stuff, but I think it's pretty cool. It's all set on a boat, which really fucking mm -hmm. helps because you guys know me with boats. I love boats. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, do you have like any, like what are some of your like all time favorite films? This just in general. Do you have uh, any more? Um, do you have any more horror films that are like up there? Like, you know, you can talk about Cannibal Holocaust and stuff, but like. Um, I mean. <laughs> It's going to be horror and not so much. I think that's, that's the film that's kind of the exception. I mean, there's plenty of uh, great horror films I hold in extremely high regard. I mean, as we all do, we have our own kind of personal experiences with these films and different artistic films. Um, but it, it, I mean, even for films in general, that, that film's kind of its own kind of island. But um, films in general, I mean, it's sort of just like I don't have any kind of like favorite film. I have films that have, you know, a lot to me and and you know really kind of influence sort of um you know uh, what i what i watch the the art that i take in and, and all that i mean you know some of the more general kind of popular stuff you would expect like i'm you know like rock taxi driver um you know like the wild bunch is kind of great films but then you know uh stuff like you know like uh picking a hanging rock or um like death wish three you know just because i mean a whole kind of spectrum of how any kind of like I, I, on my letterbox I, I try to put some sort of compendium together to like put all my favorite films and i had about like 550 that i narrowed down to like 300 and i think that's kind of a good idea of my taste i have a lot of like really silly comedies a lot of like kind of more avant-garde sort of films um i think i was talking to mason recently and i i fall somewhere in between tony and tyler film wise where i i'm i'm i like my art stuff but i also like just nonsense i mean like, i was just talking to tony i just watched that roadhouse remake and i thought it was so much fun uh, but then i also love you know like, like last year mirror and bad and these kind of more artistic sort of films so um yeah the general cut i'm i'm pretty much into anything and anything yeah, it's, it, I, I kind of feel like I'm very eclectic when it comes to films too, like especially with horror and stuff. Like one minute I can be watching like shitty five dollar fucking shot on video films, and I can be watching like you know fucking yeah, I don't know some art house film like five minutes later, you know, kind of thing, right? Right. Um, I like well, that's shit. Why, that's why I think. That's why I think your guys' show works as well as it does. Is that 
because you're covering such a variety of genre films where it's not just like, okay, you know, oh, we'll do all of our gentle stuff or all folks stuff. It's like when you guys do your Italian horror months, I'm not as uh, familiar with a lot of those filmmakers and work. So I'm listening to this and I'm like, I don't even know what these films are. And I wouldn't have ever heard of them before if it wasn't for you guys or like, you know, you're doing like the Asian stuff or anything like that. So I think the variety and the amount of like films that you guys have gone through is such a wide array of titles that really kind of separates you guys from the rest. I'm not just talking a dick for the sake of it. I'm just saying that the, <laughs> the wide range is something to be. Admired. Yeah. I mean, it's something that we didn't actually set out. It's just, I think it's just who we are, right? Like we never made a point of being, Oh, like we did an older film. We need to do a newer one. We need to do like this exploitation or we need to do this or that. It was never like that. Right. JP, it just kind of came organically. Like we just, this is what we're doing at this. Yeah. I, I think that like, we just generally like genuinely like to check out everything, you know, from all territories and eras and like, we'll do stuff from like our next top 10 is 1936. You know, who, who else is, who else has done that? Probably. Nobody's right. doing that. And, 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 and that's a great example. Like, I mean, you know, it's funny too, because we had a comment one time, like, Oh, you guys don't do a lot of older films. I'm like, actually we, talk about older films all the time like I it's most of more, more than a lot of i mean yeah it's most of stuff. it's it's, it's a, a lower percentage of like the stuff we talk about right it also but depends like what do you do. consider like older films i think a lot of people consider like 80s films like older well films. when i when i say the term older films i'm thinking like 30s and 40s and stuff yeah That's when i, I say older yeah. like i think like at least 60s yeah yeah, I would say it's, like the third, like the twenties to the sixties are yeah. what I would consider. I don't older. even when I when I when I honestly I'm thinking like thirties and forties, like even into the fifties, like into the like. See, I love like the sci-fi, you know, fuck uh, horror films from the fifties and shit. I mean, I guess that's older, but like, yeah, when when I'm thinking sixties, I don't think that old. It's I watch a lot of stuff from the sixties, and it's like seamless. So even like I would like think higher, but like when someone's as old, I think like you're taught you have to be talking at least the sixties, right? yeah like the oldest 90s to yeah some no people. for sure it, it is true i guess yeah. it's just true yeah. i mean people have a different perspective like you know you're talking about having like 550 films like in your favorite list like to the to the average film goer they would look at that and be like that's insane how could you have 500 favorite films that's insane right mm -hmm. but like that's what we do we watch film we love them and that's why our lists are like a lot fatter than more, more and than other people's right yeah, and I mean, I think that's any kind of artistic medium there is. I mean, I look at like, you know, you, you're, you know, I look at like your wall of like CDs and stuff and clearly, you know, I, you, I could pull any CD on that shelf and you can tell me a personal experience like, oh yeah, this, this artist, you know, and this album really meant, you know, something to me at this point at, at this time. And that's how it is with films for all of us. Like we all have films where we know, you know, either when we saw them or an experience that we had or just good memory and all that. And it's sort of like, that's why like when it comes to like favorites and stuff, I, I just can't really... Favorites are tricky because different. I mean, I was just talking about like Freddy Got Fingered is one of my favorite films, but I also love like you know um, Hiroshima, Hiroshima Mon Amour. Like they're two different kinds of films that give me two different feelings, and it's not right for me to put those two films on the same level. You know what I mean? No, oh, I I totally do. I totally do. I mean, and that, but that's you know when it comes down to favorite films, I don't really think of you know lumping everything into the same kind of vault. You know, it's like. I don't know, man, it, it, they, they can be polar opposites it, it, and still fall into that, you know, into that uh, barrel. It's like, I don't really know how to explain it, man. Like film to me is just, it's so non-comparable that when I'm thinking mm -hmm. favorites, I just look at it as one of my favorites, right? Like I said, like yeah, one no, I sure. could be watching taxi driver, you could be watching, you know, Rochamon or something like that, or fucking, you know, bicycle thieves or some shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't oh, really yeah, matter to sure. me. Right. No, I'm, I think we're on the same page, honestly. I honestly don't care if I have, you know, video violence sitting next to fucking, you know, the lighthouse. It doesn't bother me one bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. <clears throat> so I have like a top no, hear, 100 yeah. fave. I think I'm going to bump to like 150 because now that I've seen like a couple thousand more films. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, these lists are always evolving. Like, they're always changing. Like, I yeah, mean, they're I've always changing. Films. But like now, I've got and I've like I've been very good for a long time saying I'm only capping it at 100. I'm only putting movies in that like I've seen more than once because I don't think they're my favorite until I'm watching them over and over. But right. now I'm getting to the point where I'm rewatching movies I only watched like three, four years ago for the first time, and I'm like, wow. I call them I'm like right, right. I don't really use the term that often. Like favorite, film. I I call them go-to films. For some odd reason yeah that's just that's basically yeah. synonymous with what i'm saying yeah 
And so, uh, yeah, yeah but sure. now I'm like I've reached. I think I finally like reached the point where it's like I like I, I really don't want to like kick out any of these films. Right. Yeah, I mean that's what, so I mean, tricky. You know, yeah, I, I mean, got ridiculous. I have ridiculous stuff on there from like Adam Sandler comedies to like like Russian war films. Right. What's your favorite Adam Sandler comedy? Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison are kind of like right at the same spot. My heart says Happy yeah. Gilmore. Yeah, it's tomato tomato. Those two. It's sort of like you know you can't blame somebody for like one over the other because they both. Yeah, so like when time. I think of one liners and things I always say, like in like everyday life, I say way more from Billy Madison though. Dude, I saw the yeah. funniest fucking meme today. It was so fucking funny. It was like this fake poster for Billy Madison too. And it had the breakdown of the mm-hmm. cast, and it had fucking Tiger Woods playing <laughs> the cat. <caddy laughs> the ex <ex-pro. laughs> I laughed for five fucking minutes. I was like, "Oh my god, that's so fucking funny, dude!" Oh man, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. It was so oh, good. That was fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> it's so good. Untap man. potential. Let's get it done. You know? <laughs> right. He's still with us. You can make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what starts as a Mothers. joke would actually be the funniest thing ever in the movie if Tiger Woods was actually playing uh, Chubbs. Oh, I laughed my ass oh off. God. That was happening. <laughs> so funny, dude. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm glad we. I'm glad we put it on Adam Sandler. Now. I'm glad we're at that point of the conversation where we can go to the Sandman and talk about his films. <laughs> right. I love the Sandman. I'm all for it. I love him. Um, do you have a favorite director? Is someone that you kind of go to and put on? You know, someone that you. Um, yeah. Yeah, kind of the same point I was talking about before. Different filmmakers kind of mean different, you know, stuff to me. I mean, like I was talking about Theodato before, but of course, I know I love like, uh, uh, you know, John Sayles, Howard Hawks, uh, Vittorio Vasica, um, you know, the big ones, John Green, Carpenter, Kubrick, Scorsese, all that. Um, yeah, I just like for different things and different uh, filmmakers, different experiences, no singular kind of favorite, um, just an amalgamation of a lot of filmmakers and, uh, that I like. I love, you know, even like adult, like Chuck Van Sink, Gerard Gimiano, uh, Bob Chin, you know, Roger mm-hmm. Watkins, uh, just, just different, uh, kinds of films, different kinds of filmmakers with different visions. I think, uh, I don't think I could pick one at that whole group. I mean, you're you can fucking make, lame, but you could also, oh, lame. You could also <laughs> just pick just, a favorite, bro. It's you, not that hard. You could, uh, you could name okay. like any different director. Director. I'm fine with that. Who's your you're favorite horror director, horror. Dan? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, Dude, I'm, I'm, come on. I wish I thought this before. I'd, I'd probably be able to give a <laughs> probably be able to give a better answer. Uh, favorite horror? Direct- I mean, exclusively horror, or like a director who made horror films? I mean, predominantly like, horror. Pick one. <laughs> like, predominantly. Uh, predominantly horror. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, we all know that um, some of the greatest horror movies were made by like non horror directors, like The Shining. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm thinking like I can't. I guess I can't count like Freak or anything like that because they only made a couple. Um, he did make three. Uh, you can count him if he's your favorite. Maybe even four. Count like, him, yeah. The- I mean, I love him. He's, I mean, but I don't know if he's like a hoist, like a, a, a horror filmmaker. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't have a good answer for this. You're overcomplicating it, bro. You just pick one. That's uh, the over only- bowl. There we go. Oh, oh nice <laughs> this fucking guy i swear to god man. <laughs> come on have you seen you guys make Blood everything so complicated all, all you gotta dead? say is like i like john carpenter <laughs> it could change I'll tomorrow go like john carpenter, Who cares? I'll go. sure why not why not i'm sure he's a good guy john carpenter why not <laughs> yeah i mean the broader scheme of things like uh, yeah. i mean we, we did a top 50 favorite director like horror directors list and stuff but like if i was to branch out and pick other directors too like that's where it gets really complicated for me like that i love the, such a mine show. would be tarantino like i love world. tarantino i love fucking oh dude i love fucking um uh like i love kubrick man kubrick's amazing kubrick might, yeah, yeah. Kubrick might be my favorite director now like the dude's just, movies are so incredible yeah like man. two good ones who Kubrick. <laughs> you did, did you just say Kubrick has two good movies? Yeah, Full Metal Jacket is his best, and then The Shining is his second best. What in the AJP? F- so yeah, I know why he's saying you know it's better than Full Metal Jacket. Apocalypse Now. No, you it's why, not. You know, yeah, it's, JP, you know why you're saying this? It because, absolutely is. JP, yeah, I'm dying on that. It is not though. JP bro. has only seen it two Kubrick movies. The best. I've seen three ever. Kubrick movies. Thank you very much. What's the other one? Three. What three? 
the shining, stupid, uh, the stupid Jack one Wallace. with Malcolm McDowell that sucks that everybody loves. Clockwork what? Orange. Clockwork Orange. Okay, yeah, anyways, anyways, <laughs> you're talking to wow, three. You don't like that movie? You're talking to three people what? that have seen every Kubrick movie more than once. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I just I lied. Still seen Lolita I've only seen Kiss. Buried Linden once, and it bored the shit out of me. Even though it's a great movie, I watched, it's really boring. <laughs> I watched it last night for the second time. Hey, hey, that's random. I loved it. Lolita is great too, Tyler. You gotta watch that. Yeah, Lolita and Spartacus. That's all I have left. Yeah, Lolita, is good. Lolita is actually going back to the yeah, conversation about movies it. that you can't really make anymore. Is Lolita is definitely one of them. Um, I may have seen it, that. It's, it's wild, really uh, how misinterpreted that film has been. I think yeah, JP okay, would so. like the killing a lot. Yeah, the killing is really good. Maybe man. yeah, I guess it. Maybe it, it, it's uh, it hasn't aged the day. The pacing and the act, it's all like. I mean, that's a film that you could show to somebody now who, like, maybe it's like, oh, I don't want to watch like a black and white film. Like, it's like you could show them that, and they'd be like captivated. JP, you've never Would seen. Would you Eyes count Wide the Shut? Moon Landing film as as a Kubrick film? Yeah, or? because he did shoot that. It's yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, when so he filmed seen, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's his best work. That's his best work. That's his best fucking work. It's crazy, man. <laughs> no, it looks fake. <laughs> Is that he didn't have he didn't have the technology to make that? <laughs> oh, dude, that's fucking tried, so funny. Tell us in The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> oh man that document i was recommend the film uh project avalanche good film nice nice um i guess you know one or not you're watching like, full uh, metal jacket right now Devin which Chase. is the weirdest thing what do you mean you're watching full metal are you not recording the show you're why are yeah, you watching apocalypse he, why is jp so has, dumb today like, do you guys not put idiot. movies on while you record? He just said I'm, Kubrick I, has nah. two good movies. He's watching Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> he doesn't understand the cremator's fucking comedic elements. Valerie is way past his head. Like, dude, you <laughs> over and over what? again just created. You're a dummy today. No, dude, I'm killing it today. You are. I said, a dumb I said all ass. kind of good shit. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to be red from now on. Remember man. when like, I said I'm that calling you, you can dumbass watch every half a movie minutes. and say that your opinion on it? <laughs> he did say that. Yeah, yeah, that was another fire. fucking stupid thing, man. That is the dumbest fucking opinion on something ever. No. JP, who's your favorite horror director? Wes Craven. See how easy okay. that is, Dan. Yeah, and these guys should like to take the notes from you. Cronenberg. Uh, I'll Wait. go with Wes Craven and Cronenberg. Is it Wait, still? Ask, per, ask me permission first, if you can. Is it still oh, Craven? <clears throat> JP, what can uh, my favorite director be? Uh, what can my favorite director be? Tyler's is probably Cronenberg, so you can't have that. You can't have West. I got it. Cronenberg sucks. He's a hack. All of them suck. JP, what? Yeah. Um, uh, what, what who, who should be my favorite? Yeah, Cronenberg only has two good movies. Your favorite should be... Um, <laughs> Besides Andrea I'm Schatz. Feel, I'm, a, feeling, a legend. I'm feeling Ruggiero Diodato for you. Uh, you know what? Then yeah. moods, I definitively say Ruggiero Diodato. There yeah, you go. Well, that, fair enough. And of my own free will. I thought that was going to be your snap <laughs> answer. I thought you were going to say, oh. Oh, easier, Ruggiero Diodato. Yeah, I know. No, because I mean, it, he just it, talked it about how much he likes Diodato, <laughs> and then he's like, "Well, listen, no, because I there? Cannibal Holocaust is next level, but at the same time, I don't. Well, even though I love, uh, oh shit, well, I actually I forgot about House in the Edge of the Park. That's also kind of uh -huh. me. Mm -hmm. Besides Cannibal Holocaust and House in the Edge of the Park, I don't feel as strongly those films as, as I do with Jungle Holocaust and Cut and Run. Great films, you know, in their own right, but. Cannibal Holocaust is, is a different level. House of the Edge of the Park is slightly underneath that, and the rest are, are really good. But if that's my favorite, that's my favorite. So I'm going to go with that. I yeah, mean, see, I, get, I, like, I, I don't even like all of Wes Craven's movies, and he's my favorite. <laughs> so you you technically don't even have to. Yeah, but like you don't have to justify it, though. If you say something is your favorite, you like, I don't like all of Fulci's films either. In fact, like, Fulci did a comedy in 69, and it's 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 actually terrible. Like I, I fucking we'll could not do it, man. Um, well, and even I feel for like story, I'm not a big fan of. Are weird in general. Yeah, it it just doesn't. Yeah, I haven't done some so of them. Don't translate Italian well. Comedies. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. done some films. I'm not like the biggest, but he's also done some of my all time favorite movies too. So like, but I mean, his. I don't yeah, think I've mean, seen like, a movie by him great. I didn't like so far. Yeah, he, like his at least from the early seventies up until basically when he died. Like I, I don't honestly that whole era, man, is just like. I mean, when he started making genre films, because he was making comedies and like like other types of films and shit like that too. But yeah. he did three westerns that I really like too, spaghetti westerns. But I saw two of them; they were pretty good. Yeah, yeah. For the apocalypse, yeah. Is fucking, yeah. I watched awesome. that right, one, enough. and I watched the sober something. I think it was. Uh, Which one? Probably not. No, from Fulci. I watched two of his three westerns. 
when was the was the apocalypse one? Oh, and then there's uh, the what silver saddle or whatever that has like I a think, fucking no. Was there what's the other four one? Silver Server? <laughs> Dude, no more Marvel talk, man. Is that not a Fulci film? I don't know. <laughs> silver I don't know Server. No, I watch porn for a living. <laughs> right, right. Damn. <laughs> if it's not a porn, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, oh, excuse me. And, but um, even like, it's funny. One, one of my favorite Fulci films isn't even a horror film. It's uh, one on top of the other, a perversion story. I think it's a wonderful film, and um, I feel like I, even even with that Mondo Macabre Blu-ray, I feel like it's still not really talked about enough. But it's it's such a uh, strong I had a Mondo uh, crime Blue. film. That's, that's cool. I didn't know uh, Mondo. Yeah, Blue. yeah. No, it, yeah, I, I, I assume it's still in print, but it's it's great. Yeah, because yeah, the DVD really was so. released by Severin, and then Mondo put out the Blu-ray of that. Does it go by Perversion Story yeah, or one on top too. of the other? Um, the Blu-ray Perversion is Perversion Story, but I think the original title on top of the other. Okay. No, I, I've known it as Perversion Story the whole time. The one I was thinking oh, of... You might be right, yeah. <clears throat> the movie that I really can't stand by him is called The Eroticist. It came out in 19... It actually is kind of funny. Oh, it's I don't think same, seen that. Yeah, dude, it's like a political like satire kind of thing. Okay. Oh, dude, I could not. It's it's fucking painful, bro. It's made the same year as uh, Don't Torture a Duckling too, which is crazy because that's like that. I think one of Fulci's same. actual best films. If you were in term, I hate the fucking word best, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's legitimately <laughs> like a really well made film. One or two for me. I think it's probably his right. second best. I think it's top two. Might be his best. I, it honestly, uh, yeah, might, in terms of objectively, well. it might be better than than Zombie objectively uh, but I, I the other that. i will put the beyond as the other contender see i can't pick the ab- beyond as his best because i i don't even think it's the best in the trilogy really okay you yeah know, i think ever- i think how uh city of the living dead is better it's it's very interesting because okay. the beyond was all, my all-time favorite faulty film forever and i think i've i've i think i'm i've city has taken over for me man like it's weird. I don't know why. Uh, city, beyond... city grows. I think the most of all those. Of so all the, uh, the big films. That yeah, that too. The, both those films really grow when multiple viewings. They really. At one uh, point, when the those beyond came out. It was, was like wow. At one th- the beyond was definitely my favorite. Now my favorite is definitely "Don't Torture a Duckling," but I yeah. also think I like "Lizard and Woman's Skin." That one's and, really good. Yeah, and the it, psychic it, more than I like. Oh, that was really good too. Yeah, and his yeah. New York Ripper. See, he did good giallos, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. he, I think I like those two at least more than the Beyond. Now it's kind of interesting. I remember the time I came over your house and your girlfriend made me turn off New York Ripper. <laughs> Dude, I Wait, you, really? I was like, damn, pick a movie from the collection to watch. I was in the hundreds of movies I have. He picks the. But New she York made Ripper. you turn it off at the toe scene, right? She just yes. like and he just like didn't Dude, it's like, so gross. It was just such a bad choice. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why do you let me pick it then? <laughs> Dude, there's not a bad the man That's a great choice. I love she that film. Not, she I was not about, about the New York Ripper. Uh, I would have told him, you love me. <laughs> me and Tyler are gonna make out. Get out of here, bitch. <laughs> I'm sleeping in the same bed as you guys from now on. I'm coming over. <laughs> you, me, and Dupree. I'll be in the middle. Hey, no touching. Uh, you guys are married yet. Oh, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say again? I forgot. Yeah. So, <laughs> movies, that's what they picked. Anyways. No, Tyler's. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what the question was, but. Oh, MK rules. She, she's, she's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She's cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I don't even know what the question was that we started with, but now we're here. Who's your favorite horror director? We ended up at that. Uh, I don't know. What did JP say? I said you picked Ruggiero Diodato. Yeah, then Ruggiero Diodato. Or Andrea Schnoss. Did moods disappear? I don't, I don't know. I think he he had enough of All right. Well, let's just continue to talk about nonsense I, I know, until he gets back. I had now have a platform to say Andrea Schnoss is the best filmmaker of all time. The violent shit quadrilogy is never topped. Oh, Zombie God. 90s masterpiece. I and forgot the message that I was going to take a leak. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're just talking about the masters of cinema. Anyone who doesn't like Zombie 90, don't even talk to me. <clears throat> it's a masterpiece. Yeah, I always tell people, man, with the New York Ripper, like. I'm looking at I you, mean, Dave I've, Parker. I've watched that movie way too many times. And it's funny because it. it has one of yeah. the grossest things I've ever seen in a film with the toes. And like, you know, me with feet, I have like a feet phobia, I fucking hate feet. It's it, okay. So this is the weirdest has a foot fetish. 
No, I absolutely <laughs> fucking hate feet. Yeah, I you love I, them. I can't even You're look at, mm. I can't even look at my own feet. They're so disgusting. I gotta go um, jerk off real quick. <laughs> but I have this weird uh, like foot phobia, and I also have an eye phobia of shit going into eyes. And Fulci manages to do those things in his films, and he's my favorite director. Like, am I just torturing myself or what? Mm -hmm, it's maybe. so it's so bizarre that like I like it's weird. I can't explain it, man. It's trippy. But mm -mm. anyways, I love me some Fulci, man. <clears throat> Dude is amazing. So anyways, but we're not talking about me. We are talking about Dan. Um, so you're a collector, right? Yes, he is. Did what, he you take a piss now? Yep. I, oh, I, I've got a, I was just yes. answering for Dan because, you know. Oh, yeah. What did JP say? So, yeah. Whatever yes. JP said. Uh, also, yes. <laughs> yeah, collector. Are you... No, I asked you if you were a collector. Uh, uh, of films. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, do you have any, like, what are your favorite releasing companies? Do you buy or do you buy like all genres? Do you buy actually any like horror films and stuff? Or are you just everything else? Besides um, I don't, I don't seek it out specifically, but it's sort of like, if it's a film that, uh, uh, I know that I like a lot, uh, horror or not. And I, uh, whether or not I have any intention of watching it again, I just kind of like to own it for this owning it. Um, there are definitely films that I have that are still sealed that I don't intend to rewatch anytime soon, but just, um, you know, having it is, is enough for me. Uh, but as for like specific like labels and stuff, I mean, yeah, you know, I six being a dead horse. And, you know, I love, I mean, I can't sing the praises enough of like, you know, what, what, uh, all the metal scene company, the, them and the side labels are doing and Vigor Sync drum and, you know, the big ones, Criteria Underground, 88 Films, uh, Eureka, um, you know, it's sort of like, I, there's nothing new I can really bring to the table in terms of labels. Cause a lot of the same ones are kind of talked about so much. So it's kind of redundant. Um, well, what you, is, love, is Vinegar uh, Syndrome would be considered like your favorite, like actual favorite? Um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but it's kind of tricky because I kind of look Ma at Malice labels. Right? Would um, that be your favorite? Uh, I mean, yes and no, because when I look at like roommates, that was a quality X title. That was, I guess, it's Malice still Vinegar Syndrome, right? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess some of the umbrella of it. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, like I love like the Picarama stuff they were doing um, that they don't do as much anymore, but they still do. Like they just have the two Fred Lincoln films, uh, Daisy May and a Formal Fawcett, which was a Picarama double. Those films weren't very good, but I just like that we're at least still getting the Picarama double features. Mm -hmm. um, I guess right now I'm interested in the Melusine stuff mostly because of what I was mentioning um, off mic is that, or maybe I mentioned off mic, I don't even actually know, um, but just the quality of titles that have been getting, you know, Deep Inside Andy Sprinkle and the Flesh and Roommates, Now Blonde Ambition. I mean, there's just, there's so many titles uh, that I've been waiting for uh, for a while. Um, but then again, you know, Massacre Video, they've been doing really good stuff the past couple of years. My, my only real criticism of them has been, I think the features have been really lacking. Um, but still, we've been getting really good titles. Like Hardcore was a title I've been waiting, again, for years on. And that was so great to get that on Blu-ray. Um, as well, I just got the Roscoe Blu-ray. I've been waiting for a while on that. Um, the Man Behind the Sun trilogy, although I hope the fourth one gets released as well. Um, Mono Macabre doing great stuff as well. I, I don't I don't buy as uh, from them, but uh, everything, you know, uh, just the... Uh, just the really cool like world titles they're putting out i've just discovered a lot of really cool films that way and um yes yeah, no particular allegiance to any company i'm kind of just happy buying from uh whomever as long as the release itself is good is kind of uh you know yeah. where i'm at <clears throat> yeah i mean th there's like fuck there's got to be like a dozen companies that are that i actively buy a lot of shit from and probably even more than that <clears throat> to be honest there's so many now right it's really hard but like i said before like with the with the boutique labels man they all have kind of their own place in this realm of uh releasing shit right mm -hmm. you go to you go yeah. to certain labels for certain types of films and stuff like that like you know you want a variety of crazy shit man you go to kino if you want screen factory you want a little bit more popular shit go to screen factory you go to fucking yeah. you know mondo for like weirdly odd fucking world shit master mm -hmm. video for like just trashy fucking amazing I mean, they range from shot on video to fucking crazy extreme shit like Man Behind the Sun and stuff like that, which I actually need to pick those up. So, you know what yeah. we're doing next season? We're going to do no. Bollywood horror. Oh, baby. Ooh. Let's do it. Speaking of Mondo. Got any films yeah. come on? Well, they, yeah, they, they I, I still have that Bollywood box set that I've never cracked open. Yeah, I haven't cracked it open. I think, Tony I, got that too. I think it's because we talked about maybe possibly doing it. So I was like, you know what? I'll just keep them on the back burner until we actually do them for the show. Yeah, let's do that. Let's set that next season. I think it's already awesome. it all is season. it five or six films? Well, I figure we could do it in two volumes. Yeah. Just do it simple since they're not connected in any way, right? No, no, no. It's just a it's literally just a hodgepodge of fucking Bollywood films. <laughs> so yeah. it'd be uh it's gonna be a lot of song and dance. 
<laughs> it'd be a tragedy if I didn't give a shout out to my boy, my man Jeremy, for because he turned me on to so many Bollywood. Oh yeah, he does. He's got me so interested in all these films. Things he got me. He turned me on to RRR, and that's like one of the best films of the past couple of years. And he has been uh, lighting the torch. Yeah, for this film. So I'd be, rules. I'd be sad if I didn't, uh, dude. I give that film all the Oscars. That movie is so dude, fucking good. Up. But uh, yeah, he's he's really turned me on. Have you RRR? It is so good. <laughs> it's almost as good as Zombie Ninety, but not quite. I can't fucking believe that a Roscoe's on fucking Blu-ray now. That's one thing I'm not. Well, I, I'm not. I, I'm fine with my well, DVD from Massacre. I'm not. I'm not buying the fucking Blu-ray of that. Well, I told you the story, right? I, I emailed yeah. them like four years ago, and I was because yeah. they announced it. I'll tell it for the people who were listening. Um, and I was like, hey, I, you know, other updates in the Blu-ray. I was curious if it's canceled or not. It says they saw the message and no reply. And then, actually, funnily enough, at Wasteland this year, uh, Fred Vogel was selling the DVD, the old Massacre video DVD, for like like 70 bucks or something like that and it's been like a title where it's like i've been kind of it's been like my dick where i'm like she's been chasing it for a while so the fact that i had it i was like should i get it should i not get it but ultimately i was like i can't justify that for a film that i'm i'm not gonna watch you know again so just by a miracle like a month later when they announced that blurry i was that was on that like white on rice i was like Man. you know what i got it and uh got it in the mail and it's, it's great I'm, i didn't I'm happy to have it. i didn't know that that shit was going for that much so, like i bought a lot of pretty much all those masters when they were getting released and stuff right and when i own mm-hmm. something i i generally don't seek out to what they're worth and shit like that but he was selling for 70 bucks that's fucking crazy dude wow i mean more than that fred was kind enough to give me like uh you know <laughs> i think he had it listed 100 but he said if i was paying in cash God, you know damn me for 70 so i think he was <laughs> underplaying it i paid i think because i think 17 film- bucks for when it came out i think 17 16 bucks yeah i know that, that's a film that that's a that's a fair price for because it also got released in that um, I'm looking on the label overseas. Had that sh- like shockumentary collection that included that, and, like junk food, uh, uh, junk food films. I think it was called. Or, I don't know. They, they, it was like in a collection, but I, they also wanted like a set. I'm like, I'm not paying fucking eighty dollars for this. Um, I think it's but anyways, junk films. you have a nice new Blu-ray now from Massacre. It's uh, what's it called? Junk films. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, yeah. uh, anyways, I don't know where I'm going. But yeah, nice to have a Blu-ray of that. Um, Massacre, are great. They do great work. Um, just hurry up with the releases i, I mean they did put out mccall hall or whatever the fuck however you want to pronounce it and that shit is i've heard that's a fun film yeah, yeah. that movie is is could yeah. actually if, if you cut out all Dave was really hot on that film annoying bollywood shit like the singing and dancing and uh, and shortened it a little bit and tightened up the script it would be like a great elm street film actually dude it, it's kind of crazy some cool because, shit like, in there it's because some of the bollywood like the song and dance actually has no relevance to the movie whatsoever like it's just so bizarre like it just comes out of nowhere and shit like you could totally just take that right out like it's really fucking weird but but i agree though man there's some really good decent dark moments in there with the freddy character and shit and like it's not bad it's actually yeah, pretty fun it's not bad yeah i'd watch it again oh me too man i totally would um so i don't know if it's bollywood but there's been some like indian horror movie getting a lot of attention from 2024 um, there's, there's been a few in the last couple of years. I actually, yeah, I think I had what about, one Indian um, film on my list a couple of years ago. Actually, yeah, me too. What was it called? I can't um, remember. I know what you're talking about. I've seen it. Um, uh, thumb bad. Thumb yeah, thumb bad. Thumb bad. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, there was that one, and then I had oh, another yeah. one too. I think. That's I, good. I, I, so they've done a couple. You know, so done, I mean, the shit that that we, that we get over here that we're el- eligible to see. Yeah. They do a lot of movies, but we just don't get all of them over here. You know what I mean? But uh, right. Um. So like collecting, so like, what's your, what's your stance on the collecting? Like, do you, are you one of those guys that just buys tons of shit? Like, do you have a sizable collection when it comes to, you know, the whole physical? Uh, yeah. Thing? Right now. I mean, I've uh, been seriously collecting for a while. I mean, I have a couple thousand right now. I, I kind of like going waves where I buy a lot. I don't buy a lot. Um, you know, like I have like the vinegar syndrome, like subscriber package. So I get those and then all the uh, adult titles and stuff. I mean, I go through waves of like I buy a lot, and then other times where I don't. I mean, it's funny enough because I, I was I was buying so much that, and I I, I still laugh for this during the last Millicent sale. Uh, Tony was like, "Oh, make sure you uh, check if you even have any of these films. You know, I want to buy them twice." And I'm like, "Dude, I'm fine. I I don't have any of these." And then I placed my order. <laughs> I, I I bought three times I already had, and I'm like, "God damn it! I don't know how this happened three times." So <laughs> I mean, were the Italian titles? Start adding shit, but then. Uh, <laughs> no they're all they're, they're all adult titles i looked no, 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 i was I'm like just, what the hell <laughs> i'm just making a joke about that because i don't know who was oh, i was yeah. talking with this about just recently about uh rebuying films because they're released under under a different title 
fucking Italian films, man. The worst shit for oh, that, yeah. man. Like I've done it a couple times actually. Um, I did it with oh, I can't remember what they are now, but get a film. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like, I know this movie. Oh, for fuck's sakes, it's just a different fucking yeah, title. Yeah, damn it, I've seen this. You know, that happened with um, speaking of massacre video. I bought uh, Suicide Dolls and the making Suicide Dolls, thinking that one that they were different things like one was a documentary on the making of one was the film only to find out it's just a different cover they're both the same dvd it's just one has the biggest suicide dolls one doesn't so I'm like, god oh damn, my god that's good to fucking movie that's good to know because i have suicide Dolls. i didn't know that was a different or that was the same shit that's it's crazy a, the oh. documentary is on the disc so it's right. like i'm right. not even that big on suicide dolls but i do like the no. japanese stuff like tumbling doll flesh and putting out that's like interesting kind of curiosity pieces um yeah, yeah. but uh yeah I've got, now i have that on my shelf it's just taking space now i've, I've never opened it because i don't need to um but yeah no stuff like that i mean i i just i i mean you guys your guys's collections i guarantee kind of eclipses mine but i buy stuff in waves um i i will buy a lot at once i won't buy anything for months uh Kind of hmm. back and forth. I don't know. I'm a little consistent with that. I have but, a hard you know, time I'm, going I'm one day without the buying stuff. I, I have a hard <laughs> time going fair. one fucking day. I, uh, day, you man. know, fuck, I'm sorry. I, I'll, I'll buy like, you know, I'll keep eating like, you know, chicken wings and be like, I don't have any money for Blu rays. It's like, well, maybe I spend so many damn chicken wings and, you know, burgers and stuff. I could, you know, get some more. <laughs> but, well, uh, man, you got to have your chicken and wings, yeah, man. Uh, you got to have your chicken and wings. <laughs> I got to eat. Hey, I got to eat. You know, <laughs> I love chicken wings. I can live man. without, you know, this new release of, uh, Oh, that's great. We should have a chicken wings podcast. We talked about you love them. Oh, I fucking love wings, dude. It's like one of my all time favorite things to eat. Oh. Are you a, uh, are you a drum flat kind of guy? You know, either or it doesn't really matter. I prefer flats to be honest, because mm-hmm. they're easier to eat. Like I do the butterfly, fat, like, you know, just kind of push the meat and just like, just suck it off the bone. That's what she said. Um, uh, I know you love sucking it off. The I prefer meat. flats too. I, yeah. You, I mean, so I'm also, I'm also, I'm actually a drum guy. Of that's course great. you're off the beaten path, bro makes sense i like to um, dunk it in the blue cheese like oh it's because it's because the drums are more pre- they're more pretentious <laughs> yep no it's because yeah that's phallic. true yeah you gotta phallic. you gotta stick stick your pinky up when you eat them with your blue cheese man it's very bourgeois i've told the story before like <laughs> when i was living in a city called penticton like way down south in bc here there was a play there was a pub called the copper mug and on i think it was it wasn't even t- when it wasn't wing Wednesday. It was like Tuesday or Monday. I think it was Mondays. Actually, they used to have fucking 10 cent wings. It was Ooh. insane, dude. Can't like, beat that. Even if they're bad, you can't beat them. They had like 24 yeah. different flavors. Like you could order a hundred wings for like fucking five, but it was crazy, dude. But like yeah. people would sit in there, eat copious amounts of fucking wings, but then drink like 15 beers. Right. So they just made all their money off fucking beer sales. <laughs> It was insane, dude. But like the amount of wings. Were the beers discounted table, or were they full price? Oh, the five dollar beer beers. Yeah, at the time. Okay. This, this is not early only 2000s. were they not discounted, they were they were raised price. They were up. In- <laughs> no. Well, this would nine dollars for early, a PBR. <laughs> this would have been two thousand three, four ish kind of thing. So they were like you know general. Yeah, five dollar beer in two thousand three is pretty fucking expensive. That was normal. Yeah. That was normal prices. Like at a bar at a pub bar in Canada, five dollars was pretty good for a fucking beer i, I mean, think I think, about, I think even now beer I, like there's places where it's like 250 for a beer dude beer. you can't when go was, anywhere here and oh, get yeah, it like no, a, like a beer here. in a restaurant for less than eight nine bucks well That's maybe not a restaurant really but I okay like a bar. yeah a Pubs bar, and shit like that, eight nine probably, bucks man. damn what would you say is about like six bucks is about the going rate for a beer 550 something like that uh i, I, was I would it say was, that the uh, the pub that's in the oh you go I was, that's what it was when I was like going out a lot, like in my mid twenties. But beer, like, yeah, alcohol no, in Canada is really like, especially in the West Coast where I live, is really actually in the province I live in, it's most expensive in Canada. So hmm. we have really crazy fucking taxes here, and so the the alcohol prices are is fucking nuts. It's they've always been crazy here. So like, I got family that comes from like you know Alberta and Ontario and stuff, and they come out here and they're like, "Holy shit, dude! What the fuck is with the prices? Like literally." <laughs> like it's so bad <laughs> they, they, they 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 just can't fucking believe what they're paying out here i'm like yeah man i know it sucks that's why i love going to places like alberta and you know if i'm over there like i'll buy a bunch of shit and bring it back and stuff because like it's way it's like half the price right, Ontario, right, yeah. half the price it's fucking and but we're <laughs> still in canada like it's uh, so annoying it's so annoying that's yeah, funny how that works <laughs> um no, I I, 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 honestly like you buy you buy a lot of porn like i can you make it through a whole porn without jerking off 
<laughs> that, that's a legit question uh, because I, to be honest, like, I've, I make the joke all the time. Up. <laughs> I make the joke all the time about porno. It's like if I'm watching a porno that's say an hour and a half, two hours long, it'll take me maybe a month or two to get through. <laughs> Like I, well, <laughs> I, I'm jerking off a lot, dude. Like I, I can't do it, man. I don't know how people can watch porno and just be like, just enjoy it for like the 90 minutes. I can. It's a movie. It's crazy. I can't yeah, do yeah, it. Like kinda... I, 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 yeah, you're not going to go on like Pornhub and watch like these, the shit today. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> just, to, just to watch it. But like most well, of the shit from the seventies are like got plot and story. Right. I, I guess well, that's so. the difference too, is that, I mean, I should say that primarily I'm interested in, uh, really up to the end of the golden age of, of the, uh, well, considered the golden age of porn, it's about 84, 85 around that era. When it came to the video stuff after that, where um, theatrical film was being phased out in favor of, you know, uh, uh, box art, where it's, you're just getting a, a girl in the box, you're just selling box, the film doesn't matter. Um, I was listening to a great interview with uh, Gerard Damiano's son. Gerard Damiano directed, you know, Deep Throat, Members of the Miss, Within Miss Aggie, um, uh, Devil Miss Jones, directed a bunch of stuff. Um, his son was saying that, I was, I was telling a story about how his dad was, uh, you know, he'd be making a film, wouldn't even watch the film. They're just like, well, how can we sell a box? And at that point, that's where I'm not, I'm not like, when it comes to kind of contemporary adult stuff, I, I don't know anybody. I mean, I, I'm not interested in that. I'm more interested in the nudie cutie stuff, you know, with like, you know, what, what uh, Russ Meyer was doing and, you know, early at Curse of Lewis. Up and oh, and the golden age porn. We're getting a lot of these good titles. Uh, yeah, because films that were actually shot on thirty, you know, on thirty-five millimeter, uh, they were actually, you know, more times than not, you know, they're they're, they're trying to make films that had sex in them, you know. And there's plenty of films that are just, you know, that are just not good. That are just, you know, like uh, I, I don't want a dog in any film, but I, I did, you know, I bought that Daisy May and Formal Fawcett, um, you know, double Blu-ray set, and, and those films are just very, you know, like just very cheap, very very fast. But I, I'm more interested just in that era more so than later on. What I think people kind of think uh these films are i think they have an idea in their head of just some really bad kind of like plot some like you know some paper thin plot some bad acting and there is plenty of that don't get me wrong um but i don't think that's quite what that is from, from that era you know what i mean like when i'm talking about, when I'm talking about roommates and how enthusiastic i was in that film i i don't I almost don't even see that as an adult film because yeah it's hardcore sex in it and there are some but a film like that i think is far more emotional and is far more character driven with sex that happens to be in it where you're not watching that film you're not walking out of that film going like oh i was aroused you're walking that film going like wow i really feel for these characters and the situations they get themselves into you know what i mean oh yeah for sure i guess i guess it's the whole product of just clicking on porn now on the internet and it's just being all scenes and you're just like bam bam you're done and three thirty 30 seconds kind of thing but even back in the day yeah, you're watching porno era. movies like i i still was like have a hard time like oh there's some fucking and i'm like shit okay <laughs> break up the song yeah yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean to give a long response to such a simple question but yeah that's no, kind of <laughs> i don't worry matt <laughs> no that's um that's... <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I, if, if i start if i start feeling anything i start puncturing myself in the dick until it goes down that usually works so you know it's working myself so you know i got a couple verses on there so you know you know going back to like you know just the uh, like the podcast and shit like that so like you're predominantly not like you know hardcore horror fan like we are how did you end up listening to this show are you just enthralled with the conversation of like horror films and stuff or just wanted to, I, I like i'm that's I, actually I'm, a good question i'm interested yeah i know i can tell you the story about that um because i was uh i know he's he's more uh he's probably a little more but still mainly horror uh, as well as that i was uh, watching uh, Dave Dave Parker's videos, and um, I think Dave is such a intelligent, um, uh, well thought out, just real, real smart guy. And I loved how he talks about films. I love how he looks at films. He's very open minded. He's very uh, you know opinionated without being a jerk about it. I disagree. And Dave's an idiot. I disagree with all this. Yeah, Dave's an idiot. Dave's oh, an asshole. I, I, you know, Dave's actually, an idiot. Now I think about it, Dave sucks. I I don't like him. I don't like his <laughs> fucking face. I, you know, <laughs> no. when I'm not looking no. at his ugly fucking face that I watch, um, when I'm not looking at that that fucking beautiful body of his um he would mention the show a lot and then from there uh even though i mean what i was saying to tyler before, is that even if i'm not completely interested in the films you guys are talking about because I, I mean i am a horror guy but i'm not as hardcore as you guys are um i, I look at your guys' show and i look at it as like okay films that i wouldn't have seen otherwise i am now going to seek out like i was just telling tyler recently when you guys did your 2011 one you guys were pretty enthusiastic about sleep tight a film that i had no interest for i didn't even know what it was but because of your guys enthusiasm i was like okay you know what i actually want to make an effort to see this film um 
and and next one is man because like uh, i have i have two really close acquaintances of mine to it i'm gonna shout right out uh, to uh, to hell with this podcast uh acquaintances dave and tom are just two of the nicest funniest guys ever me they have their own horror show as well if you find spotify and um uh even if i'm not always interested in the film like i love their discussions the, they, they put me in tears at work and same thing with you guys as well you know whether you're having you know just the three of you guys you you had you know jeremy or dave or any other uh i love the discussion box that if it wasn't interesting i would have just given up by now and find something else so i think it really is just your guys is back and forth and your you know constant um bickering that i find so fascinating and find so enjoyable to listen to yeah that's i love I think, that you know if you guys sucked i wouldn't be here you know that's what i kind of figured though man is because like our show is a little bit different we're not overly i mean we're structured but we're not like over we don't really stick to this we don't have a script either that's not stupid but like you know what i mean like we don't really stick to like you know a to b and stuff we we're the 22 uh, shots of tangents and horror Mm-hmm. and next like, I love, just, yeah. like just the other day i i read a comment saying like um they were listening to a show that was a few weeks old or whatever and i'm like oh wow you're way behind and the and the person said well i listen to the shows that i'm interested in and i'm like and that's just you know the title of the show kind of thing and i'm like but every show is like okay we have main reviews and stuff but like we always tangent out and stuff like that if you yeah. if you like what we're talking like who we are and stuff like that you probably should like i would click on to every show anyways because we're yeah, probably yeah. gonna we're gonna go into areas where you know it might it's so off like a script you know quote unquote and well, like, that's what before, is that oh sorry i'm gonna off no that's all good yeah but like we don't even do like we 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 don't only do shows that we're interested in either like there's been tons of shows that i wasn't particularly interested in covering the stuff yeah there was times but, you didn't even show up to the show <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the the musical one. Right, right. <laughs> that one. Well, a great um, example of of a show that we do for you know the listeners and the fans and stuff like that was uh, the Twilight Show, which we took a lot of fucking ass <laughs> fucking on that one. Man. People just pounded the shit out of our buttholes on that the one. The finale, but, yeah, dude. Because they didn't understand that, that it was a Patreon ticket. I'm moments. like, you know what? It was warfare. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it, man. It, it, but it was, I mean, in a sense, it was pretty entertaining because, like, you yeah. know, we had people on the show that really liked the films. And, you know, we had people that obviously really generally despise the fucking movies too. And it was like, it, it yeah. was, but you know, we didn't just go in and say, fuck this movie, fuck this, you know, you know, you know fucking walking in all fucking head roll and shit like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, but you know what I mean? But like, that. Actual, but we had a conversation gotcha. about the movies. We tried we, to take them serious. <laughs> we, I actually watched these movies right, get right. serious, but like, they're so, they're so shitty. Like they're so poorly made that like that was where the conversation led to and like they're just not good movies like it, it's insane that they have such a big following i get it but well yeah well actually what i'm saying before is that i mean believe it or not as a grown-ass man i have no interest or need to watch any of the fucking films um right. but i can still listen to you guys talk about it and one not just dog on it because that's kind of low-hanging fruit honestly and two actually have a discussion about it where yeah i'm not going to sit down and watch any of these films uh Although I have seen the third one worthy enough, don't ask why. Um, but I guess to listen to you guys because I like that back and forth. And also another thing as well, and I'm not sucking your guys' dick, I swear to God. What I'm saying is that uh, I've listened to so many shows where that I end up not listening to anymore because you have two or three of the hosts and it's just the same kind of thing where everybody's kind of just patting each other on the back going like, oh yeah, I, oh, yeah, this movie's God. good. Oh yeah, this movie sucks. Yeah, we, and they just overly praise, overly dog yeah. it. So that when you it guys, comes I mean, to just, podcast, I mean, like JP. Good? Yeah. Oh no, you go. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, that. like, whenever I listen to podcasts, like the one thing that'll t- get me to like bounce from that show immediately is if I feel like people aren't being genuine yep. or they're afraid to not like something or they're too polite, like they're scared yes. they're going to hurt the other host's feelings from not uh, liking something. Or you can, you can sum opposed. up that whole thing, JP, with the word transparency, man. Yeah, when exactly. you can see right it, through you, shit, man, not, I was, it's phony. you know, it, I, you can fucking tell it in 10 minutes, dude, on these shows where, you know, these guys are getting shit to review, blah, blah. It's just like YouTube too. Yeah, they, yeah. Give, they give the good reviews on all these. I'm like, bullshit, man. You don't like this fucking movie. You just want to keep getting free fucking shit. <laughs> well, even, even some like recent, it's like, uh, you know, like uh, when I, I, you know, it's just a random film. I, I I'm not a I'm not a scream guy. I I didn't like Scream Six, but I know JP has strong feelings about that, so I'm interested in what, where he's coming from. And I know Moods, you're not crazy about that film either. So it's not I don't like the whole damn franchise. Like, going like Yeah, you know. like it that's definitely not. Well, like I'm saying is that you're, you're not like, like oh well, you know definitely at least shifted like my like way of looking at the film. Right. 
But it's also like, you know, I think it's all three of you guys, even like Tyler, like there's some stuff that we both have watched that I'm not like crazy about where Tyler's enthusiastic on, you know, where I'm like, you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a big Ari Aster guy, but I love hearing talk about, you know, Hereditary and Midsummer and, and, um, but was afraid because no matter if, you know, even though I'm not really crazy about those films, his enthusiasm is infectious. And it's sort of like, I really want to hear what he has to say. Good, positive, you know, and that's, that's different than just a, a boring, unanimous, this film's good. This film's bad. It's, it's something more to that, you know, all Anyways, about the Johnsons. Like that's all I got. So, oh yeah. All about the Johnsons. All about the Johnsons is the best short ever made. It is the most fucked up thing I've ever seen in my life. I swear to God. It's so good. It is legitimately. It's so not better good. than Chirpy. Have you not Have you seen, seen that, Chirpy? Dan? I, I know about it. I have any interest. I don't. I don't like Ari Aster, but I know you, that you guys are. No, nah, you guys. This isn't so, typical Ari Aster. You have Aster, homework bro. after the show. It's I, I, I know what it is. I don't care. I'm not. It's not for me. Yes, you're. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. Oh, wow, oh, oh JP, JP, wow. do I like it? Yeah, you. You do. I love it. Actually, it's one of my favorite <laughs> shorts I've ever seen. I've never seen a better short than um, all about the Johnsons. <laughs> <laughs> So it's one of one of the best ever. If JP says so, I think all about the that. Johnsons is absolutely fucking phenomenal. That it, I mean, honestly, if you don't like his features and shit, like this this is nothing like his features, man. Like it is. I understand because yeah, Moods is kind of indifferent well. on Ari Aster. He didn't like Midsummer. Yeah, you don't want you don't like Midsummer. Oh, it's right? yeah. I hate Mid Lamer. That movie. Well, the thing fucking, is though, is that movie's fucking terrible. Like, but even even something like even something like Hereditary, which I'm really you know I'm like I'm not really big on, but I like hearing. T- Tyler is so enthusiastic about that film, and, and I, I know you love Hereditary. Also, yeah, I'm, I like Hereditary like, a lot. That's, that's why. Like, that's why Midsummer. That's great. Midsummer that's, was such a disappointment to me, man. I was like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "Dude, this is like." Uh, but that's what I'm saying, though. Is that, that one that's what I listen to you guys, thing about sort of Midsummer, like, though? Is I swear to God, but if you watch the director's cut, that's like almost three hours long. It feels shorter. That it, is the most weird? bizarre it, thing I've ever heard. I kind of agree with Tyler a little bit. It's weird. Like I remember watching that longer cut and like not really seeing like like it didn't feel like like that much longer. It was so weird. Basically what that does is it actually develops the relationship between the boyfriend Way and more. the girl. Yeah. And they yeah, just that's basically all that yeah. was cut out. Huh. And that's what they had to cut out of it to hit the runtime they wanted. Yeah. So it was like you couldn't just Yeah, the director's cut scene. is better. I get a U.S. release on Blu-ray. Was that like in the twenty four thing? Was it just well, recent? Well, you got to get it from A twenty four directly. Yeah, I think. that was the thing I was complaining. Oh, that about. see, I that's ridiculous. I did it, but I was complaining about that because like they're like gatekeeping that cut from anyone else. <laughs> I saw ridiculous. that cut in the theater. It, that played around here, yeah. Um, I didn't catch it. But my yeah, friend it walked like... out because it was too intense. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Oh, okay, interesting. That's awesome. I don't like how E24 has like those side exclusives of like even the recent stuff like I'm um, showing it was just I don't mind that they like yeah I don't mind that they have those them. yeah like I don't mind that they have those but like I didn't like that they're like you can only buy this at our premium edition that's like forty five dollars yeah like because yeah. the thing is I dip. bought the funny thing is I bought the uh, the region two Blu Ray of uh, After Sun that movie put out, and that has more features and is a better release than the A twenty four domestic one with worse artwork, worse packaging. So it's like, and it's cheaper. So it's like, why would I even go to their site? For, I'll just import it for the, the book cheaper, you know, and get I get a commentary on it, you know. But yeah, uh, I, I saw a lot of people but, not uh, happy about that. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's what it is. I mean, I don't, I don't understand it, but I, if they're making money, then what do I know? I'm a dummy who's sitting here complaining. Right, right. Um, Thank you for agreeing to me. So, <laughs> one more question. Who's more pretentious, Tyler yeah. or Jeremy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, pretentious in what? Film taste or? Uh, oh, just in everything. general. Everything. It, it, just in everything, um, the general speaking. <laughs> Um, Tyler's not they laughing. They both have their pretentious I'm, sides. I'm curious. <laughs> Tyler's seething. <laughs> he was actually waiting for the response, like a legit response. He's like, oh, um, wait I a think, minute. What the fuck? Because, <laughs> like, it's interesting how you phrase it. Because I actually think film taste, I'm way more pretentious than Jeremy. You think um, so? Well, th- yeah. But then there's, th- there's. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Go ahead. You, you go, JP. I, okay. um, I will what say, I was going to say is. <laughs> Never mind. In, in my opinion, <laughs> Jeremy is more pretentious because Tyler, it, although pretentious about film, I don't feel like he's very pretentious about other things. 
Whereas Jeremy is pretentious about like every damn thing. Like that if is you actually true. send him yeah. a picture that's of exactly like, some what hot I was dog thinking. or something. Yeah. He'll be like, that's oh, a good point. Chicago has the best hot dog. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what I I've never thinking. even ate hot dogs out here. How the fuck do you know? <laughs> Yeah, because a lot of the shit was like at the time he'd never even left his su fucking yeah. suburb before, right? So he's like, "Well, we got the best of this." I'm like, "How the yeah, fuck?" Yeah, every do you time know that? I ever said, I'll be like, "Look, I'm eating sushi." He'd be like, "Oh, Chicago has the best sushi sh sh spot." <laughs> like, no, they don't. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not joking, dude. Like it's Chicago, you know, in Vancouver, dude. Like there's 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 more Asians than freaking any other race in the world in Vancouver. We have the best fucking sushi in Vancouver, man. That's I mean, awesome. I'm sure I know Chicago has great food. Like they're, they're a course. city that has Chicago. amazing cuisine, you know, of all types. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is that like other places can also prepare food the same way. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very true. Um, so that, yeah. that's Dan's answer. That's my answer. Yep. I'm going back. So, 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 <laughs> so Dan, who, who's more pretentious, Tyler or Jeremy? Um, it's, it's interesting because there are certain art films that I like that I know that I think Tyler will like that he ends up not being so hot on. So I'm like, okay, so maybe not quite, but then, but then Jeremy will grill for films that I don't like and he'll, he won't let it down. Um, there are certain popular films that I won't name here that I'm not as big of a fan on. So it'll be, you like this film, no, but you didn't do. like this film. It's like, please brother, do. That's like I, a total Jeremy thing. No, I no, don't want to get it. Please do name the film. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, you guys, you guys can come back for this because I there's no way I can really defend myself um, on this. I'm not going to try to defend myself. I'm, I wasn't the biggest fan of Doctor Sleep. I, I have a lot of problems with that film. I get why ex people love it. And that's fine and that's great. For me, I didn't like it. So any film, that's I honestly not that that's big unpopular. Yeah, I don't even think that's like yeah. a bad like a like. Well, a that's the one that's always brought up. Because I wouldn't example, be offended by that at all. <laughs> I don't yeah. care. For example, now, you said you. I, like don't like like texas chainsaw massacre i would be offended. no 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 nothing like that it's, it's, but for example like a film that no one that no one liked that i thought was enjoyable enough i'm not saying this is a great film i'm definitely not but i had fun with because i was about 13 beers in and i just wanted to watch a new film was it was like 1 a.m and i five nights of freddy's i'm like okay this is retarded but i like it it's fun i thought and it was there. all right i got flooded bad i got flooded with you didn't like dr sleep but you like five nights of freddy's i'm like no i'm not saying that. <laughs> no, dude, like, that, I, dude it, it's, not it's so that. funny bro because like because i know jeremy so well from the fucking years i was like stuck with him i love the guy though i love him I'm not, I'm, him. he's one of the one of my favorite <laughs> he, acquaintances I, I love he, that guy i know you do i know you do he he literally what like just just you saying that like triggers memories of like him being like like yelling at moods or something like like a four or he'll be like an eight <laughs> he was that person though like we'll say, i'll, I'll never forget the the conversation we had about the first how or the the halloween um remake or no, the, the new trilogy and i we just reviewed a film whatever it was and he's like you gave fucking halloween six the same as this film and i'm like dude what the fuck like I, i'm not i never said i was comparing this fucking movie to this movie it just happened to get the same rating he was fucking losing his mind that like, I these films a six and he was like he couldn't fucking he could not separate his mind from like it was the same rating <laughs> like dude they're totally two different entities like fucking settle down right well dude to this day is that like it'll be like uh, it was ridiculous yeah. Like, oh, fuck. I just Sorry, can't imagine saying, getting bent out of shape about anyone's rating. No, he he's busting my. Well, yeah, I love the guy. He, but I, I, he's I'm learned a little that, bit you know? about. He knew the there's so many shows over the the course of this of this podcast that like he would trip shit on fucking rating. I'm like, dude, ratings for dummies, man. Like he would just he would focus <laughs> in. He would zoom in on it, and he would never let it go. Yeah, but I'm that like, shit was funny. Fuck, was it ever fucking <laughs> bizarre to me? Like, we, we, we'd fuck with him, too. I'm like, dude, like... Yeah, dude, they're, they're, okay. Me and Carly went and seen The Empty Man years ago, like... And we hated it. Like, I was... Hated that fucking movie. And then I was like, this is, like, the worst movie I've seen, like, in years. And uh, then it, like, ended up on HBO Max or something. And then all of a sudden, other people start seeing it. And people are like the unsung like hidden gem of the year and like and then all of these people even people i respect like loved it and i'm like and like to this day he'll still post things about it to me like 
like <laughs> the empty man was the the best movie of the 2010s or whatever like all this <laughs> and i'm like dude okay i get it other people like it but i <laughs> am not backing down like i thought it was awful like sure maybe if i rewatched it maybe i maybe i missed something and i could reevaluate it but like he's like still poking me with it like <laughs> Uh, like all these years later like oh did you see that this person in named empty man is their one of their favorite movies of the decade and i'm like dude fuck it do you know what jeremy's empty rating man. on the empty man is like a three uh, a one four star. out of ten a four out of ten four out of ten oh, it's like yeah two because stars. you know why because you know why because i told him it sucked real bad so then he went and seen it and even if he thought it was good he would still give it a low ball rating because in his I've already influenced his opinion by saying it sucks. Dude, that was like that's so fucking true. That shit would happen, man. There's a lot of people like <laughs> that have seen so it. There's a lot yeah. of people. Well, I've seen it, like, I had seen it before anybody. List. Like I was the very yeah. first fucking person that was like that I saw on Letterbox. So I think there's a couple yeah, people yeah. with good opinions that hate it. Like on my on my friends list. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so what what are some of these other like two hours? What are some of these <laughs> other films, Dan, that uh that you don't like that other the majority uh, well, do? I, I don't bash on any films because like I don't want to be that guy. I don't think it's fun to dog on films. I don't want to be a jerk. There's you know, the other no, it's fun to dog on films. On that, You're on twenty two uh, shots, that's what we do. Well the no, we don't. The I'm, thing I'm, is that so when I was looking up, I was trying to find um a place to watch the remake of Carnival of Souls, which uh, we'll get to. <laughs> Um, so I went on Tubi and looked it up and, and like one of the first results was like riff tracks, like Carnival yeah. Souls. I was reading the description. It was like, oh, this poor, this poorly written B movie. I'm like, like, what fun is that? For one, we'll talk about it, but like poorly written. What? Number two, I'm like, I don't, I don't like riff tracks. I don't like, I don't like any of that stuff where it's just like, oh, let's make fun of these movies. It's like, guys, like, I'm not saying that a film should get a pass for, for just cause it's like, you know, oh, they're hard. But at the same time, I'm like, I I'm not part of this, like oh let's just make fun of bad movies it's like this is low-hanging fruit it's like make fun of like hallmark movies or like religious movies it's like oh look how bad how they not yeah but didn't like, the riff tracks for an audience the dude. original carnival of souls it wasn't the remake that's what i'm saying no that's what i'm saying oh, okay. they're, they're yeah, they, they the had a riff tracks on the I don't know if I, sorry one? i didn't phrase that yeah 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 what? i'm like what like dude, that, that's so that's fucking from... stupid man that's so fucking stupid that's well, why i don't like i mean listen there's there, there, not even a good concept I don't believe in so bad it's good because the, the thing is there's there's films like um like samurai cop or, or uh frankie and his pals or these films were dangerous men dangerous They're men dumb, dangerous men there you go uh, i mean things the room i mean i see hmm, i will I take any of these films over a boring film i mean me just having fun with it now yeah we're, we're you know we're cracking yeah, me too like the, the cremator like, dude like fuck that shit shut up jp <laughs> this guy has proved over and over again that he's the, he's the dumbest shit ever like come on <laughs> dumbest <dude>. shit <laughs> uh, a, a film like uh uh things which is ridiculous but the thing is uh no pun intended i've turned many well i'm not gonna phrase it that way i've shown that people i've shown that film to many people who have then shown it to other people and we're all laughing like oh what you know we're quoting it and stuff and like i can't call a film like that a bad film because we all yeah we're, we're making fun of it in a way but we're not like oh look at these morons we're, we're laughing because like oh this is so ridiculous the dialogue's crazy so that's why i'm like i don't want a dog on films i'm gonna be a dick if i don't like a film I'm like yeah, i don't like a film you know i move on um that's guys kind of right now. So it's like, yeah, this this popular films I don't like that I'm not crazy on horror films, classic films that I go, okay, yeah, I, I get why there's an appeal to it. I just not for me. Um, and that's that's my long winded answer to your simple question. <laughs> I have a I try to doing that. I don't know doing that. I should say. Okay. Um, Sounds good. Oh, that's okay. all I got. Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Um, we have one. It's kind of like a bonus thing. It's like a scenario question, pretty much. Like an either or okay. thing. Yeah. No. Okay. So hear me out. So, <laughs> so we're all we're all hanging at Wasteland, like the Twenty Two Shots Collective. You know, like all of us. Um, Jeremy's there also, drinking, acting like a lush. <laughs> and he turns Hopefully. to you, Dan, and he uh -oh. says, "Can you be my first? What do you do?" <laughs> <laughs> this is getting too intense for me. <laughs> <laughs> dude uh, you weren't even there man listen dan got seduced oh i got a story last I, year oh yeah, yeah i forgot do, about do I that tell a story? <clears throat> uh, dude, i, I heard that you got is that when you got sick 
Oh, uh, I can tell a story. Yeah, tell it, dude. All right, I'll tell you. It's a quick story, so I won't, like, go too much into it, but... <laughs> um, also, I'd say to Jeremy, you're remember mine. Anyways, moving on from there. Uh, for, uh, I was we were at Wasteland just having fun drinking and all that, and I went to go. I don't know if I put something in my room, or whatever. And so I'm I'm walking back and I'm making small talk with this lady, and she says, says like, "Oh, you have like good hair, or you have nice hair." And I'm like, "Oh, that's yeah, thanks." And we were making like small talk in this. I'm like, I'm I'm like God at this point. I'm like pretty buzz, and we're sort of yeah, talking we and shooting pretty, shit and all that. And it, it was it was definitely nice. Definitely been like. You know, it ain't, ain't no shortage on our part. But uh, so we're talking all that. I put my stuff back in my room. We're still talking, making spells talk. She's like, hey, do you want to come back to my room? I was like, uh, sure. Uh, not even thinking it through. So I walk in the room and immediately, I mean, literally the first thing I say was, please don't rape me. <laughs> and uh, she's like, I'm not going to rape you. I'm like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, she's like, I have my husband here. I'm like, that's even worse. He might rape me. You know, it's like, so, uh, so she has like a whole like, 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 area bar area all these exotic like liquors and all that you know like whiskey and you know all this and that and i'm not a i'm not a liquor guy i, I just like my beer i i can drink those and i'm fine um and i i don't know how much i had at this point this story makes me sound like an alcoholic I swear to god um <laughs> but uh so i'm i'm buzzed at this point i'm like fucked up and i keep saying like please don't rate me please don't rate me i have my i have acquaintances up there i i can't be in here <laughs> um so she pours me a, a glass of like uh what the hell was it it was um uh, it was like it wasn't rum. whiskey it was, or uh, wasn't it? No, it wasn't whiskey. It was brandy um, or something. I don't fucking know. Gin. It was gin. <laughs> gin. Okay. It was gin. And I make Ooh. I'm I make the corniest like speech possible. I'm like uh, again, I'm bust. I'm like I'm like out of my mind. I'm like ah, you know, we're here for a reason, and ah, we're here at this time, this place, on this certain, and it's just like <laughs> worst thing ever. So. I, uh, I, I, so I down it, which I didn't know he was not supposed to like, chug or like down like a uh, gin. I down the whole thing. It gets halfway down my throat and I, and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, Ugh! I run in the bathroom, just fucking throw up all over her sink. I mean, it's gnarly. And, uh, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, you're okay. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Please don't rape me. So I come back up to the area. And then I'm like, uh, I gotta go by <laughs> run out the room and I run back to everybody and Jay's like, Dan, where the hell were you? I'm like, uh, I was over there. <laughs> um, oh my god! He was the definitely day. trying I'm, to I'm seduce so sorry. <laughs> what was I, what, I, she? She had a husband. I, I ran though? over the next day, and I was like, "Yeah, that was crazy." Yeah, like, I'm so I confused. Had, by like, that. But I saw, I saw it the next day. Because if you're in a hotel, man, like I you, just you can't to, I mean, go I had, far from that. Like you're you're stuck there with like not a me. woman and the husband. <laughs> like that's crazy. Yeah, how old would you say she was? Like fifty. Oh, that'd be inappropriate if I made a guess. I have no idea. Um, it's just not uh, a but I saw her the next day. Story, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but she might listen. She might be like, oh, yeah, those guys are wasted. What the hell is he saying about me? <laughs> um, and that's the other part of the story that, that the next you, people day, always seem to forget, man. It's like, it is called Wasteland for a reason. And this yeah, is why it's called Wasteland. Oh, dude, that photo of uh, of uh, Ron Jeremy and, and uh, Eddie Furlong, that's truly the weekend dude right i so love that's my favorite confused. meme in the world bro send me that picture it's we so saw last night. i bet it looks awesome <laughs> <laughs> that's like a typical um, I, I did <laughs> i did apologize to her this day. i ran to her and i'm like i was well kind of sober i i did i was like already called beers at that point but i was like i was like i'm really sorry about that last night i was like fucked up and stuff and i, I didn't mean to like make a mess that she was laughing at me like her and her friend are laughing at me they're like no you're fine you're good basically probably thinking like who the like what the fuck is this dork doing <laughs> and um and i didn't get molested and i drank more and uh no regrets so raise your glasses your cups your cans whatever to that if you're listening to this up there and uh raise a <laughs> toast to the lady who didn't rape me <laughs> dude that was that's so all funny. i got happy to be on the show <laughs> Yeah, that was a uh, that was a good time though. It was uh, <clears throat> it was cool seeing everybody. It was unfortunate moods wasn't there last year, but yeah, apparently we're all this gonna be, be great. there this year. So yeah, cool. for sure, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. So if any listeners out there, um, you come know, meet us. Show us your meet us, man. Yeah, like the first year we had so many people, and then last year we had a bunch of people, and this year is probably gonna be even better. So uh, if you're in the Ohio area or even like a couple states away. Hell, you 
fucking Mason comes from Iowa, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, and uh, I hope uh, Taylor can make it this year. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, uh, noticeable. She wasn't there this year. She's great. I, yeah. I can't wait for <clears throat> uh, October, man. It's gonna be so awesome. Oh, it's like Christmas. It's like so. It's like my favorite. Yeah. Like literally, everyone's going too. It's gonna be fucking awesome, man. It's gonna be great. We're all yeah. gonna, you know, drink, call each other gay, and yell at each other. It'd be great. Yep. <laughs> And uh you, yeah, like last year um Tony came, which means you haven't met Tony you didn't get to meet Tony, but he'll I think he's no. coming this year again. So mm-hmm. um yeah, it'll be cool, man. Yeah, oh, it's gonna be wait. awesome. So yep. um so what do you do in the scenario question? Jeremy asked you to be his first, what do you do? Oh, I told you before, I said you're you're remember mine, of course. I'm a gentleman. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. And a gentleman doesn't kiss and tell. Right. Right. <laughs> says says the porn man. That's insane. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> okay. So the last little thing is called uh, 22 quick cuts. And this is basically I give you one or the other and you just say one. Very simple. Okay. All right. Argento or Fulci? One. <laughs> Fuck. Are you uh, fucking stupid? JP, shut up. What? You said <laughs> you say I tell you one or the other and you say one. Um Dan, say one. I give you two one. choices. Pick one. <laughs> uh, I'll go one. Argento, why not? No, just say that. Don't say don't fucking follow JP's lead here. That's, oh, that's re- okay. Argento or Fulci? Oh, uh, okay. Uh uh fuck. Uh Fulci. Peter North Ron or Jones. Ron Jeremy? Peter North, I'd say. What do you think? Ron Jeremy. Ooh. <laughs> Ron Jeremy. He's he was in his prime, he was a solid actor. American or foreign cinema? Hmm. American. Wow, that took a long time. Crazy. Salty or sweet snacks? Ain't, ain't no Italians can make the wild bunch. Um salty. McDonald's or BK? BK. Marilyn Chambers or Ginger Lynn? Lynn. Yeah, Lynn. Oh, God. I'm <clears throat> really? I'm Marilyn Chambers all way, all day on that one. Okay. I think well, Marilyn Chambers. Marilyn Chambers is great, but Ginger Lynn has a rated. much. Yeah, Ginger Lynn. Well, Ginger Lynn also has way more under her belt, that's the thing. And she's still, and she's doing like mainstream, well, I shouldn't say like underground, more indie. Yeah, yeah. Film. Like she's still doing shit, man. Ginger Lynn's um, great. Sports yep. or no, no sports? Sports. Carpenter or Craven? Carpenter. CD or vinyl? Vinyl. 70s or 80s porn? 70s. 70s. Pizza or burgers? Wings. (laughs) (laughs) About the fucking question, Um, dummy. Uh, this is the hardest question yet. <laughs> um, dude, that is that is a really tough one. It depends on my mood. Dude, not it's fair. funny because this weekend I've had yeah, pizza and uh, burgers. <laughs> I literally made both. I could go for both right now. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, I could have more slices of pizza, but a good burger is hard to beat. So I guess I'll go with the burger. Yeah, because right. even like bad pizza is still fucking decent, but like a bad burger is like pretty shitty. Yeah, yeah bad like, burgers you have a good are bad burger. burgers. <clears throat> it's like, right? I'm a dude. He's a dude. She's. A dude, I get that, know? man. I, like, I I, you're right though, man. Even shit pizza is still fucking enjoyable. Where yeah. bad burgers are like terrible. Oh god, it's fucking. It's oh yeah. Um, it's a mouthful. Tom Byron or TT Boy. Tom Byron or who? T Tom Byron T Boy. Boy. I don't even know who that is. So I'll go Tom Byron. The porn actors. Yeah. Who the boy, actually. Are you serious? Hi, I, this, this is from the golden age. I don't know these people are. Three you know, Tom, man. Tom Byron's like really popular. Dude, Tom Byron. TD boy was fucking huge in the eighties too, man. He actually killed himself, but I don't know who that is, but that guy's in like, Mike oh, okay. Like, um, Oh, those are always like the two biggest names besides yeah, like Peter North right and Ron Jeremy for myself, but 
Yeah. Oh shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Tom Byron. I'm sorry. That's my yeah. amazing trash lady. Uh, horror franchises or no franchises. Uh, like you mean like individual films or you mean like, uh, do you like, are you for franchises like or franchises. you just give a fuck about franchises? Uh, I mean, I don't really care about them. Yeah. I guess, uh, the individual films. Yeah. No franchises. Freddie or Jason. Jason. <laughs> I've never, I think it's the first time where I've had someone think so hard about every fucking answer on the show. That's great. Um, <laughs> I'm, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not good at like absolute such a problem. It's supposed to, this I is, know, I feel like, it. I feel like if you, if like, like it's supposed to be ben, bang bang ben was in like a saw movie or something and it was like <laughs> I'd be fucked. It, it was like pick your favorite ice cream then be like fuck i'll just uh, cut my foot off that's easier it's pretty good ben has died like, fucking really like times over. maybe i, maybe I need to taste out. the butter brickle again <laughs> <laughs> Time's right. up. if you just like name a favorite like director i'd be like damn it <laughs> who's uh wh- who'd you pick right, Freddy, i'll be faster jason uh okay, jason okay bludge of the crips Yo, <laughs> what? You can't <laughs> ask that question. I don't think I can legally give an answer to that. Let's <laughs> both this be stupid. I can't answer that. All right, twenty-two shots or or, or exploding heads. Twenty-two shots. <laughs> Thank you. I always ask. I love it. Zombies or slashes? Uh oh, fuck. Um, um, slashers. Tom Cruise or Mark Wahlberg? Marky Mark. Tom Cruise. <laughs> I knew what? it. No, I just. What happened? Hall- <laughs> Halloween or Christmas? Oh, uh, Christmas. Damn, that's tough. Christmas. Well, Christmas? Where'd Tyler go? What about. Uh, These Menace- computers are bidding. Menace oh, okay. Society or Boys in the Hood? Uh, Boys in the Hood. 80s or 90s cartoons? 90s. Yeah, 90s. I'll go with that. Hmm. Um, Megan is missing or diarrhea for three days. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Megan is missing because it's only 90 minutes. <laughs> I'm taking diarrhea for three days, man. I would rather That's watch fair. I don't diarrhea play, I don't for three you. days. <laughs> Megan is missing. It's, just, it's far more pleasurable. <laughs> Sorry, JP. I know you like that. <laughs> I'm never, I'm, I'm going to use this. This it's whole fuck Johnson, Megas dude. missing thing as like I, I, I'm gonna kill. <laughs> yeah, this sorry, to yeah, I don't like that film, <laughs> dude. Oh, Megas missing is fucking atrocious, man. It is like honestly oh, horrible. Man. It's because you're old and don't get the younger kids these <laughs> days. I fucking watched it in 2011 when I was 31. <laughs> I was 31 in 2011, and I hated that shit back then too. Too old back then too. I didn't have kids in the, in 2011 either. So, but uh, and I said, yeah, yeah. I, I do like about that about the uh, show as well as that, at least with, with the 2011 show, everybody's not just dogging that film. JP and uh, Dave Z like that film. And even though I don't like that film, I like that they like it and that makes for a better conversation. Right. I mean, it went 45 yeah, minutes fine. deep, at least on that one. <laughs> I just oh, I bullied, I just I was, bullied I was Tyler, Tyler. I'm like, this time. is so funny. He's so easy to bully. It's so great. I'm like, he Tyler, is. your favorite <laughs> films suck. And he's buys it. <laughs> I love the film. I'm like, this fucking sucks, dude. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> He definitely doesn't have the overreactions that Jeremy did, that that he had though, right? He just fucking right. loses oh, shit. Like, no, fuck yeah. off, fuck off, John. I like the shit. <laughs> you motherfucker. Yeah, just fucking loses shit, man. My favorite, oh, yeah, my like favorite moments for Jeremy was when he would like, I would say something that like actually made a bunch of sense that proved that he was an idiot, and then he would just freeze up and not like, no, like he just he wouldn't yeah, be able to talk. Three oh. talk. <laughs> yeah, oh. John's play three, the lar. Yeah. It's- the lure thing yeah, is Chuck still the funniest favorite, moment like, on the show the ever. Best. I think that's one of the funniest moments in the in the show history, man. Is like, so what do you like about the lure? What? And it was dead it was silence for like silence, ten bro. seconds, man. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, we just had dead air for ten seconds. Like he couldn't think of one thing, and he was like, I'm like, what? Because it was released on Criterion. <laughs> <laughs> I like when you added the cricket sound effects. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's um, perfect. It was fucking funny, man. So good. I can't remember. He liked Wait, was it, right? there, or he was just liked it. Sound effects <laughs> on that show. No, what's that? The I don't know if it's for that one, but in general, when like a pause, it'd be like, "Oh yeah, we, I, uh, I, I throw crickets <laughs> in every once in a while." Yeah, that's the it, one bad thing about not yeah, listening to the show that I'm on is like I miss stuff like that. 
You know what I actually use, JP? Yeah. For the no, hidden I gems? Um, I use the intro that we used to have for dub 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 for the hidden gems instead of using the feature review thing because we didn't have feature review. I use that what, intro. What was the what's that one? I forget. It's the mashup of like just Oh, uh, the channel turning. Yeah, pretty yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so I use that for hidden gems because I was like, <laughs> it's not a feature review. There's no spoilers, right? So yeah. Anyways. Um, anyways, that's going to conclude the intro. I feel like, holy fuck, how long have we been going on for in this intro here? Sorry, I didn't mean to ramble on. I don't have to. No, no, it's good. I mean, shit, that. dude, we only got two films to talk that's about. That's what so. we're here for. Fair but, enough. uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to conclude the intro five questions with, uh, with Dave and yeah, we're going to be back here. Dave. Who's Dave? I'm with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say anything. I was like, I'll just let it ride. <laughs> Oh, I forget shit, your man. fucking name. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about yeah. anymore. I don't know. My own name It's fine. All, All right, man, brain. We're going to be back with some OG verse remake carnival souls here momentarily. And now our feature presentation. All right. So getting into the featured reviews here on episode 258. OG verse remake. Yeah. We haven't done one of these in so fucking long. What was the last one we did? I have no idea, man. I, I feel, feel like, like it was, it was like the crazies or, or invasion of the body snatchers or something. Oh, it could be that one invasion. It's got to be that one. I think that's what it was. Oh no. Or it was, or, or what was that one? We did the, uh, wizard of gore. Oh, so bad. It definitely wasn't. Oh that my one. gosh. Oh, that was a bad OG because, because both movies are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was a rough one. That was yeah, a rough one. It's a rough one. All right, mm-hmm. so we're gonna we're gonna take it all all the way back to the '60s once again. So if you guys previously listened to our hidden gem show, it seemed like there was a lot of nine or sixty or films from the '60s, right? Um, and people took note of that too. They're like, "Man, there was a lot of '60s films." It's just the way it broke down, I guess. But yeah, we're gonna bunch go back. Of fucking losers. Fucking all shit. 60s movies. Whatever, man. Fuck. I only had three. <laughs> I had one. <laughs> I had one from the had 70s. Been. I had one from the 80s. So I only had three. I have yeah. five. No. No, <laughs> Moods is his appropriate amount. Tyler's is the pretentious amount. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going like, to take it back. It's like the three beers, like the three, like the three beds for Goldilocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not sure how 62 breaks down. Like where Carnival of Souls would actually fit into, it'd be uh, like number one, probably. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I've never oh, actually looked at it. We just innocent? looked at these the other day, right? But I know, but oh, was the whatever happened 60, to Baby three? Jane is sixty-two. Oh, is the sixty? Okay. All right. Yeah. So we're talking about Carnival of Souls here from 1962, directed by Herc Harvey. Now, does that not sound like a porno name? Like Herc yeah, Harvey? Yeah, it, it sounds like a <laughs> total pseudonym. Like it sounds like this guy was doing porno in the fifties, and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna go and do some fucking horror shit." <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna call myself Herc Harvey. It's amazing. I'm stealing that name. Actually, in fact, a little fun fact about Herc Harvey: he's actually the fucking he's death in this film. He's the man that uh, that's chasing our lead character in this film. The that's cool. him. He's the director. He's huh. the director of the film. That's kind of okay. awesome. Yeah. I so. Never yeah and, and and to be honest man it's like super iconic to me but like creepy as shit though it's very simple what they do with that character but like it, I, for me it really works but yeah anyways this whole movie is very simple and just done like really well yeah uh so carnival of souls uh quick little synopsis after a traumatic accident a woman becomes drawn to a mysterious abandoned carnival that's not really a good fucking that's synopsis. fucking horrible that that's what you would think the movie <laughs> would be about based on the title what the fuck is that somebody who literally read this read the title of the movie and was like i'm gonna make the plot up yeah <laughs> the plot, a, a woman is confused that's the film <laughs> Oh, that is so fucking stupid. Anyways, basically what happens is being, being in a film, our lead character, um, which what's, what's her actual, what's her name? Is it Mary? Yeah, it's Mary. Um, she's in the car with her friends and they get on a bridge and kind of in like a drag racing type deal. Mm-hmm. Anyways, they end up going off the bridge into the river and, you know, crashing and doing their shit. She escapes through the vehicle 
and uh yeah now we got our film <laughs> that, 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 any- that shot of her coming out of the water in her dress all like distraught looking yeah <clears throat> i've seen that like a hundred times in like that frame and like other things i never knew it was from <laughs> right right because this was a first time watch for me it's so iconic it's, yeah. so it's pretty it's pretty cool man it's it's one of those setups of the film you're like okay hey, like what's really going on because like she's the only one that comes out of the water you know there was two other people in the car they're obviously still down there and kind of stuff but no apparently she survives um so the story goes that she basically takes a job uh she's an organist Utah. Yeah, she takes a job in Utah. She's she plays the organ and uh, she takes a job in a church where, you know, she goes and does her thing and she's playing, you know, this organ in this church and stuff like that. And, you know, after her accident, she starts being haunted by um, this kind of like evil looking kind of figure and stuff like that. And she can't figure out what the fuck is going on. And she thinks she's going fucking crazy. And uh, so that's pretty much what we fall throughout. The yeah. Films. And then there's like weird stuff, too, where like she'll become like not there at mm-hmm. times like where mm-hmm. like she won't be able to interact with other people yeah but then she's yeah. like has nightmares and shit it's like it's like a lot it's a psychological thing um feels like, like a the, the thing Twilight i like about, episode it does the thing i like about this movie though point. is that you know everything that we're seeing throughout the film is totally just like through the reveal in the end of the film it's just it's, it's like so fucking cool like is this the first time watch for anybody? Probably not, right? Me, me. Is it really? I said that already, but you weren't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh my god, dude! I wish I could go back and watch this film for the first time because, like, the first time I watched this film was probably in the nineties. I want to say, was it and like ninety eight? Mm-hmm. No, it was not ninety eight. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, it wasn't. But I was completely fucking taken back by the reveal and i don't know what it was maybe i'm just stupid i just didn't see it coming yeah but probably like, i have no idea dude i was just like oh oh what the fuck oh so, dude i i literally yeah. not only did i see it i literally thought in the first scene of the movie i i saw the movie was yeah I, <laughs> yeah but it's just I, because i was watching conditioned i was watching it's just because i'm a conditioned to exactly. that type of yeah and i did think that too but well, I I bet in 1962 this was like a lot. Yeah, of dude, Mind this movie blood. was probably so <laughs> ramp, like it was probably it probably blew people's fucking minds, man. To be honest, I mean, it basically ends like every episode of like Are You Afraid of the Dark or like you know any anthology. It, it's thing. super obvious in 2024 eyes, but yeah, it's like, this right. is that doesn't mean like, it's less yeah, just make it bad. Yeah, it doesn't. I take might be anything. a dumbass. <laughs> but the first time I saw this, like many years ago, I didn't get it because I, I never get reveals. So when it happened, I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> like so obvious, but but it's great. It worked for me. I was I was actually surprised. Oh dude, I I but I'm this a dumbass, movie so, stuck in my mind for fucking ever. I loved when the reveal happened because I I was so into the movie. I was like, oh, this is so fucking cool. And then it happens, and I'm like, oh shit, that's crazy. Um, I don't know. I've it's also just it. a beautiful looking movie, especially with I assume Absolutely. it's. I assume the transfer I watched, even though I streamed it, was the Criterion version. Yeah. Um, but it it was just gorgeous, man. So like mm. like I love black and white movies in HD. It's like insanely crisp looking. Yeah, yeah. dude. One of my first notes here is wow, right away the Blu-ray looks amazing because I just picked it up, right? Because I've had the Criterion DVD forever. And like I popped this in and I was like, what the fuck, man? This transfer is amazing. I would oh shit, dude. It looks so good. So fucking good. Like, 60s uh black and white films in general from this era, it looks so crisp. I think of when I think of films like this or um like In Cold Blood or Shot Corridor, just these really crisply shot uh films that uh black and white, it it doesn't I guess maybe the elements are probably better than they were in like the forties or fifties, but they a film like this, it looks so clean, it looks so crisp that uh and I, I think correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is a public domain film. Um so I imagine that probably didn't have the best uh kind of resources or transfers previously. So when you have a company like Criterion giving that official like kind of uh, approval and stamp and doing a real restoration like this or or Night of Living Dead, um it really kind of yeah. shows just the the real beauty of the film, you know, how it looks. Yeah, it's really crazy, man. Like, yeah, well, the the thing with public domain movies that that makes it weird is that, yeah, anybody can technically put the movie out, but there's still owners of the elements. So, 
the, a lot of time with public domain movies, why you get so much huh. shit dog transfers is because they don't have access to the elements. Yeah. So they're just digitally doing things or not even trying to right, right. store it at all. But then I mean, like yeah. a company like Criterion is actually going to license out the real, you know, elements. Well, you can tell big time on this one. Yeah. Damn it. Looks or like uh, Golden Ninja, they were putting out like a lot. Lot of like public domain stuff too. There is it public domain? I don't. I can't even remember. A good company I it was, can't get away with something yeah. like that, like in the modern age. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Um, I mean, I thought it was. I I don't know if it actually is or not, but I'm pretty sure I saw it pop up on like some other. Okay, but right now actually, mm-hmm. it is public domain. Yes, it is. You're right. I just so saw I, it. so I think this movie, man, is like is a great interpretation of like something that is so well done shot in the mostly in the daytime that creates this whole kind of like nightmare atmosphere it, it's just so beautifully executed man <clears throat> you know they don't really fuck around with a, you know with a lot of uh like padding of time in this shit it runs like what un, under 80 minutes 78 minutes something like that i feel like it's like 70 minutes i think yeah yeah it's I real mean, clean it real rips clean. it just rips by when you watch this man i i think it's very engaging it's intriguing to watch this film because yep. like i mean you know if you go into this thing totally blind you have no idea you don't figure out what's going on it, it's a great watch dude like it it's so hard i've always said it's super hard to capture that like nightmare atmosphere during the day and they do it in this film mm-hmm. you know Agreed. it's very simple it's very simple um the one thing i love about this movie is the score <clears throat> the music in the film is so haunting it's so daunting at times it's really really great you know they don't rely on that yeah. total jump scare type thing where you know you have you know this person that's haunting her which i call death <clears throat> and mm-hmm. i just feel like that the character looks very simple it's just like a white face with kind of messy up messed up hair and shit like that but it, it's so effective in its in, in what it's doing because it's subtle it's subtle in the moments it's subtle in the shots and stuff like you'll see him passing by or he's kind of looking here doing that and stuff like that and it's not over the top it's not like punching in your fucking face and stuff like that <laughs> yeah i mean we'll get to you know the 98 remake of this where exactly how you don't do things um right right in, in my opinion but like this is more subtle it's more subtle and it's it's very elegantly done and it's very creepy it's haunting and you know and we get this through the whole film like the whole fucking movie yeah. is like this it never really falters from what it's trying to accomplish with this like day type daytime atmosphere nightmare logic kind of thing mm-hmm. it's so good it's really really good man it Moves, just I really tries right. to dial in like on the eeriness and it's just the entire movie like it's never not like it's just eerie like a, a almost like ghostly movie yeah like, it's the score dude i think the, uh, the two words yeah. that you use well, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that the the two words they used, which I'll get into, uh, that really kind of sum up this film in contrast to the remake is that subtlety and elegance. Is that yeah the the score? It, it's, there's one sequence in particular that really stood that uh, stood out that I made a note for is the uh, the the edited that the montage sequence where she's we're playing the forbidden kind of uh, notes that the devil's note or anything like that, and you have these like high kind of like pitched organ sounds uh, uh, adjacent against these like. Uh, uh, really kind of avant-garde sort of uh, uh sequences and that all there's no dialogue in that sequence you're cutting occasionally back to her yeah a sort of like out of it kind of like not really paying attention but playing but perfectly playing the song and those sequences without dialogue uh work so well in creating such an uncomfortable sort of uh feeling a hallucinogenic kind of feeling and especially what, I was, what you were saying before with design of of quote unquote the man it's such a simple design it's like a white face it's like kind of heavy like a uh, uh, black scent kind of circles around his eye but there's there's that one sequence in the film where he's walking directly towards the camera that's so unsettling and it's so uncomfortable but it works so much better as opposed to an obnoxious uh noise or it's an obnoxious soundtrack that I, this film perfectly captures what it is to be in a nightmare and yeah. it's one of the few films that truly does that it's a sustained feeling of uneasiness yeah and it does it captures it through the whole fucking movie man it's it's incredible dude like even the relationship she has with the with the obnoxious neighbor is crazy too like i mean actually <clears throat> fun fact about that character um he's the guy he actually returns and does a cameo in the remake 
he's the cop at the end of the film <laughs> that is so weird which one the That's really weird one of the yeah you know so her neighbor that she has like the relationship with like the really obnoxious guy that you know she, oh oh yeah i'm sorry yeah i'm getting in yep, in this film right. he actually returns as a cameo in the remake um as the cop at the end of the film i right away i was like oh shit, i i just recognized him i was like shit, he's a lot older obviously is, but, is he the one that asks like oh was there a carnival here uh, I can't remember exactly what he says, but he's there. Oh, I don't okay. want to give it away, but like, you know, he's there at the end, like yeah, after the reveal kind of thing. Like he's in the reveal okay. part in the, in the remake, but right away, you know, it's him, but, um, right. okay. Actually another weird fact, actually Candace, uh, Helen Goss, who plays Mary in the film, our lead in this film, she was actually asked to do a cameo in this film. She turned it down. And she's on record. She's on record saying that the remake is fucking horrible. Like, mm -hmm. hor like she just went off on it, man. It's it's actually really funny how how much she hated the fucking remake. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> this movie's really actually. Cool, I don't mean to cut you off there, Moose, for a second. Uh, but I want to ask Tyler a question because one of the notes that I had here really reminded me of a film that both you and I both uh, love, which is uh, Polanski's Repulsion. Did you find any similarities between the main character in this and the boyfriend? I remember in Repulsion where they had the uh, the guy who was chasing after uh, Catherine Deneuve. Did you find any similarities there? I never uh, thought of that, actually. Again? I never actually I mean, thought of that, to be honest. That's crazy. I didn't look at it like that. I can see how you would come up with I can see why you would come up with that, but is it maybe the aggressiveness? Know. Like, is that what you're talking it's about? It's not even that. I, it yeah, just, I, it's just the idea of like a presence. But I think when I you mean, like the, understand I'm talking the, about, the, you're talking about like the guy that was chasing you, right? Yeah, the only guy that was chasing her. Yeah, yeah, he's okay. I'm just making sure. Like, where I'm like, I, I get what you're saying about like a pre like yeah, it's like a it's being haunted by a presence, and like that's where it's there's definitely similarities. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think when you like understand the context of both films, they're not really. The same thing i guess like they just have different motivations but like they kind of no, represent I, different things no i completely understand that and, and you're completely right about it. i'm talking about more so about you have a potentially mentally unstable lead woman like this and you have this guy who's aggressively going after her even though she's said yeah repeatedly like no i'm not used to back off and the fact that this in both the keys coming back and all this and that um, it, i'm not saying it's direct correlation or anything like that but uh, but for this film that i haven't seen in a couple of years the fact that repulsion immediately came to mind was uh something that i didn't know if i was alone yeah, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely the thing that right. like the thing about it too that there were it it has very similar cinematography. Um, yeah, repulsions, exactly. yeah, repulsions a lot more like musically. It's a lot more brash and a lot more like chaotic in your ears, but they are still like very like sound driven and a lot of like the just the way the close ups are presented with the leads are like also very similar looking people. So like mm -hmm. I both movies really do have a similar looking image with like similar looking films. One just a ghost film, and one's like a I guess a, like more of a psychological horror film. Yeah, but it's the same sure. ideals. Yeah. yeah, I feel like this I, movie influenced a lot of shit though, man. Like a lot of narratives, a lot of oh, like the way undoubtedly. films. Like this, I mean, this is uh, a very influential film in my opinion. I think there's Direct a lot influence on Ever Mirror. Oh, absolutely. I think there's a yeah. lot of shit going on in this that's really fucking cool, man. Like one of my favorite aspects of this film is our lead character Mary, who is an organist for you know church. She plays organ in church and actually gets paid for it. Um, is you know once the reveal happens, the 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 you know the plot or the narrative part of you know her taking this job in a church and she treats it as solely a job. Like she doesn't fucking care that she's in church. She doesn't care about the religious aspect. She doesn't care about that. Right, she's just right. there to do her job, which plays into the core narrative. So fucking cool. It's like, it's so good and cool. Hmm. Right. I mean, I don't want to give shit right, away. If right. You've never seen carnival of souls, but like, I mean, you can probably have a general idea of what's going on here, <clears throat> but it's actually really cool when you actually think about how this film develops, like these type of things you can take for, you know, face value, surface value, and kind of overlook the the significance of what she's doing in the church and you know like you know church life and death kind of thing religion uh where you're going uh you know heaven and hell death and life and stuff like that. all these things are factors in what's being shown here and i think it's really fucking unique how it's played out it's subtle and it it works perfectly for myself what do you guys think 
Oh, you're completely right about that. I get a sense of real, like, kind of ambivalence from her about um, her working this church. I got the sense that she was overly religious, or it, it never really gave that indication. It's sort of just like, I'm here to do this thing that I know I'm good at, and uh, whatever else happens is a consequence of that. Because even later on in the film, when she ends playing, I don't know if her spoilers not, so I won't say anything, but when she plays the, uh, you know, the devil's note and all that, it's sort of just like, I never get a sense of any kind of, like, religious sort of feeling taken away from her. It's sort of just like this general possession. Um, for, for I think it's very significant that that, that um, scene in the film is very significant because you know she doesn't have any of that religion and stuff like that and we we also learn that she's being at times like when <clears throat> you know in her reality she's losing her ability to exist in that reality right it's like something's being taken yeah from for sure and stuff so like this is a way of showing like she's like her, drifting yeah she's drifting so she's losing like maybe her soul kind of thing right carnival soul exactly yeah that yeah, that, that's why I like that. There's that sequence in the film. And uh, actually, I, I really, really want to hear what JPS said about this film because it's the first time watching, so I'll show up. In a... But um, <laughs> I really like that sequence where she is just uh, kind of wandering through this carnival. And, I mean, the atmosphere aside, I mean, it's second to none. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful kind of look. And I love the setting of the film. It's like, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar like, with what uh, liminal spaces are, um, but I kind of had the feeling of that. Um, just sort of like this nostalgic kind of place may or may not have been in your life. But like all of that, I loved. I mean, I, I can't stress enough, like what you said before, you know, subtlety and and, and it's just second to none on this film. It, it's all, it all matters. For like just a really really unsettling experience um but but well, jp i'm curious this is your first time watch so what did you what did you initially get from this i just i just wanted to add something that actually like that scene in the carnival like oh, sorry. Th there there's a very definitive moment in the film which i i think is like the best scene in the film actually that, yeah dude that image i know we're talking about the same thing like the image like uh, that has lived rent free in my head since the first time i saw this <laughs> so i'm thinking of i'm thinking of like the whole dance sequence because yeah, like, it's, exactly it's, it. it's the whole it's dance like the most, of death. yeah it's, it's such well, it's an, an allegory. It's so good. Yeah, oh. It's literally an allegory. An allegory for you know. That's like we know, one we, of those we know what we're talking about, yeah. but like it's That's so one well of those done. Things you see the first time, you're just like, wow. Yeah, dude, it's so executed. It's executed so elegantly, and they're they're literally showing a fucking dance of death. It's so fucking cool. It's so important. It's Correct. so unnerving and like the way they do it and shit like, that. oh man, dude, this movie is, it's, it's really, really fantastic, man. There's it's, it's a lot of great elements in here. So like that, like that shot, it's just so good. It's like, it's just, everything is worth it. Right. That's why I'm laughing before, like, uh, that, what I before is that Rift Tracks calls us a, a, a poorly written B movie. I'm like, did we watch the same movie, guys? Because this is like brilliant. <laughs> like, this is like this is really foundational. This is one of the like, horror films of the 20th century. Yeah, this is like one of like this is really foundational like horror. Yeah, see, I don't understand. I think, that. Maybe I it's a thing where they get appreciated later. But. That riff track shit, man, is is fucking irritating. Like that's what I said. Before. I mean, I'm they've like, done they've done good movies before though. Like I've seen them do stuff that I would consider like <laughs> classic or close. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but JP, this is your first time watch. What, what did you think about it initially? I think it's pretty damn good. Like it, it's, it's a simple movie kind of remind it, the odd and oddly enough, like the, when she like leaves the, uh, the town after like the incident and stuff after she, she gets saved or, or, you know, doesn't die it, it, for some reason, maybe it's just like the time period, but like, I, I got straight like psycho vibes with like Mary Dude, and Crane leaving. You know, what's funny. Uh, I have point. that written down. I actually have that as a note. <laughs> and I'm like, I feel like it, it feels like psycho. It totally yeah. feels like psycho. Yeah, it does. But also I just, I, I love like movies that are actually like scary. And I feel like this one actually does a pretty good job. Even being a lot of times with like the older films, you know, it doesn't, it's not as effective as, uh, you know, the, the, you know, maybe stuff from the eighties or, or later, uh, seventies, eighties, but like, um, not, not a lot of like sixties movies actually scare me, but I thought this one actually had some really creepy moments in it. And that's obviously like one of my favorite things about horror is like to actually get scared or, or creeped out. Um, and I appreciate that about this movie that it, it's it's more of a straight up you know chiller if you will 
I think one of the, yeah. I think one of the coolest things for myself that's really kind of subtle in the film too is like you know the scenes of where she's like all of a sudden becoming like a ghost kind of thing like you know no one like no one yeah, can yeah. see that she's there and stuff like that is a great metaphor for you know obviously what we know it, when the reveal happens and stuff like that like the way they showcase it through throughout the film is actually really cool because it's like that whole transitional thing right that's what's happening right. in and out in and out again I mean, I feel like this is a movie that we probably should be talking about in full because, I mean, it is like 60 fucking two years old. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, right? be like, it's not like this is an obscure movie. Like, this and it's is not like obscure. A classic. It, right. Everybody can see this thing, but like for the people that haven't seen it. I promise I, you too. like watching your 2024 eyes like we are not spoiling this movie. Yeah, but I love those <laughs> scenes. I love those scenes. It plays into the narrative so fucking well, right? And oh right. man, it's it's so haunting. This whole movie is just it's so enthralling, man. I watched it yesterday morning when I got up, and I'm just like, man, it rekindled my love for this. It's movie. so fascinating. I love it. Yeah, uh, it. it oh, I, sorry. The music, the cinematography, the atmosphere it catches. You know, the subtlety of the man. It's so simple, but it's so effective. You know, mm-hmm. like the the neighbor, the aggressiveness of him and stuff. And like, I like that guy. I like that character. Like, he's annoying because he's super aggressive. But like, I don't know. There's something about that relationship in the film where you just like, because she wants somebody. She knows that she needs somebody. But like, this isn't, she obviously knows this is not the right guy for her. Right? This guy's way too aggressive. He's kind of an alcoholic. <laughs> obviously, he's fucking like, <laughs> he's bammering it up in the fucking morning with some rum shots and shit. Like, this guy's out of control kind of thing. Right? But he's a working man. He's a blue collar dude. I can relate to him so yep. you know i mean it's got that it's got that appeal to it too and like i think it's just overall man it does what it's supposed to do in such a it's such an easy um kind of simple way if that makes sense i think it works yeah no for sure i mean i think that it's great that a film like this um when it gets released by someone by a label like criterion it, it not not necessarily validates it but it sort of shows like this is a some schlocky thing this is like this is an artistic film and i think that's one of the big things about the films that is a very not not even quite long, it's very artistic film where it, it doesn't feel disposable i mean i know that the director of this didn't primarily do a lot of tv after um and, and that's fine at all but i think the way the film is shot the way the interiors are shot it, there's a lot of like isolation in the film when she goes to this carnival it's like this 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 frightening place in the distance where it's just her and her on this journey alone, it's incredibly unnerving. And I think when I first watched it many years ago, I liked it a lot, but some of the things didn't quite gel for me. But this time it was kind of like a whole new experience where, I mean, it's 78 minutes. It doesn't wait. It, it takes its time, but it doesn't waste a minute of that time. It's so compelling and it's so unnerving. And I just found myself completely engaged in this film and to a point where I'm like, this is, this is an obvious, I mean, I'm watching the film, like this is an obvious classic. Like this is, there's no debate that this is a great film. Like I, I don't, I don't even understand the, the the cheesiness of it or the B moviness of it. This is such a strong character film that's heavy on atmosphere. You know what I mean? I always hate the term B movie because people associate B movie with being like schlocky and shitty and stuff like that. You can make a low budget film that can be considered B movie, but turn out like this. Like this is not exactly. a big production film. It's a B film, but it's it's legit. It's a serious fucking movie that's not schlocky and it does exactly what it intended to do and it does it well in a simple way i mean exactly. this is a yeah. great example of a low budget film from the from the early 60s that just totally excels in every aspect you know i mean even right down to like the freudian stuff you know right down you know when she's talking to the doctor and stuff like that like that's done so well in this film and, and it is it's so fucking laughable in the remake it, it literally is so bad Mm-hmm. <laughs> right but they do it yeah, so no, well I mean, in this you're film you're completely right about it yeah, yeah. i mean they just it's, i mean even okay even if you even if you want to look at it from like a shallow kind of surface level point of view okay how does the film look i think the film above all else has a really unnerving quality throughout the entirety but there's like one sequence in the film where she's looking down at the stairwell and the man i'm looking up at her and it's Walks so by. unnerving because it's not outright frightening yeah it, it's not outright frightening but it's like it's so unnerving where it's like what I'm saying before is that it feels like a nightmare. It feels like we've all been in the situation. Well, that's what I said about off the top of this too, like how this movie captures such a great nightmare aspect during the day. For the most part, this most of this movie shot during the, during the day. Yeah. It's mostly daylight and it's, and it's so atmospheric and it's hard to do that. Right. And make 
scares that are so subtle and shit like that like again this is one of those movies that's not like it doesn't have that big kick drum pulse pumping fucking like you know demon shaking demon fucking you know like to fucking like, <laughs> like are you fucking with me like dude like this is exactly why i like doing these og verse remake shows especially when the remake fucking is donkey balls but <laughs> you know this is like this is a great movie man it's legitimately a oh, great fucking gosh. movie there's nothing about I mean, this movie that's bad like there's so much going on there's literally so much going on like uh, dude i i think it's, it's just not there's not a moment of fat on this thing no it, it is no, every scene really every great. sequence every, every dine it's funny i compare this to the uh the uh the haunting which is a, which is a, a subtle 60s ghost film Love and then it. you get the 90s remake which we'll talk about with uh, i've actually the, never seen it uh 98 carnival souls well it's about what you expect from a 90s remake of that film there's no subtlety there's no characters it's very they're not they're not trying to make a legitimate film and i i'm not thinking the hard work that's done on that film i'm sure they you know i like great stuff but i'm just saying that a film like this like when i watch this film again the fact that i can watch this late at night and still you know i watch this on a 4k tv you know all comfortable on that, and i'm still like genuinely unnerved when he's coming close to the camera that dance sequence uh the organ sequence the montage where it's like you know uh, uh the the footage sped up it is so unnerving and it is so specific that there's not a lot of films that i really can call like a dreamlike experience where we're following primarily the, the uh, protagonist uh i forgot her name i apologize but the fact that we're going through her kind of mindset which is Mary. unreliable as is makes for such yes thank you makes for such an uh uh interesting experience to say at least i will say ex this i have no complaints about this film but the only thing i will say that i thought was kind of interesting is that well actually if we're not doing spoilers never mind, i can't say it but Never mind, forget about it. I was gonna you know, say you know something, funny, but it's a spoiler. You, so you know what's funny, JP, that you bring up the whole psycho thing, and I was thinking that shit too. So here's like a weird kind of six degrees of whatever, but so uh Cadence Hillengross, who plays Mary in the film, she like Anne Hayes could be her. That's a great comparison. Right? It, it's kind of a weird thing because like Anne Heche was the one that played in the remake, right? Of Psycho. Hmm. Kind of fucking weird. Actually, I, there, there's something odd about like I like I thought about that a couple times since I've watched this film. Like, it's like fucking and Anne Heche kind of reminds me of her, man. So yeah, anyways, I don't know what happened. Right. He's not answering. <laughs> I don't know who Anne Heche is. JP, is the girl JP's finishing Psycho, the, the, the remake. <laughs> you don't know who Anne Heche is? What the fuck, right. dude? She's the one she's I'm not the girl good who played. At Anyways, rest Janet Lee's character in Psycho. She's in the Psycho remake. Uh, she was, dude, she was, I've seen that movie fucking one time, like she was, years she ago. used to fuck um, Ellen DeGeneres. Care. Like they used to be a really, yep. yeah, live on TV. Yeah, they got in trouble for that. Yeah, anyways, like, <laughs> super she's super famous for that actually, for her and uh, Ellen DeGeneres. But, anyways, but yeah, Anne Heche actually just passed away, so rest in peace to her. But um, but yeah, I always, it's kind of funny, the whole psycho thing. And I'm like, man, she totally reminds me of, of, uh, of Mary in this film. It's crazy, but mm, yeah, no, for sure. That's I, I still character. think, I still think one of my favorite things about this film, like I said, I, I might've mentioned it, but like, it's just the fact that like, she's in a church working and she doesn't care about the whole religious factor and stuff like that. I think that's one of the coolest elements of the narrative. Yeah. Right. And she's got this. Yeah man that's following her and it, and it plays in perfectly because she doesn't give a shit about this and like and like the progression of like her getting fired because she's playing the devil's notes and stuff like that it's so fucking awesome dude it, it literally is awesome right right it's like i mean it, it, what I think the film is that like i think it would have been a, a lot easier a lot less interesting if, if she had been if the film if the script had gone a more traditional route or maybe she had been a religious uh kind of person and like you know this this demonic or devilish force kind of persuaded her to the other side what i like about the film is that there's the ambiguity of it of like whether or not she was religious or not you know this is more so a job for her but the fact of the matter is that she's still being possessed by this force where it's like it doesn't matter if it's like oh my, my beliefs being taken away from me it's more just like no we're just going to take you because you know you, your soul was with us you know and that's what i find something it's not it's not overt and it's not obvious it's a very subtle script it's a very subtle film where a lot of the stuff not just the visuals but the script itself is left to interpretation not in a lazy way where it's like well, we don't know you'll figure it out but it more so it's like there's a lot of this character that feels intentionally not explored because 
we're seeing from her point of view, they wouldn't, you know, right. give a, she, she doesn't have a scene where she tells somebody, oh, I'm from here and I did this and this, and this. you know, there's so many films like, you know, uh, actually a problem that I had with Late Night of the Devil the first five minutes of that film was like, oh, the character did this and this. And, this. and I'm like, hey, guys, no, stop, stop it. I like ambiguity, you know, which is right. um, something that I, I, I can't say for the remake, but, you know, we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah, I agree, man. I mean, there's things that don't need to be explored. Like, that's what I like about filmmaking like this when it works. You know, you have these characters in this car, like uh, on the start, and then it just picks up from there. Like, you don't really need to know much about her at all for it to work. Yeah, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. so it yeah. is what it is, man. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. definitely the ambiguity of, you know, her religious back. But I feel like I, I look at this film like she maybe once was, and that's part of the whole I, I again i don't want to give it away fuck sometimes i just i don't i want to say i feel like you probably have to i, I feel like this one's old enough where i mean you want people to see it obviously and experience it, but i sort of like right I feel like this is a well enough known enough no well known enough film that like you know yeah i, I was know. i was gonna use, i was gonna say <laughs> purgatory like the whole purgatory thing kind of thing right so it plays into that but um anyways yeah yeah i mean it's tough i mean i mean that's probably enough for which is, right is an interesting point as well because yeah no but you're definitely right about that i i think that and also that the uh uh her I, i'm the actor actress name i, I apologize i'm blanking on I'm, I'm not very familiar with her I, I know she didn't do a whole lot but i think that she really is such a strong enough performer and uh, you know even though it's very easy to say like oh she's really good at subtlety because she, she doesn't have a lot of dialogue it's ridiculous thing to say but i think with her performance in this film her body language her facial movements her confusion or her just sort of like um uh, ambivalence, I think, says a lot without having to tell you as an audience member. Something that it's funny the contrast with the remake is that with this film, by saying less, I'm getting more out of it than by explaining. More. I'm like, guys, like, re relax. <laughs> um, right. right. This, this, this film is just so strong in every front. Um, I, I truly can't say enough kind of things about this film. Um, but, but I, I don't want to over over uh, cloud the conversation. I mean, JP, this is your first time watching, so I'm really kind of more interested where you're coming from on this. Right. I mean, I pretty much agree with everything you guys fucking said, you know, <laughs> like, uh, you okay, kind of stole all the thunder. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, let me think. Uh, the first scene where you see like the ghoul in the shadow uh, or in the window, like when she's driving, I was like, ah, fuck, it scared me. Um, I like that. Um, whenever I love that there's something drawing her to the, to that location uh, um and then obviously i think the ending is just like such a good like scary idea you know and yeah like i said i've seen that a million times since but i don't really but think in that that this was very because, special right right yeah. that's what i'm saying yeah um it's you know <laughs> like it, at the time i love it first of all i i just love endings like that in general but you know <laughs> um 1962 i imagine it'd be kind of shocking oh 100 yeah, percent definitely man. blew someone's shit and up. the simplicity of of the <laughs> the ghostly apparitions or whatever you want to call it with the dark eyes and just the the sort of like forebodingness of it mm -hmm. all, all good stuff yeah man mm -hmm. it's fucking cool that the director that that's the director man so pretty neat herc harvey mm -hmm. He does a good job, man. I'm telling you, man, that's a porn name, dude. That's a fucking that, that's porn gonna name. be a porn name. Somebody take that name. <laughs> Herc yeah. Harvey, that's the my you have our permission. <laughs> that's my new fucking name, man. Herc Harvey, it's your name. <laughs> my bowling name forever for like 10 years was Dirk Diggler. People at the bowling alley didn't even know my real name. They used to call me Dirk. It was fucking amazing. I like it's so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you can be Herc Harvey. <laughs> yeah, it can be Herc Harvey, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, man, new identity, you know. What do you what do you do? You know, I directed a little film for it, you know. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, no, uh 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 Tommy, what, what what about you? I don't want to exclude you. Like what you know what do you got to say? Oh, uh, I think I pretty much said everything I say about it. It's just like is it's this film's really good at just sustaining this like uh this feeling of dread the entire movie, mostly due to the soundtrack and just the combination with like just the cinematography and it, it's like it's it, it's very foundational, and it does all the things. It does all the things well, 
that like films after this would really like follow doing. This is like something that like really set a precedent, and it just um it, it's effective. It's effective, and it's like minimalism, and and just it does all the things that are important, right? And that's why you can still watch this movie like over sixty years later, and it still translates like so well. And it's just like such that's like a uh, it, it's just one of those timeless movies. That like it, everyone, you can still connect with it so easy. Like so many years later, like you still like you said, like the black and eyed, like that like avant garde imagery that's like you saw as far back as like Doctor Caligari, like still just works today. Still, st- still, so works over time. Like all that stuff just translates so well. And this is just like kind of like a landmark, like a landmark moment in like American like horror filmmaking. Yeah, no, you're clearly right about that. I agree on everything on my front. <laughs> it's a, it's a, uh, it's a film that gets better with time. Ironically enough, it deals a lot with time and hallucinations and and what's real, what isn't. I think this past uh, reviewing has made me appreciate the film so much more. And any kind of minor issues that I have are kind of uh, uh, put off to the side because overall, how how good the film is. I, I truly can't say enough kind of things about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We gonna get to some ratings or what? Yeah, All right. Why not? Uh, JP, since you first time watch, what do you rate it? Um. Okay. So yeah, Carnival of Souls. Uh, I've known a lot about this movie. Just, I guess I didn't really know what it was about, but I, I actually expected a little more Carnival. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> not holding <laughs> against it, but just expected a little more Carnival. <laughs> um but uh well, the no title I think itself that, is like a huge allegory right like carnival of souls it's amazing but um yeah it, uh, i think it's i think it's like a really good watch it perfect like late night like i can see why this well, like obviously being public domain helps but like i could totally see why people continuously showed this on like the late night horror hosts of the of the eras you know what i mean like it just fits that that type of movie like an elvira or swingoli or chili billy or whoever you know um and i i love that stuff uh i think i actually think there was a revival of chill uh, chiller theater in pittsburgh here over the summer and i actually ended up recording all the episodes and i'm pretty sure they did carnival of souls um so i have to go check that out eventually go back and watch that but um i'm gonna give it an eight and a half out of ten what the fuck okay <laughs> what eight and a half out of ten what the that's fuck a really you good motherfucker you didn't like that fucking, fucking movie. bullshit that's fucking bullshit <laughs> you're not even good at doing jeremy <laughs> i'm not trying to do jeremy i'm doing fucking moods doing jeremy like fuck, whatever <laughs> oh god all right uh Tyler, what do you got? Sacedo. Yeah. Um great film. Great classic. Like, like I said, that one shot just a little like for that's an image just forever lives in my head. Um super foundational or if you haven't seen it, you have to see it. This is like a horror canon 101. Uh I'm also gonna give you an eight and a half out of ten. God damn it. What the fuck? <laughs> what? I'm curious, I was I'm hoping that this was gonna it. be I was hoping this was gonna be one of the first episodes where we had a hall a hall of famer and a hall of pamer. In the same Aww. fucking episode, man. <laughs> Fuck. I'm in a 10, man. 10 out of 10, man. I love this movie. I think it's perfect <laughs> for what it is. In and out. I said my I said my blessings, so. <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah. I guess I'm up next. Uh, yeah, I am. I really have nothing negative to say about this film. I think that this past rewatch has been uh, one of my favorite rewatches of recent memory. Uh, I was so invested in this film. And especially I'm watching this film because uh, I, I mean, I jumped on this show at the last second. So I'm, I'm a little tired. I had a busy weekend, but I'm like, all right, I'll watch this film. And the fact that I'm, you know, was pretty tired and and not fully, uh, you know, invested. The fact that I was so engaged with the film and I was so like sucked in and still creeped out, even though I've already seen this one before. I mean, this is just one of the great highlights of horror in the 20th century um i'm give me another viewing and my rating will go up but i'm at a confident nine and a half right now i love this film so much oh that's 28 is it that's a hall of famer man 
Ooh, okay. we might still accomplish but, this, man. Glad, glad <laughs> right, I can so help. It makes, it makes the <laughs> Hall of Fame to thanks to Moods, Dan, and myself. Awesome. <laughs> Wow, that's weird. A ten and <laughs> no eight and a half and a nine and a half. Like when when the fuck I can show you my eight and a half. <laughs> so when the fuck does that ever happen, man? When you get a what? ten, eight and a half, and a nine, that's a we- that's weird. I feel like that's happened before. Probably. That's Probably. like going. To, that's like getting elected like to the baseball hall of fame by the veterans committee. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe it could be in the hall of fame as well. <laughs> Silence. <What? laughs> no, we're going to a different hall on this one. God <laughs> damn. All right. So uh anyways, that's uh Carnival of Souls from 1962. All right. So getting into the remake from 1998 of Carnival of Souls, directed by Adam Grossman and starring I like I couldn't figure it out where I knew Bobby Phillips from, but she's from Showgirls. Apparently. Huh. So also Couldn't starring Shawnee out Smith. Of a lineup. Yeah, Shawnee Smith, of course, from well, lots of fame, but Saw. She's <laughs> in our realm known from Saw. And of course, Larry Miller, who plays the fucking uh he plays the antagonist in this film. That's pretty cool. I think Larry Miller fits like a like a bad guy role decently, but anyways. Mm. So Carnival of Souls 1998 uh executive produced by Wes Craven. <laughs> JP's favorite director of all time Wes is Craven the name, presents <laughs> is the backing name behind the remake of Carnival of Souls. So 26 years later we get uh, a remake synopsis a young girl witnesses the brutal rape and murder of her mom by a circus clown and begins to have nightmares when the carnival comes back to her town when she is an adult i assume it says mom and not mom (laughs) oh fuck you in your american fucking english man you do right you do realize that you're american here Fucking American, American. Well, I'm straight up English, so I can say mom whenever I want because I'm fucking 100 percent English. So that's fair. You have you have a pass. Um, Doesn't I literally am it? like both my, sides of my. Like, we're straight up from England, <laughs> so I can say M U M. Um, Carnival Souls, uh, 1998 remake. Um, where the fuck do we start with this disaster? <laughs> God, this movie is bad. I, I'm. Uh, you know what, bro? I actually did not think it was as bad as I remembered. I I have it in my notes. I'm gonna bring it up right now. And what what did I write down? I wrote. Okay, I got to read this off. Um, JP is going to p- play the devil's advocate on this because <laughs> I know he's going to love it. You didn't write that down. Yes, I did. I didn't love it, and you didn't write that down. Yes, I did. No. Yes, I did. No. So I'm watching this movie going because Wes Craven's name is attached to it. You're going to suck Dude, his no fucking <laughs> dead floppy. Dude, bum. hey, hey, dude, be a little nicer. All right, Peter, the legend. Actually, Come on. Man. What? You do this, though. You do this. Everything that Wes Craven is attached to, you that have is a song. absolutely you, not true. Dude, you even give fucking Schiller like a nine out of ten. Go. Fuck no, I like I Schiller think Schiller's sucks. not that bad. Dude, but, Schiller sucks. It's like terrible. Swamp thing. I hate hey, just right here actually worthy enough um no like um, I, I don't th- trust me i don't think this movie's good but i have seen this movie before like many like a handful so you've seen the remake before the original wow so uh, i seen so when i was a kid right probably about like 1999 um my mom's boyfriend i'm molested by a clown like <laughs> right <laughs> brought a uh right. box of vhs tapes that he was selling and my my grandparents bought them for me and it had shit like the omen and the omen two and three and four it had all the omens and evil dead two like there was some good shit in there it was like it yeah was like, that's like so 20 tapes or something sick. and <laughs> carnival of souls was one of those tapes also was toby hooper's the fun house uh and fright night which i never could get into for some reason yeah because you uh, like shit like carnival of souls remake and you can't fuck no. with the <laughs> So, so this is coming Souls from the remake. fucking asshole that likes the remake of Fright Night better than 
So what are you going to tell me that you like the remake of Carnival of Souls better than the than the original two? No, I'm going to tell you that it's a movie that I like. The cover always like creeped me out and looked awesome. And I was like, man, I want to watch this. And I would watch it and I'd be like so confused and bored. And I would just like n- not like it. And But then I did this stupid shit when I was a kid where I thought like if like i just thought it would be better the next time or like i would rent things multiple times that sucked like children living dead expecting it to not suck like i, I couldn't grasp that it would be the that, same that's movie. impossible with that one <laughs> <laughs> so um basically carnival souls i watched a bunch of times but never understood and i think as an adult now i at least understood it but as a kid it just was i didn't know what the hell was going on maybe i couldn't pay attention but as an adult i at least like understood it a little bit better um but well, yeah and there was it, one scene in the movie that actually made me jump which i'm ashamed to admit but the scene where she turns around and they're all like standing there it actually fucking made me jump i was so embarrassed for myself wow <laughs> crazy but yeah this one this one tries to take the the concept of the original film and, and it tries to do a little bit more where it gets a little bit more convoluted even though the result is the same thing it's mm-hmm. still it, it still tries to do a little bit more and it i could see how it could be a little bit more confusing and stuff like that but ultimately- i think the addition of like the rape subplot thing was kind of interesting I um, thought that was such a bizarre choice yeah it, but it, the diamond yeah if you're comparing it was- directly it's like does it make like i don't know to me it's like what but just there is no the rape. Same exact thing seems like pointless so i do appreciate that they tried something different but there's no rape though like i mean yeah, he rapes her mom at the beginning see the weird thing is is that like the narrative yeah, and, is and, is and, that her mom is dating this clown and they obviously have a relationship because they they flash back to this multiple fucking times during the film and <laughs> go, oh my god fucking shoot me in the fucking face you, multiple you fucking me. times but they they they're literally dating and then and all of a sudden he like decides one day he's just gonna like fucking rape and murder like it's yeah he seems like an abusive like spouse type i know but it just but it it, to me it would have worked better if it was more of a spontaneous thing when they met at the uh the carnival they go back to the house and he you know you you gotta remember when this shit came out 98 everything was about like like dude watch anything it's about like stepfathers and there's so much to do with like divorced parents and and like not like in your your stepfather type thing i think they're just going for something like that right i mean the Whatever. 90s was like so filled with that shit but it's i feel like annoying. this description is so misleading though it's like sh- a young girl witnesses a brutal mape and rape and murder and i'm like i mean to be honest they don't brutal? really show any rape <laughs> like there's See, definitely a murder very tame. there's this definitely movie, a murder like, but there's no real like, rape like every it took every ounce of like atmosphere and like curiosity that the original movie had and just like j- traded them for like random jump scare scenarios dude this movie is so full of like you know those shaky fucking demon scenes dude they like, oh my god i saw those and all it's bobble i call it bobble <laughs> demons like, i call it bobble demons because it's like every scene they're about. just shaking and bobbling and like fucking it's like pure jump like, scares and shit it's there's no subtle i get it it's 1998 it's a different time different filmmaking's a little bit different like, all the william castle like fucking or like castle whatchamacallit like remakes i came a couple of years right after no those are way better than this dude, dude. those are oh uh, those are <laughs> those are better than this but like in hindsight those are still like i think I'm no i love i love house on haunted hill and fucking when was house the last time you watched it uh house of wax just a couple years ago when uh, we did house of haunted hill uh, um the, the original one or the like remake the remake 2015 maybe oh man i would i thought that i used to think that movie was like so good and 13 and ghosts is awesome too i 13 I ghost remake is a, terrible i don't know yeah, i don't think it's good sucks, like, dude, dude, awful dude it is, it, it is legitimately the movie's not good but dude, it is right. so shitty dude like, the ghosts are so awesome dude this they they make backstories like, for all the ghosts. Uh, Scream Factory them. actually they put out the them. 13 Ghosts remake no, that's not and true, House man. on Haunted Hill remake. Man. Yeah, like, so what I the was going to say, like, I thought House on Haunted Hill was so good when it first came out when I was like 10 years old. And I bought that Scream Factory remake. I was like so pumped to watch this. And I watched it. I was like, man, I should have left this in my memory. Yeah, <laughs> you're just too precious for it. That's the problem. You can't have fun. <laughs> oh, oh, that movie's rough. Isn't that it's, so that movie upset. has the weirdest casting too? Like Chris Kattan's in that fucking movie, right? I thought like I didn't yeah. know who that was. Who's I that? was a kid. 
He's, he's from SNL. Night at the Roxbury. Night at the Roxbury. Uh, like, yeah, him and Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. And me, yo. Night at the Roxbury, then. <laughs> I have never seen that either. Jesus Christ, GP. <laughs> Could you fail any more on this show? Like, oh my God, dude. dude like, it's I just one know. fail after another. I like stuff. You guys hate stuff. That's a no, <laughs> no. I just gave the last film a ten out of ten, and now you're gonna say that Carnival Souls West Craven uh, imprint is, is good, <laughs> dude. West Craven honestly, had nothing JP, to do with this fucking movie, bro. JP, well, honestly, his name's on it, so he had something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, he presented it. I thought this yeah. film was really. I was. I was surprised. I really, really like this film. No, Get of course of it did. This movie sucks, fucking dick. It was terrible. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, this movie, this movie, this sucks, movie is it, it, like I don't know. Understand why they took the whole like Wes Craven. Like I mean, God bless dude, it soul, feels like, like it was the like rape thing. Like why incorporated rapes? Like like that's the narrative. Like she witnesses a rape and murder. I'm she's like, like, oh like haunted by it. You know like we're I mean? going back to like fucking Last House on the Left, which is obviously a lot fucking better than this shit. But not as good as this. But <laughs> I yeah. just thought it was an interesting narrative choice to do that to set up and stuff like that like the one I you know going full circle in the film I do like the aspect that like they there's a little bit more of a carnival <laughs> there's a little bit more of a well no. I mean what? no <laughs> no there's I'm, less I'm, I'm I'm talking about like the scene where you know it's there's a little bit of ambiguity to like when she drives her car off the pier into the water and stuff with uh yeah. with Larry uh with Larry Miller I mean, is this, you know, is this actually happening you know, kind of thing? I mean, you know what this film feels like to me is one of those how late Hellraiser sequels that weren't like a real Hellraiser movie. <laughs> right. Right. It feels like that to me. <laughs> that's a good yeah. point. That's actually a good point. <laughs> and like, then raped her Because all those movies have like some sort of, have like this type of like the idea of Carnival of Souls, right? Like the original, like how it ends and stuff. Right. All those Hellraiser movies are like that kind of. I just you know thought it was I mean? such a weird fucking way they set this movie too. Dude, this movie feels like it was made. It like it doesn't feel like late nineties. Like this doesn't feel like post scream to me. This feels like oh, I like just early nineties. It does movie. feel like early nineties. I agree with that. Actually, it does. It, it feels very it, low budget. It feels like it's. It feels like the direction. Like they had an idea what they wanted to do, but like all they incorporated throughout this whole movie was what separates this movie from the original is that the original really relies on like you know the hallucination idea of seeing you know the man or the death where this one it literally does dream sequences over and over again you all know my <laughs> you guys know my fucking stance on fucking dream sequences when they're not used properly is you get shit like this there's one after another like she's literally it also feels like bed yeah, over and like, over again i'm like this is fucking so stupid dude <sighs> I'm okay with some of that, but it did Dude, go a little there's bit like, too much. There's, there's probably it, 15 to me, of this film. movie feels like, to me, this movie feels like it's like, um, they're trying to be mysterious about like the backstory and like, give it to you piece by piece, but it ends up just feeling sloppy instead of like yep. logical. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, the difference so, is that in, in the original is that like, because you have that hallucinogenic kind of feeling throughout and you're on the protagonist, like, you're not, you're never really sure. Well, I mean, get to at the end but you're never really sure like what's a dream what's real or not the fact matters that they have like these like unnerving sequences and this and next oh it's a dream and they woke up and this and that and they do it like multiple times it's like there's no there's no mystery there it's just oh she's having a dream and it's like all right well this is the same thing over and over again it's very very repetitive you know no, it is very repetitive and they almost have like dream sequences inside dream sequences almost like you know it gets to that point where it's like it's just they're right. overdoing this shit and like but they're really relying on you know what I call cheap horror filmmaking is like, I also you know, felt like you're doing a lot of the demon bobbleheads. Like I feel like they were trying to do like a John Caddy thing too. Yeah. Yeah. From, uh, what's that movie called? I feel like they the tried to incorporate movie? centibites, uh, bringing all the dead. No dude with caddy, Robert Wait, De Niro. To what? Text you ever? No, you guys are fucking morons. Ooh. What are you talking about? I, I walked away. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the horror movie? What are you talking about? The Caddy movie. His name's like John Caddy in the movie. In the Scorsese Katie films? Caddy. What? What? From 91, dude. Gee. Oh, Goodfellas? Bro, it's not. It's John Caddy. What the fuck, the fuck are you talking, are you talking about? about? Or 94. Who's 
Who's your caddy starring Cedric the Entertainer? Bro, you guys are fucking morons. <laughs> like, don't ask people if I ever tell us what you're talking about. What the fuck are you talking about? It's probably not even a Scorsese fucking movie, for Christ's sake. <laughs> probably not. And there you go. It? That's why no, I'm so it is 91. What, what film was it? All right, JP. And it is a Scorsese off. movie. Cape Fear, dude. J- what caddy? Fucking Robert De Niro's John Katie. Yeah. Oh Ma- my it's God. Max. Max, it's Katie. Max Katie. <laughs> I thought no, you were talking Max about a, fucking yeah. Bill Murray and Caddyshack. I don't know why. Those no, those you guys yet. are fucking dumb. I'm <laughs> literally <laughs> telling you that the oh. killer's trying. He's he's giving off the a strong Robert De Niro performance. No, like, he's trying to copy that. Shit. No, he's not. Get out of here. Who is? That Who is? Who is? Who is? You don't think comparison? that this guy feels like that? He's going for that. Hell no, Larry defense? Larry Miller. No, did you just compare Larry Miller to oh. fucking? Robert De Niro. You guys, you're, you're literally. No, no, he's not comparing it to him. He's yeah, you're Larry literally. Miller, say, yeah, bro, I'm he's literally saying, saying that the guy, the guy, yeah. tried to imitate yeah. that type of performance. Like I was getting strong. Like, I never got. I never like, got that. No, no. I really? think Larry Miller is playing crazy Larry Miller. So yeah, I didn't know. I don't know what Larry Miller was doing. Else, all right, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like he watched Cape Fear and was like, "I'm gonna do that." You know what's fucking really weird about that? He took the wrong note. I just got. I actually was like on set gassing up, like I'm gonna be like Robin De Niro, like like just (laughs) like like, when he's in the back seat, right? Like when he's in the back seat and he's like the way he's talking to her and stuff, like they like that feels like what Robert De Niro was doing. Is this your way of justifying (laughs) some points for this film because it's really are you fucking deaf? Like Luke this is, is your idea. Stuck on this narrative that I like the movie and can't like think his way out of it. No, 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 no. I said this is going to give oh, you yeah. points Robert in the Mitchell film. Like Gregory you're going to be the guy that gives it like a six movie. out of ten That's or some awesome. shit, and we're all going to be in like a Wait, one or two. Are you, I still feel like you're not understanding. You no, think I, I, I'm going to give points to the movie because <laughs> I felt like this guy ripped off someone else's performance? Well, I mean, if you like the performance, why not? I, no, I didn't. I'm literally making fun you of it. You like the performance? That, it's crazy. <laughs> this it's better than the original. What the hell? <laughs> Don't play off like you fucking know that, what I was saying. <laughs> I do know what the fuck you're saying. I'm no, fucking you with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I don't know, man. Shape, by the way. <laughs> Whatever, man. I, I just... <sighs> <laughs> I mean, Bobby Phillips, pretty weak as a, as a lead in the film. It would probably work better if Shawnee Smith was the lead, to be honest. Yeah, um, like Shawnee Smith. She's cool. She's okay, but, but you don't like I mean, Bobby, like Bobby, Bobby, Bobby time... Phillips is good looking though. Like, I'll, I'll give her that at least, man. Like, she's she's decent to look at through all the film. But come on, man, dude, this this yeah. is like <laughs> this might even be honestly one of the worst remakes. No, I've ever worst? seen. Have you ever seen uh, the Fog? Dude, the Fog nope. <laughs> is a terrible remake. But I'm saying if you if, if you were to Would make you a list of top the ten worst this? remakes. Oh, uh, rather- yeah, maybe top 10. I don't know. Uh, trying to think of the worst ones. The Fog's pretty fucking bad. Stepfather's another fucking horrible remake. Stepfather, The Omen's pretty bad. The Omen's Nightmare bad. Nightmare bad. Psycho's bad. Nightmare on Elm oh, Street's really bad. I think I'd rather yeah. watch Psycho than this, though. Because like, I mean, there's, like, there's 10 is, legitimate really bad remakes out there. It is remarkable the, how the, Psycho's remake can be almost a shot for shot movie and but be terrible. Be terrible. Going back yeah, to see, I, that's why I kind of, of disagree. Because I'm like, I'm like, the story's so good in Psycho that it's like, if you ne- and you could test this out. If you never seen Psycho, the original, didn't know about it, and you showed someone the Psycho remake, they would think it was a a good movie. Well, that's um, what happened with yeah, you, well, right? Because you'd never seen Psycho and you saw the remake, you're like, wow, this movie's original and awesome. Because I'm GP. Yeah, the I think I did do that. Actually. Do you think, yes, so, you do you did. Think Psycho is like. <laughs> Do you think people like when I was a kid, like Psycho was like instantly spoiled for me? It was like way too much just in popular culture. So I never got to see Psycho like unspoiled. Mm-hmm. But do you think that like sucks. we've moved past that time period, or do you think you can like you'll still never be able to watch Psycho unspoiled? I mean, I'm pretty ignorant yeah, you to can like watch it unspoiled. films I've never seen before. I really don't try to seek out anything that's you know people are talking yeah. about them and stuff yeah, like but that. He's so just saying pop culture. Like, I mean, you're seeing it in South Park episodes and stuff. Yeah, like, is right? it when I was a kid? And like, like yeah. when I was a kid, Alfred. There was like I remember there was like Alfred Hitchcock week, like every single year, like on the anniversary of his like death or his birth or whatever. And mm, it was right, like there right. was just that was all over the 
TV when I was younger. You could just like never watch Psych without it being spoiled. I remember people I mean, I talking. Saw seven I remember a coworker so. talking about Bates Motel, like talking about it. Have you ever seen like Bates Motel? And I'm like, oh, you mean like the Psycho show? And they're like, what Psycho? What's that? And I was like, the movie Psycho. No, oh, yeah, what's we, that? And we I was like, about that. Yeah. oh boy, <laughs> I was like, there's a there's a lot you don't know about what you're. Isn't that crazy about. not to know about Psycho, but, yeah. but but be into Bates Motel? Yeah, like they just thought it was that's like an insane original, to me. like idea, like on like that's, TV. That's literally that's, a whole prequel to the Psycho movie. That's like just crazy to me. Right, right, crazy. Yeah, it's always weird when I like talking to like casual like non cinema fans. Is always such a like eye opening experience. <laughs> you know what's so cornball in this movie, man? Co- going back to this corny ass fucking shitty movie, is like the whole balloon aspect. I fucking hate the balloon shit. I, I mean, I get it's the whole carnival like thing, balloons. but like they, it's like, dude, this balloons movie just lacks in everything that the original has, man. Like it, it, it like I don't even com- I symbolism can't even, like, compare them because there's I feel like they're not even the same. Like it doesn't even feel like if I saw this, I wouldn't even think of it yeah, as dude. a re- remake. Like I wouldn't even know it was connected. I understand making your own entity of an original. Like if you're going to redo something, you do your own thing. But I mean, for the most part, this movie is the same as the original. Like it has the in and out. It's like, I think it, it just like takes the, the concept a little yeah, bit. It's like yeah. the same structure. Yeah, it's the same structure. Some elements of the plot. Structure. Yeah, it's got well, it's got the same reveal too right it, yeah it, that's it what has, i mean like it's like the same skeleton of it that's what i said the in and out yeah. like it has the in it has the out it, it's it's very similar the whole genetic makeup of this film is so different and and obviously it's like dude it, it it's so cheap though it, it's fucking it, it's relying on cheap jump scares and it's relying on so much fucking like night like this ridiculous terrible nightmare logic that doesn't it, it just doesn't work for it because it's way well, too, that's what I'm saying before. too much like fuck with the uh yeah, I apologize, but like when I'm talking about before with that with the haunting uh, original versus remake is that this is kind of everything that uh, that remake is where there's no subtlety in this. There's nothing clever yeah. about it. I mean, even with the original, the, the 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 liminal space area of the carnival where it feels like almost it, it's like a dreamlike area where it's just like oh this this populated area that was once you know you know he's coming here and doing this now because he's gone. He's like a relic of the past. Here you have this like ridiculous. I mean, the carnival miss. It, it, it should have been called like Clownival of Souls because like the carnival is so secondary to the actual like <laughs> well, yeah, core of the film. That's a good point. I mean, it's really about this fucking clown. It, and, and, would just, and the thing is that a movie called Clownival of Souls. I would. You better believe it. Be their opening. Night. My it, point yeah. is though, Clown Nato was awesome. I have no problem. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, but my, my point with this film is that I have no problem with it differing yet. from the original if it wants to do its own thing. Um, but it's like it won't from the original, but then have those same elements, but those elements don't work because there's no subtlety. You're seeing these retarded fucking like entities that look like they're out of Resident <laughs> Evil. There's no subtlety in it. There's like, I mean, it's really, they're like, it's just Evil. like, it's just like the movie. Yeah, dude, they I stole mean, dude, the I'm fine look. without they look like uh, fucking like, Cenobites. They look like fucking Cenobites. They're, they're, they're bouncing, <laughs> vibrating exactly, I, 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 Cenobites. Like, okay. fuck. Get some originality. I don't, I don't really like, stop need stealing. the, the su- subtlety of the original in a 1998 movie, really. But I just think that it's too messy to like. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, I'm more than okay, okay with, well, the I'm more than okay so... with this just doing its own thing. I think this movie just sucks, and that doesn't really have anything to do with it being like a bad remake. It's just bad. Yeah, it's just it's well, just, as well, well it's not as well as the original. Movie. I mean, the thing with the original is that, like, what I was saying before is that you have this this whole element of the film where because we're following primarily the main girl uh i already forgot her name but uh you know it's a hallucinogenic kind of feeling the entire time where we're not really sure what's reality what's dreaming all that yeah that's With something this like film, it's like it takes away any film, of the eeriness of out Alex, of that movie never I, I already forgot yeah uh, there's never a sense <laughs> of like oh is this a awake or she's dreaming this ridiculous scene we have this fucking like lumberjack like we're not finished yet it's like obviously it's <laughs> a fucking dream and then oh i woke up i'm in a nightmare i'm like dude i think this movie is made by fucking like jack like i'm, I'm i apologize i'm sure that works hard on this film this film is fucking retarded it, 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 how does this movie not have a crazy riff tracks to it man like this is the shit that you make fun of because it's so fucking this is the one yeah like you make making fun of the original film like what that's ridiculous. I still don't think it's bad it's as like, what I used to. What, what do you oh, mean? man. This, this, 
dude i don't i don't think like, like, it was no, better than i thought it was going to be there's no redeeming qualities to this movie like i can't think of anything that it i really scared me tr- once i mean yeah that's <laughs> funny. that's funny man i mean i like the scene where um like, it scared me it kept going on I'm like, i like fucking ended i like the scene where she's like you know who like who fucking you didn't see anybody give you this letter or whatever and he's like yeah you did bitch <laughs> you know what's you know what's fucking stupid about this movie everything? besides everything that we've talked about already <laughs> is this the the one scene where she falls asleep upstairs in the bathtub and it overflows like in yeah. her in her bar that her mom used to own her and her sister had taken it over and that's you know that's a whole thing in the narrative too like they don't want to sell because like it's it's obviously sentimental and blah 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 mm-hmm. but anyways so she falls asleep upstairs in the bathtub if it fucking floods mm-hmm. but it's literally dripping water for the next 90 fucking minutes like <laughs> what yeah, the fuck is dude, with that that dude? old wood bro come I mean, on stop trying to justify that gonna shit, be waterlogged dude dude it's like days later like it's i mean come on bro like that's the that's the ghost that's supposed to be in like that's part of the weird vibes that are happening yeah i mean if you put it that way fine whatever okay i'll give you that one but can we uh can we talk about the fucking weird ass guy on the boat who she's attracted to for no reason (laughs) wait yeah, the yeah guys there, isn't there. there like a they really have... intense sex scene <laughs> oh yeah he like he like fucks her raw and he like has this like gay poetry it's like oh oh you never really know what blah blah blah, blah. she's like oh my god i'm so fucking <laughs> but doesn't but like, doesn't his face turn into like, the clown like the, he, yeah, he turns into the I like fucking that. clown though too. i like that part straight out of so it, because the clown fucks her more than one time right kills her mom fucks her oh my gosh i felt like her i'm, like, I'm getting fucked by movie my god <laughs> are we uh, are we supposed to assume that the, the stepfather molested them as well i i, I, I don't think really mad i never it seemed to me that. like it never really communicated that yeah. i feel like they were insinuating that really i never actually I thought more that of like a visual sort of uh like uh hallucination rather than like a narrative one but going yeah. back to the i, kids, I never got though. the vibe that like yeah, the young sorry. Alex in this movie, the young Alex. Oh my God, dude. That scene in the beginning of the film where, <laughs> where he's about like Larry Miller is about to tell her about. mom and she grabs the gun and she's like, let dude, oh, why the my- fuck does he have like a gold plated fucking 1911? <laughs> but like, explain to fuck? me, explain to he's me a, why he's she- a co- clown at a carnival. I swear the acting in Megan is missing is was better than that scene right there. She's like, way no, let that's, go that's, of that's my, let go of my mom. <laughs> Stop her right now, or I will shoot you. So fucking bad, dude. No, oh, you won't do it. You don't have the balls. And they actually cut back to that little girl quite a few times in the film, and like everything that she says is terrible. Like it's really, really bad acting too. And I'm like, oh my god, horrible. But just more shit to trip on the film. It's it's really bad. It's all. It's just so weird to me that this came out in '98. It just feels so much older. Uh, I mean, this feels pretty '90s, like as is. It it's kind of has like a lot it, of the. It tropes. just doesn't feel like '98, to me. dude. Like this is the same year that I. This know movie doesn't do feel like anything now. but pure diarrhea. Well, yeah, got to be shelled for a couple of years. That's, yeah, it's, that's what I was thinking. It feels like they had they had to really like fine tune the script. To be honest, this movie just feels like pure stank diarrhea from a sound quality too <laughs> like there's no fuck like the the score in the original film is so haunting it's so intriguing it's haunting it's daunting very atmospheric like the sound is atmospheric man this movie is actually quiet at times and they use very generic like house library type music and shit for this like they didn't have any original shit to it and it really takes away again because they don't capture visually any atmosphere and then sound quality wise they don't do it either like th- this is just I, yeah no, what you're, the fuck you're... are they thinking with this movie dude like it's it's really fucking bad on all angles man so fuck the i think as well, the one. story is best told through black and white the, 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 i mean the way that i see this is that like i i one moment in the film that i know they were trying to recreate original was that when you have the main character from the original who is seeing this carnival in the distance where there's not even like really a clear idea of like what it is more like a silhouette of this kind of um location that's right. like off in the distance like almost unattainable whereas this when you have her on the boat with you know not just a weird kind of like uh, guy but like in general to keep flashing back to like these shots like this active carnival 
Right. I, I'm i not trying to compare it to the original in that way, but I do think that there's no, like, the, the silhouette is like, oh, this 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 is like a obscure kind of like object, like of desire. Like, what what is this? Whereas this is like, oh, this is just a carnival. There's, there's no creepiness. There's nothing to it. It's very like, okay, but we're at a carnival now. What is carnival? I don't know, you know? Yeah. I mean, they, and they, they miss one of the biggest things too, like the dance of death thing. Like, come on, bro. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It feels like it, it wants to be a remake, but it also wants to be its own thing, which is fine. If you want to do, if you want to be a remake, that's fine. If you want to do your own thing, it's fine. But it never really settles, and it doesn't really capture one the aspects of the, uh, of the original that made it strong, and it doesn't capture its own aspects to make it unique. It's not right. It's like a weird amalgamation, and like even like with the ending of the original, um, it has it has such a strong shot. Whereas this one, it ends like really awkwardly where it's just like okay i guess we'll fade out now it's like and then the credits come up it's like, all right well i guess movie's over yeah well i mean honestly the best scene in the film is that actual scene because the cop like i said before was the the uh the obnoxious boyfriend dude from the original film <laughs> right uh-huh. he shows up he's the guy that fucking yeah. did the one cameo in this the film I'm like, oh i'm like Brito. i'm like oh that's him that's him so I, I mean that was kind of a cool thing right like right. i said they asked they they tried to get the original actors what? back but she said fuck no and they, probably, probably, they probably gave her the script and she was like, ah. yeah. No, she's like, what the yeah, fuck? I'm not doing no rape shit. Like, what the fuck is this? But I feel yeah. like if I was like yeah. an old lady and they said, Hey, you wanna be in this movie? Wanna be in the remake for a second of this movie that you were in when you were young? I'd just be like, Hell yeah. Right. But yeah, I mean, probably, she made the right call because she hated you. this movie. She hated it so much. So it's pretty funny, yeah. actually. What do you guys think of the fucking nonsense third act? goes into like alice in wonderland kind of area where she's like oh i'm in the balloon now and oh i have a, i have the gun now what do you guys think of that <laughs> oh it's all this fucking trash bags man yeah i think like random scenes <laughs> of jump scares and like random and incoherentness yeah it just it, it really it's trying to do something that it can't do you know what i mean like it's already played its cards up to this point and it just can't it can't succeed on doing anything more so no it, it it's bad you know what it feels like also i I can't stop obsessing over like how it doesn't feel like what it is it feels like like a skinamax movie but without all the sex like just the 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 style it's shot (laughs) and like the the like um color like the the lighting and stuff like that that's what it's that's what it's reminded me of it's a shame it's actually like because bobby shitty. phillips man is is pretty fucking hot she's got some big hooters on her and stuff they don't they they don't exploit it's that shit at all missed yeah, opportunity gotta one up the original man there's no like it feels like a problem. softcore porn without you the nudity. I mean, it, yeah without the nudity. better with with it you know yeah i think jp has a dick in his mouth right now <laughs> He's oh, like, sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's me sorry <laughs> <laughs> um jp sell me out with, oh, uh, you know yeah almost died uh, <laughs> i have that effect on people dude i'll kill you <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like me. also okay what one scene i thought was funny in the film i was la- i actually laughed a lot at was when she's at the bar she worked at the bar with uh, sean smith and it's like oh i just want they wanted me to sit and the girl's like oh i'll, I'll watch the bar for you she, she goes on stage and sings and she immediately walks away from the bar and it's like and then after she's done singing they're like oh people are waiting on you like this pitch didn't even watch the bar <laughs> like you know just walked away immediately you know, i actually it's thought like, that scene no was quite, of- quite compelling actually because shawnee smith actually is a she actually sang that in real life right like she's actually a singer she's actually working on an album right now i mean it's a good great voice yeah, yeah. Oh, okay that's cool um so, what what one of the big complaints as well i have the film that i, I mentioned that before is i feel like there's like a, a real inconsistency with like the main uh, actress with like when she was scared like something would happen she'd be scared in that scene the next scene she's like oh i'm fine now i'm fine and then like she like thinks she sees someone she's like oh what the hell's going on and the next scene she's like oh i'm fine it was like it was like she didn't really know what she was like reacting to you know it's like it felt uh out of order you know you know what scene felt really obnoxious and like forced was the scene where she goes to see the doctor and and then it comes down to like doctor's like oh i've never i've ne- i've never seen you before kind of thing. that whole fucking scene just felt super super forced like they needed to throw in it didn't work that you know that doctor scene but it felt overly forced 
and it just felt awkward it felt super super awkward we in the original film it doesn't feel like that at all it feel, it just blends right, right. perfectly into the narrative where it just kind of feels like it's thrown in here and then she like abruptly she's like what do you mean you don't have a fucking like i've never been here before blah 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 and like i'm like what the fuck it, it was weird right right it's very very awkward also how the fuck did this guy who who raped and killed a woman he gets paroled like what <laughs> Okay, so I actually I mean, that's actually kind of realistic. How is he out of jail? So I actually that, have to that's actually kind of realistic, bro. <laughs> so, is it? Okay. okay, so he was put away in nineteen seventy seven and then paroled in nineteen ninety six. And then no, I'm not, I'm not denying it. I was I'm curious, right. dude. I mean, look at fucking some of these fools who barely like. There's p- literally people who have done similar crimes and get like twenty years. I'm just saying the fact matters that like it's he raped and killed this girl and then he. He magically tracked down the daughter and then stupid ass couldn't even kill her properly. She fucking jumps in the ocean with the car. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you suck. Yeah, she, flipped, she flipped the, the script lip-lock. on him. She flipped the script on him, actually, man. Oh, but but I yeah, I mean, yeah, he gets like, paroled like after like 20 years. I'm like, what the fuck? You're I'm like, like, all right, just don't rape and kill again. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. This movie rules. I actually so much. <laughs> now I'm talking about it. <laughs> this movie's so fucking stupid. Tyler, it, all right. What, what is your prevent? Yeah, pre- Tyler, pretentious so- ass. Uh, think of this fucking movie. It just, it's it's a random pile of jump scares. Like they yeah. took away all the atmosphere, all the eeriness, like anything, all the good cinematography, anything that essentially made the first movie a classic. They took a skeleton and then they just jammed a bunch of jump scares in it. Yeah, it's pretty incoherent. <laughs> I, I think the changes to like, oh, well, now I like, I I'm at this like seaside bar shack, like, and uh, I'm gonna I, fuck this boat. I, I'm Bye. haunted by the rape of like watching my mom get raped and murdered. It's just like a weird choice to me, and it just I don't think it even plays that well here. It's fine, like I get it, but it just it doesn't even seem like that creepy. It seems more tragic than anything. And then, yeah, it just reminds me of, like, those, like, castle remakes that I don't like, and it just Dude, those... reminds me of the worst elements of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it just feels like, it just feels like the joke, like, those movies are better than this. I will give them credit for that. But it just, like, it, like the chattering thing, like, like, Moods of Slime, whatever you want to call that thing, like, it's all the, that reminds me of, like... Oh, the fake bullshit. Cenobites. Yeah. Yeah, like, like they had, like, oh, they yeah. were... They use that same style of like, oh, we're gonna make it move really fast, and everything else is gonna be slow. Like they did that in those other movies, and it just like movie rule was like, oh my god, this shit. Yeah, but yeah, not good. I mean, it's supposed to be more metaphorical for her demons and shit. I'm like, but she doesn't really have any, so like, the narrative doesn't really make any fucking sense, and it's fucking stupid. I think it's, it's supposed to be a trauma. Yeah, it's dumb. Oh. Manifested. I'm it just works so much better. Wash. Like subtle is so that's why like be like when you have things that are so much more subtle, like the original Carnival Souls, it just works so much damn better. Like like Dan brought up earlier this the scene where she's looking down the staircase and he walks by. Like just just kind of fucking just does his thing. And it it works. It gets your attention. Like... It's creepy. It's fucking scary. You're just like, damn, dude, that's awesome. But the thing yeah. The thing with this film is that, like, I, I feel like if they wanted to elaborate more on, like, you know, in the original with quote unquote the man, who is kind of like uh, an enigmatic sort of sort of uh, force, the main character. If they wanted to have a real kind of resolution with that sort of character with the main character in this, that'd been fine. But without spoiling anything, the way that that resolves, it's sort of awkward and random. It's like, how did we even get to this point? It's sort of like when it happens, it's like I guess like the resolution. Like I doesn't like I. Don't, even know anything about this person you know like right. it's a bizarre like kind of character decision it just felt very uh sloppy overall i don't be a dick i, I just you know it just didn't work out for me you need to be a dick this movie sucks donkey dick all right <laughs> ratings i'm a gentleman i would never say that <laughs> uh she uh tyler goes first all right um he just did a jeremy he just went all right. <laughs> he did. Oh, dude, that all was so right. Hey, guys. That, yeah. well. that was actually very organic, too. Like, he didn't even mean to do that. He just did it. Hey, guys. Oh, Sean C. Phillips here with another. Do you have any Blu ray update? <laughs> oh, I'm Sean not buy today. They can not buy anything. <laughs> all right. What do you rate it? Right. <laughs> I think this movie. Uh, 
is on par with that other right, movie yeah. with the fucking Goofy Spider that I also thought was awful, but I'd rather watch that movie. Goofy Spider? What was it, like the Bloody Pit of Horror or something? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that movie sucked. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'd rather watch that than watch this again. So I'm going to... I probably would, too. I'm going to give this movie a 2 out of 10. Uh, I guess that's me. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> Wow, I'm surprised that you came in that high, Tyler. <laughs> that high? It's a two. <laughs> you know what? Not I'm actually at a two. I'm actually at a two out of ten. I'm actually at the same rating, two out of ten. That's exactly <laughs> what I gave it. So, like, so. I, I've seen movies that have just like take take themselves like way more seriously. That the writing is like even like incoherently like frustratingly worse. Or movies that have actual like sound problems and like video you know what i mean like there's a whole bunch of like movies even worse than this i feel like yeah, little, oh yeah no no i mean too. technical filmmaking i mean it, it looks and sound like it's fine yeah but i mean it doesn't necessarily give, translate for a higher yeah <laughs> i'll give it a two for that <clears throat> yeah uh dan uh i mean it's not quite so that it's good it's more kind of like so boring with funny parts throughout um you know, I respect them for trying to do like a different kind of take on Carnival of Souls, but ultimately it tries to do its own thing and tries to recreate the original. That doesn't ultimately work for me. Um, it's too ridiculous, too nonsensical script. I don't, you know, I'm sure that, you know, they, they had their best intentions, but it just didn't work for me. They, I, shut the I'm fuck scared. up. They probably <laughs> didn't have the best intentions. <laughs> They probably tried to make a cash grab. Okay? <laughs> yeah. okay. so nice. they, I don't they get the cash grab money. idea, though. I don't get the <laughs> cash grab idea nobody for this. That is true. In in nobody nobody like... fucking probably knew what that movie was. Yeah, because <laughs> in 1998, people that were born in, like, when I was 18, like, really? Like, did people know who fucking, what, what Carnival of Souls was? Probably, probably not. not. No. Well, not the, not the average said, person. That's what I'm saying. It's not a cash grab. The average yeah, person like, doesn't know what the fuck you're redoing. So... Yeah, not enough to like <laughs> capitalize on it. I don't. Uh, I don't want to be a jerk, but I was not a fan of this film. So three out of ten. Oh, Hall of Pain! We have a Hall of Famer and a Hall of Painter in the same episode. <laughs> yeah, that's Fuck pretty, yeah, that's, that's Fuck pretty cool. Yeah. We haven't had a Hall wow. of Painter in a while. So, so what is that? <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven. So it makes it what? It, what's the limit? Nine and a half. Yeah. So it, it has to be under ten. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Okay. <clears throat> Me. Uh, my, I, anytime I'm talking about a sad movie, um, sure. I always like go for the same benchmark, which is, is it better or worse than Halloween resurrection? And <laughs> I think it's worse than Halloween resurrection. So I'm going to give it a three because Halloween resurrection, I gave it three. So with five. four P oh, so that's actually 10, but whatever. Okay. But that's ten or four people though. Pretty oh, close yeah. though. <laughs> it's pretty fucking bad, man yeah wow a hall of famer and that it, honestly i finished these movies yesterday morning i was like do we have a hall of famer and a painter here <laughs> i'm like did actually it, uh, i'm like so excited i'm so excited because <clears throat> yeah, someone just mentioned a little up. while ago that we haven't had a hall of painter and so but we really haven't though yeah Is i can't a, remember the last uh, one a painter though hmm Huh? Maybe, mm. maybe not. What is this, is this a painter? Yep. Yeah, yeah, a painter. Oh, yeah. cool. All right. Oh, I thought, oh, oh, right. oh, you said is it a painter? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. If the no, sorry, no, I, if, I didn't hear what you said. I was. I if was we curious, have the total yeah. of three ratings that are <laughs> under ten, <laughs> yeah, and nine yeah. point five or lower, then it, it qualifies. Yeah. So okay. yeah. yeah. So two twos and a three is seven. Yeah, man. That's uh, that's all a painter. Crazy. This one sucks my ass. It's crazy, man. Hall of Famer and a Hall of Painter in this in two two fucking movies, man. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but yep. all right, well, that's uh, Carnival Souls from uh, nineteen ninety eight, and that is going to do it for episode two hundred and fifty eight here on the twenty two shots of Moons and Horde. Dan, thank you for stopping in on your first incarnation of uh, uh, being part of the collective. <laughs> <laughs> We still need to get Tony. I, uh, give a shameless plug. What, once we get Tony, the quad trek frecta will be complete. Yes, we gotta get words. Tony on the show. It said words. Tried to. right. Um, 
<laughs> I'm proud of you. Uh, shameless plug to my own show. I have uh, my two shows. I have the uh, the Cozy Corner Cinema, new episode every week, which is film, literature, life, uh, our daily blessings, all that great stuff. And I also have Peephole uh, Pictures, all about adult films. Is this on YouTube like or what? The adult films. It's on YouTube and Spotify. Um, okay, because uh, I've been episode, asking you for your YouTube channel for like a year, and you've still never given me. You've never asked me for a YouTube channel. I've asked. Yeah, he, de- he definitely did. You've when never- we were talking about the five releases that me and Tony came on to do. Yeah, I, I sent you the link. What the fuck? Uh, anyway, no, anyways, didn't. he did send the link. Uh, 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 I don't know when this episode is coming out. Uh, very okay. soon, a new episode on roommates from Chuck Vincent. So if you <laughs> like that film, or you you know a new episode on that. I'll be out. That's all I- Actually, that Vincent episode I'm is going to be out in an hour. As God damn it. Show. All right. It's well, be out in an hour. So if you, if you want to hear more about that, if you want to hear more about roommates, my channel, talk all about it. That's all I got. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah. Give uh, us a link so we can put it in the description. Yeah. Send me the links and I'll, I'll definitely put them in the description. So we t- later on, you don't have to do that right now. We're all good. We're all good. So cool. Um, all, right. all right. Well, I think that's everything, right? We're good to go. Yep. We're good to go. All right, guys, yep. we are getting the fuck out of here. Deuces. Adios. Get a job. That's the film you gotta play loud. Like when you have that opening sequence with the trees being like exploded, you have the doors playing. If you, if you play it loud, man, it's like you know what? Like I've actually never seen it's Apocalypse it's Now. Oh damn, we are on Apocalypse Now now. <laughs> <laughs> we're I back to Apocalypse Now. No, now. we're actually I in a break. We're at, we're at the intro's done, dude. We're we're just in a break oh, waiting okay. for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're actually yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Crashed. My computer crashed. Why? Stop downloading all this gay porn. It's just, I don't know, like, it just, like, it got hot. I think I clicked on a crappy link, and it just hung on my computer and it crashed it. <laughs> you click on a, on a pill to make a bigger penis, and you're like, oh, I, I want that. <laughs> so J, J, JP's watching fucking Full Metal Jackie. You're clicking on fucking uh, <laughs> on viruses yeah. during the show. Like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Tyler's clicking on boner pills. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I checked something that somebody said that like one of you guys mentioned the movie and I checked it on Letterbox, uh, and then I just like hit the home button and then like the first thing on the home button was like a hundred films recommended by Akira Kurosawa and I went ooh and I clicked it and that's what I like. <laughs> no, was. what it was was like was like gain two inches on your maximum size. And I was like <laughs> two inches. That's double the length. <laughs> I was just saying, that's like the whole this thing. Horn- <laughs> 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 Ro- Rose buddying is for you. <laughs> He's like, these big dick pills better work. The last 17 I've tried haven't worked. <laughs> the gas station butter pills aren't doing it for me, <laughs> but this one will. <laughs> you know what Vietnam movie I also like more than Full Metal Jacket? Dude, none. The Deer uh, Hunter. Uh, well, I, oh, I agree. The Deer Hunter. Yeah. Deer Hunter's Dude, you guys just don't understand. I don't hey, think hey, you guys hey. understand Full Metal Jacket is his problem. I love Maybe not. Jacket, German is piss favorite. porn is for you. Full Metal <laughs> yeah, Jacket like is, is like... <laughs> I think Full Metal Jacket is the most realistic war film there is. As um, who's been to seven wars, I would know. Apocalypse now. No, honestly, All Quiet in the Western Front is a little more realistic, I would say. Paths of Glory. That's a pretty good realistic one oh, I'm talking about the original but that's just that's just like that's a different both, but... side of the war though that's like the no you're right side. you're right right well I'm talking about like the both the original and the remake of all quiet in the western front kind of shows <laughs> oh I was really thinking good. of come and see I'm sorry no oh, oh, that too and know. see um, yeah. I saw yeah. that film it's a dirty film that was incredible damn no it, it has uh Sharon Mitchell on it That's all, folks.